In the world of radio shock jocks, the biggest are Opie and Anthony. These people say shocking things that border on offensive uh, in order to entertain their audience. I refuse to sit here and think that radio has to be nice. Why? Why does radio, out of any other medium, have to be nice? We are being now held to a standard where we have to be nice and make people feel good. Go screw! Radio Bad Boys, Opie and Anthony. Controversial radio personalities, Opie and Anthony. Infamous DJs, Opie and Anthony. Talk show radio hosts, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Radio Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony. Shock Jocks, Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Shock Jocks, 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 Opie and Anthony. Opie
I'm like, wow. And then uh, we're just having a drink at the bar, and all of a sudden the lady comes up to us and goes, your table is ready. I'm like, okay. cool. Where are we going to sit in this awesome restaurant? Next thing you know, we're going through private doors to some kind of VIP section where the tables are, are spaced out much nicer than a regular restaurant. You're not on top of somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, you got room, man. You can pretty much shout, and the next table's not going to hear you, right? I'm like, wow, this is kind of cool. Don, Don's got some, uh, you know. Some pull. Some, some pull juice. Here. Yeah. Next thing you know, Pulling we go. juice. Next thing, <laughs> yeah. next thing you know, we're going through another set of doors. <clears throat> what the hell is this? And now we're going through hallways and stuff. I'm like, wow, man, this must be the the super VIP table. Or the opening to get smart. Right. And then we... <laughs> right, right, basically. And we went into a phone booth. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, another set of doors opens, and now we're in the kitchen. Like, all right, we got to walk through the kitchen to get to this special section. What was he making believe he was Henry Hill? <laughs> right. <laughs> Handing people money on the way? <laughs> and, Trying to impress... And then all of a sudden, we turn the corner, and, and we have a, a bird's eye view. I mean, we're right there as the main chef is cooking, mm -hmm. cooking for this five-star restaurant. And I turn, and I see a booth set up. He got us a table in the kitchen of a five-star restaurant. Is it? Yeah, isn't that something like that's supposed to be a big to-do? Uh, I guess. If what you, is it if, called? I guess if you feel like eating dinner in a in a in a sauna, <laughs> yeah, because it's hot in the kitchen. Holy! And he makes us wear like suits and stuff. I haven't had a suit jacket on since uh, I believe the David Letterman show. <laughs> so it's been a while, a little over a year. Yeah. So I'm all dressed up, and and also we're in this really nice booth for six of us, and none of us are facing each other. We're all facing the kitchen. Oh, because you want to see him work? I guess. And uh, Bob Kelly knows exactly what this is about. I don't know. I don't have any of this class in me. It's the, because uh, I watch, uh, as you well know, the, a lot of the Food Network. Yeah, I bet. And the Travel Channel and TLC and Are we. there bite marks on your TV screen <laughs> when you're trying to just get at it? <laughs> half a remote. Uh, yeah, it's the chef's table. That's what they call it, the chef's table. I guess this is a big thing to get the chef's table. And it was some guy named Ramsey or something. I don't know. I don't was know who this Ramsey guy is. Was it Ramsey? Yeah. No, it wasn't. I swear to God. Well, no, it wasn't. G Gordon Ramsey? Yeah, I guess. You're kidding me. So I don't know. I don't know who Don, you know what, to no, get No, this. no, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait. It's not, not Chef Ramsey. It really wasn't Gordon Ramsey. You're lying. Yeah. Who's, I don't know who he is. The who Scottish is he? guy with the blonde hair? Yeah. I guess. He's kind of, he's kind of an, like an ass. Yeah, I guess. I saw yeah. him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? I don't dude, know that's, this that's, stuff. that's pretty huge. That's pretty huge. Dude, dude, it's like the number one. This guy from Hell's <clears throat> Kitchen. Yeah. Ramsey's Kitchen Nightmares. He flips out on people. Right. He'll go into a crappy restaurant and. and, and, and this like, tastes redo. like dog food. Yeah. It's bollocks. Yeah. Do it again. Yeah. Throw it out. It's trash. You and then he curses at people. So what is he like? Uh, what, is he a reviewer or something for the New York reviewer? Times? Reviewer? No, dude. He is like a no, he is the <laughs> number one chef. Really? He has that like it's not even five stars. It's like uh, like the, the Magnolia Medallion Award. What is it called? I don't know. Uh, the, the, so the, when I was bitching, I should have been more appreciative because yeah. I was sweating my ass off. I'm like, I don't. Get, why can't we have a table in there the where guy, it's nice? Perfect temperature. Dude, the guy is probably the lighting. most recognizable <laughs> chef, aside from, like, Wolfgang Puck. He has two hit shows yeah. on television. Really? <laughs> yeah, dude. R really? <laughs> yeah, dude. He has two huge hit shows. Hell's Kitchen. Oh, that guy. Yeah, I saw him. Hey, is that the guy? Turn uh, that monitor on there, Iraq. I just thought he was the waiter. I don't know. <laughs> thought he was the waiter. <laughs> I thought that guy was the waiter. That's he, Gordon he Ramsay. He wasn't dressed like that. He was dressed like he was a, you know. Jesus. What? I don't know. It didn't key you off. Yes. What? You just serve this table. Why? Is there no pumpkin in my risotto? Right. Can you get out of the way? Want spaghetti? Want risotto? Yes. Oh, are you yes. always going to be that rude and interrupt when I'm trying to talk? I just want more pumpkin. That's all I want. Right. Well, I'll get you more pumpkin. I'll ram it right up your. <laughs> Do I get whole or dice? Can we get security and get back to the seat, please? Yeah. So, that's that. That was the guy. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> what? How do you what just not? <laughs> What happened? Dude, that's probably the hardest. <laughs> oh my God, the chef's table. <laughs> chef's table is hard to get. That's what is probably a chef the table? hardest. Chef's table. 
A, a, when you get a to table work. in the middle of a, a freaking kitchen is a, is an honor. Oh, dude. Tell me why, dude. He is the number one, yeah. chef, uh, like uh, of all time. That's not just chef's table. That's like you're dining and there's a celebrity in the room. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, but it was Don Wicklin. How would he get this? So I've just figured. Wow. I, obviously. Obviously, the restaurant was booked for Valentine's Day, and this is all they got available. Yeah, and on Valentine's <laughs> Day. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. <clears throat> wow. <laughs> and then, I don't know, there was like, there was like ten courses of little, little, little things. Like little tiny little bite-sized things, but there were ten of them. Ten courses, I guess. Yeah, was it good? It got to a point where they had an appetizer dessert before the dessert came out, and then after the dessert, they had a chocolate thing to make sure you're okay with your oh. dessert. Uh, chef's table. It's considered an honor to watch him and his staff work and prepare your food. It's reserved for the elite. Oh. Well, I had nothing to do with this. Maybe maybe stupid Don threw me and Ronnie's name around to get this. Cause, <laughs> stupid Don. Because stupid Don went to, like, cooking school and stuff. He wanted to be one of these guys. Oh, did he? So he was... Did he wash out? Well, now I know why he was so excited the whole time. And then at one point, they go, who wants to cook? I'm like, I don't want to cook. You got the opportunity to cook with Gordon Ramsay? I said, he wasn't dressed as, like, the chef. He was kind of, like, just looking nice in the corner or whatever. Yeah, And then all of a sudden, Don and celebrity. his wife get up, and they're cooking. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll take a couple of pictures for you. Did you cook? No, I didn't cook. What's Why wrong would I with cook? You? What's wrong? You could have taken some pictures. And and then Ronnie, uh, Ronnie from uh, Ronnie Fez, we were a little suspicious. We're thinking, okay, now we're going to have to return the favor. We're thinking that microphones are coming out at any moment, and now we have to do a private radio show for these clowns. <laughs> So it's not Gordon smart that Ramsey. I that I actually said, could you cook this a little longer? You did. <laughs> oh, you didn't no. That. You didn't do that. You didn't do that. This is not cooked, yes? <laughs> oh, this is fine, mate. This is yeah. This is where it's supposed to be. I, I don't understand. What the hell is going on? All right, hold on. Let me say hi to Darren in Jersey. Darren, what's up? Yo, what's going on, fellas? How's it going? Good, man. Opie's kind of stupid. I would cut off my left nut to cook with Gordon Ramsay. Really? Why? Because he's, the guy's like a legend in the in the industry, man. Yeah, he's he's, he's a legend. He's a famous hit yeah. shows. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, after by the end of this thing, I almost passed out. I was soaked. <laughs> it was so hot in this kitchen. Yeah, that's it's the kitchen. It really is like a, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a crappy idea. It, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hot as hell. Just the clanging would drive me nuts. Uh, yeah, so they, mixing a sauce. Oh, I'm not gonna. <laughs> I mean, they were extremely professional. I I guess. Yeah. I get they would. Have, you think any sl schlub is gonna work with Gordon Ramsay? You see what he does to these people. Yeah, it's not like you were at uh, Mikey's Steakhouse in Long Island in the chef's kitchen. I was making a lot of rat, rat uh, what is the name of the movie? Ratatouille jokes. Ratatouille. <laughs> Ratatouille. <laughs> you, you are a ratatouille. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was saying stuff like, let's look for rats and you know, fun stuff like that. Oh God, what, <laughs> oh, dude? God. He doesn't take. Do you ever see? He flips out on everybody. Right. Snaps. That would have been great to see him. Well, I, uh, I know those uh, cooking shows. I've never, I've heard of the cooking shows. I've never seen them. Well, you did last night. Live. <laughs> All right. All right. I know they were like just. I know he just does. I mean, get the, it. That is one All the thing food you that check off your list, dude. Yeah, that is a All biggie. the food that came out looked really pretty and stuff. But I was, <laughs> even though we had ten courses, I I was a little hungry by the time we left. You were That's still hysterical. hungry, and my cholesterol went up about two to three hundred points. Well, I'm sure. Very rich. <laughs> yes. As were the people sitting at the table. <laughs> Can you cook this a little more? Speaking yeah. of uh, this, uh, what Kitchen Nightmares? Kitchen Nightmares. I think that's the show uh, that's interested in doing something with my brother's restaurant in Huntington. I wouldn't. I swear I, to God. I would not allow it. Really? Would well, now. Because... Well, my brother, uh, you know, the owner of F.H. Riley's, 400 New York Avenue in the heart of Huntington Village. will be there uh, this weekend off and on. Uh, no, he got discovered by a headhunter for that show. Don't do it. Really? Do, no. He's not sure what to do. Do not do it because they basically go in and they sh they they set it up that this this restaurant is on its last legs. Right. Oh. It's gonna go under. He's six hundred thousand dollars in debt. He can only survive for twenty eight more days. <laughs> oh, and, and then he goes. 
Gordon comes in on his motorcycle with a leather jacket like a superhero, mm. goes into the kitchen, rubs his finger under the grill and shows him all the crap and the cockroaches and how disgusting it is. And then some hamburger your brother bought off the Internet because it was a little cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> and they expose all that. And then he saves the day. And he, you, first of all, your brother would probably punch him in the face. Well, my brother through. is more of an ass than I am. Uh, well, not an ass. I mean, he's a nicer person than me, actually, but he doesn't. I don't like being told what to do. My brother definitely doesn't want to like being oh, told. Oh, well, yeah. Gordon Ramsay never tells think, people what to do. No, never. Well, <laughs> and I, I, they already... I, they, Why am I saying don't do this? What am I, an idiot? <laughs> they were already at the restaurant, and they they filmed like an employee's meeting, and their eyes lit up. They're like, wow, we want we want you and your restaurant for the show. Yeah. But my brother's not sure if he wants to do it. Oh, dude. If they went, but wow. Suppo <laughs> supposedly, yeah. though, these restaurants that are on the show, like there's a whole group of people that just follow... And check out these restaurants that that he comes in and uh, re redoes. So I don't know. I don't know what he's going to do. I haven't heard him talk about it in a while. So I, he might have he might have even passed by now. Uh, let's say hi to Dave in Denver. Dave, Opie, you're an elitist ass. Is there anybody on this planet you don't think you're better than? <laughs> <laughs> Where did that come look, from? Look, the guys, sitting there. Look, I got issues, but this I, I swear to God, I don't know. I don't know what a chef's table is. All I know is I was getting really hot. I had to take my jacket off. My shirt was unbuttoned. I'm sweating. See, so he, he's got this whole thing wrong. It's not like I'm looking at him like, yeah, whatever, dude. I didn't know what this meant. I was I like, think wow. Opie, Opie appreciated the uh, gravity of the uh, event. <laughs> no, that's, you know, I just didn't know. I thought it was an insult. <laughs> yeah. You couldn't get me Come a on, table? Dude, I mean, the, the rest kitchen? <laughs> the rest People don't want to sit by the kitchen, <laughs> the rest not of, in the kitchen. The rest of the restaurant had nice soft lighting. And of course the tables it did. Were, Gordon Ramsay's cooking in it. Uh, <laughs> the tables were all spaced out nice. I'm thinking, well, I guess this is the best we could do on Valentine's Day. I guess, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, uh, we ate for, uh, we got there at 6. And I finally got home, and it's only like a 10-minute cab ride at 10.30. Four hours. I'm like, enough with the courses. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the whole thing. Jeez. Oh, my God. If you the same guy at the Super Bowl. All right, enough of meeting the players oh. after they won. Yeah, the you, sh room. you shake one hand in the locker room and get pictures. <laughs> you, you shake them all. Just oh. get me out of here. How do I have to take a knee and say a prayer with the team? <laughs> <laughs> no, there's things I'd be excited about. This is not one of them. The food was really good, and I guess I, I sort of halfway through understood that this was... I guess something that's cool to check out. Cool to check out. <laughs> cool to check out is like a, a strip club where they get fully naked and they do ping pong tricks. You know how many people eat dinner in New York City on a nightly basis, and how many actually get the opportunity to uh, eat at the chef's table when Gordon Ramsay's cooking, and would absolutely know who he is and and appreciate it? Uh, and then there's you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's Valentine's Day. Too. On Valentine's <laughs> Day, too. It's ridiculous. Any girl would be like, oh, my God, this guy takes me to the chef's kitchen. It's Gordon Ramsay cooking. That is an instant, like, a month long, every second you're going to be getting uh, favors. My girl would have cried. I'm not even kidding. Uh, she would have got emotional and you, cried. You would have cried. Probably <laughs> we all know you're a wuss. I wouldn't have cried when I, I met him. I would have cried when he said 10 meals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know that uh, <laughs> they brought out these little candy things that look like um, like uh, gems that we didn't eat them. We were too scared to eat them. They they look too pretty. They look too nice to eat. The food looked too nice. No, yeah, these other. chocolate things. They look like they just dug them from a mine somewhere. <laughs> what? Let's say hi to Prince. Blood candy. <laughs> Prince in South Carolina. What's up? Hey, how you doing today? Good, man. Uh, I just want to tell you, like, what you said yesterday is pretty much like the equivalent of... of like an average person getting an invite to like watch Michael Jordan sweat playing basketball. Oh, that would have been cool. I would have been. I definitely would have enjoyed that. <laughs> hey, no, well, that's exactly <laughs> oh, that one I would have liked. Exact same thing. All right, thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah, Let's say uh, hi to Tony in Pennsylvania. Tony. Boys, how you doing? Good. Hey. Do you realize what an ass you are? <laughs> yeah, I kind of. I, I guess I'm figuring it out now. Hold on. 
inviting you to go see a movie, and you actually go to the set and sit next to Scorsese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's another thing. Why? You go to a movie, yeah. and he, Scorsese is sitting there telling you about his film. Yeah. He's doing a director's commentary live next to you. And, right. then, and then Opie goes... Guy, can you just keep it down? And the guy, this guy was talking next to me. This yeah. little short guy, I don't know, he's some Italian guy, and he had asthma. He kept taking his <laughs> asthma spray, <laughs> <laughs> and he wouldn't shut up. But he did know a lot about the movie and how it was made. Oh, that was Scorsese. Who? What? I didn't agree with him though. I thought, it, <laughs> yeah, I, I thought it was a totally different uh, story. Well, let's say hi to uh, Kent, the movie guy. Kent. Hey. Uh, yeah. Gordon Ramsay just kind of won his uh, third Michelin star, which is pretty much the biggest thing you can get as a restaurant owner. Yeah. And most people kind of get, like, two. And that guy from that other show on Bravo, he just kind of lost one. So he, this guy's like the Lance Armstrong of restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody has just done one testicle? What? <laughs> What channel is the, the <laughs> cooking show on? I mean, I've heard the of it. The cooking it's not show. Even, it's not even the it's cooking a, show. It's a network, oh, yeah. Show. Julia Child for... He has for, an uncensored show on the BBC you guys should pull audio from. Yeah, yeah, he, he curses like a maniac. Yeah. Smacks people, punches him in the face if uh, he doesn't like what they're doing. Right. People have a real problem with this. Joe and Rockland, what's <laughs> up? What's doing, buddy? Hey. Hey, do you realize the opportunity you passed up? That was like Steinbrenner. Making an invitation for you to meet up with Derek Jeter at Yankee Stadium and play catch. <laughs> play, just play catch with Jeter. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, I can't believe it. You dropped the ball, buddy. I, I, I experienced. Let's say hi to Randy, uh, New Jersey. Randy, what's up? Oh, you guys should get along great. You're both complete assholes. <laughs> 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 yeah, you probably would have gotten along with him very well. Yeah, let's, uh, uh, everyone's, all right. Uh, uh, Ryan in Virginia. Hey, Opie, I, uh, I just don't believe you, man. It's all right. There's, there's, uh, no way that six of you sat there in front of Gordon Ramsay, not one person mentioned the show or how famous he was. Uh, Nothing like that. No, 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 no. He wasn't cooking for us. He was just kind of over there, and Don goes, that's, oversees that, things. that's Gordon or whatever. I think he said Gordon Ramsay, I guess. And I said, <laughs> oh, wow, that's why are we sweating? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm calling from very near Langley, Virginia, so uh, I, I think I'm going to take this tape over to a little lie detector uh, analysis. All right, you can do that, sir. Oh. All right, punch out. All right, thank what, you. What an ass. I mean, even if he is lying a little bit, it's called uh, humor. You exaggerate the truth a little. This guy wants to stop the show. No, you know what, though? <laughs> I absolutely believe Opie was just like, what? Absolutely. Huh? <laughs> I'm hot in here. What is it? <laughs> absolutely. Ab he doesn't even know his own friends when he's out to dinner with me. What's your name again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bob. 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 Yeah, what's up, Bob? Hey, How are you? You grow hey, your wife, your girlfriend, what is that? And You're Don. the guy that hurt his leg once. And Don, hey. for the people that don't know, he really, really wants me to, to like him and stuff. He calls a lot, and I just don't answer his phone calls and stuff. And he's our liaison with XM down in Washington. And he had this, like... This look in his eyes, like, maybe finally. <laughs> well, I'm that was like, a biggie. That should have impressed really? anyone else. <laughs> really? Dude, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's as close as to the, like, sitting <laughs> with the president of food. <laughs> I, I don't get it. I don't even get that you haven't seen his face at all. It was kind of weird when every course came out, like, a different chef came up, up to us and was explaining what we were eating. That's what they do, because they're like, the enough. ones that prepare just, the different courses. I was like, enough. I just want to eat. What did you want? Fries? <laughs> yeah. Did you want a Caesar salad? <laughs> I'm like, all right, I get it. The food's good and it looks pretty. Obi gets mad when all, over here. all the food is in on one plate. Yeah. I had something the other night at the Olive Garden. Could you prepare it just like that? I, <laughs> some kind of pasta thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right there, Than. I see Than in a panic. Doesn't want to get into yesterday's situation. His lips get smaller. Yesterday's situation? What happened? Oh, with, uh, you know. Being being late, a little late for the break. Wait, you got in trouble for that? No, no, it was just we were. Oh, okay. We kind of got behind a little bit. All right. Well, uh, well, the phones uh, just lit. They just all want to yell at me. So that, 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 <laughs> that was my Valentine's Day. Why wouldn't day. they?
So that's, that's a that's, good that's a good one, huh? It makes me mad. <laughs> really? Yeah, it really kind of makes me, <laughs> it kind of makes me angry because I watch all three of his shows, the BBC one of the two uh, on, on uh, American TV, and he is one of the most charismatic, just angry asses. But he's he does have like the Michelin star. He's unbelievable. I'd love I would love to be able to just go to his restaurant. I'm mm-hmm. actually too nervous to go there because I think I you know I'd feel uncomfortable. That would impress. Like I don't think you understand how much that would impress a girl to to. Eat at the chef's table with Gordon Ramsay there. I, Opie, so, Opie could get Billy Joel to sing his girl a love song <laughs> on her birthday in their living room, and the phone will ring and he'd answer it. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, Bill, hang on one sec, one sec. Right, hold on. <laughs> and Norton, let me call you right back. All right. So I shouldn't be mad at Don because uh, here's the other thing: I, I don't stay uh, I don't stay out late on school nights for the most part. I just can't I can't uh, get up and do the show if I'm out late. So I'm like, oh my god, when is dessert gonna get here? It's freaking nine thirty. Oh. I'm in bed usually by now. Oh my god! And then uh, I woke up at four fifteen, like I usually do, and I'm kind of yelling and scre- screaming and bitching out Don for making me uh, not get a, a, a good night's sleep. <laughs> so <I> sh- <laughs> you are ridiculous. It really is. This is something wrong with you. You need a disease in your life so you can actually take it more seriously. Start appreciating things <laughs> like that. You really do. You need to find a tumor. <laughs> He kept saying it was a big deal, so all right. <laughs> big deal. He, goes, he, he kept saying, you know, you could check this one off your list, whatever <laughs> that is. All right. <sighs> so there you go. Uh, I met Gordon. I'm with Opie. No big deal. I agree with Opie. Who cares about Gordon? Gordon should be honored to cook for Opie and Ron. Oh, from wow. The Ron and Fez show. All right. We have to take our first break. Uh, Bobby's in today. For Jimmy, who's out there in San Francisco. Bobby Kelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, a very busy show. Call and yell at Opie at 877-212-ONA. That's the FU line. Oh, that's not the FU line? Oh, okay. Well, they're already calling, E-Rock. <laughs> and like I said, I'm a little tired. See, I didn't even recognize the number I, I say every freaking morning. Thanks, Don. <laughs> <laughs> Michael. Michael Emerson checking out, uh, um, uh, stopping by today from Lost. Yes. Uh, ben from Lost. What an episode last night. Really? I uh, heard. <laughs> you haven't seen it? Unfortunately, uh, with, with uh, Michael coming in, mm. I had to know what happened. Cause I, so I got a very detailed synopsis from Than and Travis. Wow. Uh, I'm going to watch it, obviously, but the, the little surprises and stuff in there. Oh, my God. So you didn't... Uh, you didn't watch Lost last night? No. Damn it. You were doing your own Valentine's Day thing. Well, I was kind of playing Call of Duty and <laughs> mixed up in things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do I'm an idiot. I forgot. But that's because stupid Roland last week gave me an advanced copy. He gave me a copy on Wednesday, and I watched it, and then I was expecting to get one, like, yesterday, and I didn't. And well, eh. your fault, then. I know, but... <laughs> Sure? Uh, well, I, I know exactly what happened, and, and amazing episode, yes. Yeah. I must agree. I, I watched it like a blind person. Can you believe <laughs> that it was that it, they actually had a T-Rex on the island? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> it did not. Is this is this Lost Show a uh, popular one? Oh, yeah, exactly. Uh, is this this <laughs> yeah. show got legs? <laughs> he, he could be on the island, and he'd be like, ah. Oh, yeah, know. what? So Wicklin took me to Hawaii, and uh, they were filming some show. Yeah. I don't know what it was called. Uh, I... Uh, can't be found, something like that. <laughs> and um, can't be found. I met the cast. I don't know. Uh, it was kind of cool. I remember one guy from Party of Five. <laughs> I, I, I get it. I guess yesterday was a big deal. <laughs> a big deal. Uh, also, Big A coming in. He was at the Playboy Mansion with <laughs> our own Sam, and uh, we got great audio of Big A attempting to interview celebrities, including uh, Hugh Hefner himself. Oh so the audio is terrific. And that I got to hear. That is terrific. Oh, and, what uh, a ghoul. And then we <laughs> got to talk, talk about Jane Fonda next. We'll do that. Dropping the C-bomb. No kidding. It's Opie and Anthony and Bobby Kelly. <laughs> You're checking out the Opie and Anthony show. Bobby Kelly in-house today. Uh, before we move on, E-Rock found some info for me. Yeah, I guess it was a restaurant called uh, Gordon Ramsay at the London. I was there last night for Valentine's Day. Sitting at the chef's table, which what, which I thought was ridiculous because you shouldn't you shouldn't like share Valentine's Day with other couples. I think it's a one on one thing, personally. Well, except when you get a first, uh, you know, <laughs> a, a first class seat to the moon. 
Someone said it's like it's like uh, uh, going around with Santa on Christmas and helping him like give give toys to the children. Yeah. I guess. Food or ice. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's uh, Gordon. Try the wine. <laughs> All kidding aside, this is my problem in life. I, I need to enjoy things better. I couldn't even really officially enjoy that because I'm looking at the clock. I'm like, I got to get up at four fifteen. I mean, hurry up with this thing. I got to get to sleep. There's like, he's bringing out, I don't know, eight bottles of wine. You have to have a a different wine for every tiny little pretty course they brought out. And I'm like, I'm pleased you appreciate good wine, <laughs> right? <laughs> and uh, did, you have to, did you have to pay for this? Uh, no, I guess not. Oh, <laughs> I, I, oh, boy. And don't call me, like, T-Rex arms or any of that crap I offered. And Don's like, no, it's taken care of. I'm like, all right, what do I have to do now? You know, is this old school radio? Uh, what? Are we delivering Coke to to somebody? Okay. Are we going to be, like, selling trips to the the Dominican Republic? What <laughs> what what do I have to do in, in <laughs> In uh, return for this, uh, this I guess honor. Your Apparently. money's no good here, Mister Torrance. Right. So I couldn't. I, I think could, it was just enjoy it, and I, you still couldn't do that. <laughs> no, because because yeah. I, I, I was worried. I'm like, I got to get my sleep before the radio show. See what I do do for you people. And uh, so I couldn't enjoy the the wine that was coming out. I had like one glass, but I guess we got the description of the uh, the chef's table at uh, at uh, Gordon Ramsay at the London. The chef's table at Gordon Ramsay at the London sits in the heart of the kitchen. This luxurious table for up to eight guests offers an opportunity to witness the creativity of the Chef de Cuisine and his team firsthand. Dining at the Chef's Table is a truly interactive experience where you will enjoy direct contact with the Chef de Cuisine to create a bespoke menu. Is that how you pronounce that? I have no idea. Based on the day's market uh, produce. Uh, dishes can be tailored to individual dietary requirements. Yeah, I had to tell them about all my allergies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Allowing all guests to enjoy. You're this. allergic to appreciation. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm allergic to being nice uh, and you, peanuts. <laughs> you, all five of your senses are mixed together to just to make one just <laughs> aggravating ass. Can you... Uh, can you bring me some dishes that uh, complement my personality? That would be basically bland. <laughs> <laughs> I need bland food. Do you have tuna with nothing? <laughs> that, will, that will give me a lot of gas later. Uh, all right, so they tailor to individual dietary requirements, allowing all guests to enjoy this unique experience. Our Soma, Soma Larry, Soma Yalair. Oh, some, uh, some all. Yeah, that. We'll also be delighted to recommend wines to complement each course from one of the finest sellers in New York. Some Larry. <laughs> Try the wine. <laughs> <laughs> Food all right. Yeah. <laughs> well, here's someone lingering longer. This is, oh, well, of course, Stephen S. from Bayshore. Hey, yo, all Don wants to re in return is to eat the marshmallow. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, they brought out this marshmallow thing that was pretty tasty, I guess. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. No, I'm not going to trash the place. The food was amazing. I just I'm sure. I, I guess I just That's, did, I got guess a Michelin I, star. That's like a purple heart. That, you don't even have to oh, say I a, that. I got a Michelin uh, fire. The so. food was amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like watching a nuclear bomb go off and go that was uh, kind of a big explosion, wasn't it? <laughs> it was uh, quite a bang. Uh, you think people got hurt? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the food was good. Really, was it? Yeah, the sun's hot. <laughs> <laughs> of course the food was good. It was all right, man. <laughs> you know, the portions were a bit small, but uh, besides small. that. You had ten of them. <laughs> What a big portion. Go to McDonald's. <laughs> really is used to eat a Big Mac. And then they were showing us all this stuff like an Indian like an Indian lemon that looked like it I don't know, got hit with radiation or something because it looked really weird. It had all these just put your hands together, I guess, and then kind of spread your fingers out like this. That's what the that's what the lemon looked like. Like tentacles? Yeah, it had tentacles. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. Oof. Like it looked like an octopus head, basically. And it's I guess odd. I guess this uh, particular thing is very rare, so they want to show us that. And I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like right. foreign existence. You right. had one on Valentine's Day at the best restaurant ever. And you at didn't the even chef's table. Yeah, at the chef's table. That's good. And I was overheating. If you cut it open, there's pearls inside. <laughs>
<laughs> Everybody got a pearl and a Rolex. <laughs> a Rolex. <laughs> he just handed out Rolex. Yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. Say, let's say hi to Charlie in Jersey. Charlie. It's Joey. Hey Joey. Hey, hey, how you doing? Um, I just wanted to say to Opie in honor of our Black History Month, being in the kitchen with Chef Ramsey, that's like freebasing with Richard Pryor. See, it's like freebasing Coke with Richard Pryor. Imagine just sitting there passing the pipe around. Nice. Well, or sharing a tranny with Jim Norton. <laughs> right. <laughs> High fiving each other. <laughs> yeah, but I think a lot of the listeners from this radio show can relate because we allow uh, an audience to watch us do our radio show every day when we go over to XM. Yeah. And I think a lot of the, those people leave that experience just like I left last night. Ah, I guess that's a big deal. No, <laughs> no they don't. You can see it on their faces. They're excited. Oh, oh they're excited. Watch this to the radio show. That's the chef's table. You should call that the chef's table. All right, for now on, if you come over to XM, we're going to call it the chef's. The uh, chef's table. The chef's, Why? The chef's uh, bleachers. <laughs> Got bleachers set up uh, outside the glass wall. Watch us uh, create. Yeah. Go almost cook the show. Yeah. That's great. Look over and ex insult you every once in a while <laughs> for their blank stares. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'll uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll leave Don alone for a couple of days then. Just makes a me couple mad. of days for that. A couple of days. Yeah, I did tell him he's gonna have to try a little harder. For what? Try a little. Why? Yeah. Why? See, people don't really understand the inside crap here. It's it's Don really tries to like make me like him. And I know that, so that's why I can't like him. What do you mean, try a little hard? How, how, <laughs> how much harder could you try? What do you want him to do? I, I kind of felt like he was being kind of a, kind of a, like a kiss ass last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he, oh, oh my God. Dude, I this just, to, this yeah, gotta be, no, no. It's got to be an intervention. It's, yeah, <laughs> I know. Try a little harder. Yeah. Chef's table at Chef Ramsay's <laughs> kitchen on Valentine's Day, and he what? What could be trying harder? Well, yeah, what could possibly be hard? I'm trying harder. Kind of mad that he made me wear a suit jacket. Quite frankly, it's, I actually had to wear a suit. Like, what, what kind of place is this? I got to wear a suit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh God! I actually called him back. I'm like, look, I'm wearing jeans. I'll put on some nice shoes and maybe a nice like like button down shirt. And he a goes, no, suit. please, please look good for your lady. I go, I look good for my lady. He goes, no, really good. Like, how good? Like, like you're going to a wedding. I'm like, it's Valentine's Day and during the week. I, I got, exactly I got to get up though. for radio. He goes, please, for me, for your girl, wow. for Ronnie. So then I, I show up and Ronnie B's all uncomfortable near the bar too. He was Maybe. feeling the uncomfortableness of the situation. Certainly, he certainly uh, appreciated the food though. Sure he did. We all did. I mean, it was yeah. definitely all right, man. Because yeah, he knew what was going on. <laughs> yeah. After a second, he was like, oh, my God, this is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> he was still sitting there sniffing. Going, what was that? Is that Indian lemon? I don't like Indian. No, people. I like to smell the Indian lemon <laughs> thing, whatever. If we could find a picture for everybody, that would be kind of cool. All right. Hey, uh, we got to move on to other things. But we're going to get Ronnie B. on the phone to talk about uh, what he was feeling last night. Mm -hmm. We'll let him sleep, though, the great Ronnie B. We'll get yes. him on a little later. Uh this happened late in the show yesterday, but I, I, it's definitely worth replaying. Uh, Jane Fonda said the C-word on, on NBC. Dropped the biggie, what I call the hydrogen bomb of curse words. It is the big one, the C. And I don't really, I don't really care she did. I don't, I don't really care at all. Uh, what I do care about is if we drop the C bomb mm. by accident by the way yeah and we have all sorts of uh, safeguards in place we got a guy down not the hall. even we a guest That's on the show saying. drops it we got a guy down the hall he's on a dump button and let's say like uh, the stars align and someone comes in here we had a sex bird on for Valentine's Day yesterday yeah. she could have easily have said it right mm -hmm. she says that word he forget he like is sipping coffee forgets to dump out or what have you it's possible we are so fired I can't even tell you in this day so and age fired. yep and 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 Especially with knowing that, uh, you know, we didn't mean to say it. It just kind of yeah. slipped out. But stupid TV. They're Nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And I think it's worse to say the C word on the Today Show than it is to say it on this radio show. Absolutely. They have uh, about six million viewers watching that. And uh, uh, children, it's in the mo it's in the morning when they're getting ready for school. All the stupid excuses. And believe me, more moms are watching that drivel than are listening to this show. 
uh, so their children uh, could hear it. And, and there's Jane Fonda, right? The C bomb, right? Just drops it like she like the word the. Yeah, didn't matter. Just in case you missed it, I mean, it's everywhere, especially today. It's on every uh, newscast. It's in every uh, paper. It's great for ratings. We can't play it yet. What? We can't well, play it. Well, we got a bleeped that. We got a bleeped version. So but... at least you kind of get the feel of where it was uh, thrown in. Yeah. The bleep, obviously, is the word. Amazing. And I know when it started, there were some A-list celebrities who came out. Talking about the you, vagina came, monologues. You, at first, were not a big fan of the play. So what turned you around? Well, it wasn't that I wasn't wasn't a big fan. I hadn't seen the play. I live in Georgia, okay? I was asked <laughs> to do a monologue called <laughs> And I said, I don't think so. I got enough problems. But, <laughs> but then you were invited you. to go see yeah. And they just woo, they, skated right over. Hey, woo, that never happened. I didn't hear it. You didn't say it. <laughs> bury your head. Bury your head in the sand. <laughs> yeah. It's just funny, though. Uh, uh, it is hysterical. Like God. I said, the only thing I care about is you do this on radio. Everybody's fought. Everybody. Like GMs. Fire. And corporate people. And they, they'll have to change formats. All, I mean, it's, <laughs> all hell would break loose. And, they, you know, all they have to do is a little apology. Oopsie. Yeah. A little oopsie. And now they're uh, reaping the benefits of great ratings because now everyone's going to be watching the Today Show this morning. <sighs> the potty yeah. mouth Today Show. The double standard that is going on uh, is ridiculous. If you don't think if Jane Fonda was on this show and she said that, you guys wouldn't take the hit. We it's, would. No, we would. Jane, Jane Fonda. First of all, the station would be fined. What is it up to? Three hundred three hundred and fifty or sixty thousand dollars and per per. I don't know per station. I believe it's over three hundred thousand dollars per station. We're on a lot of stations. Yeah, still. yeah. So this would be millions of dollars in fines, millions. And the FCC wouldn't even listen to the excuse. No, no. Oh, but you know she's a guest, and we the oh, doesn't matter. Went out, offensive children, blah blah blah. Yeah, the C word's the atom bomb. Obviously, I mean, uh, radio shows have gotten just destroyed by just the F word slipping out. Mm -hmm. Destroyed. Yep. So then, Meredith, uh, this is the best they could do. Before we go to break, in our last half hour, we were talking about the vagina monologues, and and um, Jane Fonda inadvertently said a word from the play that you don't say on television. It was a slip, and and obviously she apologizes, and so do we. We would do nothing to offend the audience. So please accept that apology. And when we come up, uh, we're going to be talking about the secrets to making your love last. A love story. First, this is today. I. Hate the double standard. Hate, and she just glosses over the apology. Like and we would have never done okay, that. Everything's okay, and we'd have, we'd have had to issue statements that were never written by us. By the way, no. Yeah, I like to fill people in on these things before they ever happen, because when they happen, we're not even allowed to comment on them. Whenever you hear a statement from Opie and Anthony, it's not from us. Thank you. <laughs> it's written. Well, it's written by some brass upstairs. It's called the job saver. It's yeah. Like, it's basically like if you're a hostage and. And they say, read this. Read and, this. And there's a gun pointing at yeah. your head off, off camera. The American what, policies right. are uh, harmful, and America is a warlike nation that should not be here. Meanwhile, the guy's got a gun to his head, and he's b blinking out like, <laughs> Get, help me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's what our statements are whenever we yeah. get in trouble. And uh, you know, Not one word came out of our mouths whenever any statement has been issued. <laughs> and I don't think a sorry sh you know, should, should cover that. You know, the eye man there, he was truly sorry, said he yeah, was, and, yeah, he, and yeah. he lost his career. I even um, went and uh, talked to uh, uh, Negroes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, shut up, you jerk. Yeah. He's got a black girl on his show now. Yeah, yeah, that helps. Yeah. Believe me. Yeah. A black girl, I want uh, an Asian child on my show so I could uh, make some of those jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get a... Uh, uh, what they call um, uh, a retard. <laughs> I want a retard on the show so I could uh, go from the um, uh, Pete Rose haircut. <laughs> yeah, 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 baby. <laughs> and then I need a thalidomide, baby, so I can make flipper arm jokes. Because <laughs> they're uh, uh, funny, you know, flipper arm jokes. I've uh, decided um, all I got to do is, is get an, an air staff of uh, freaks. <laughs> And uh, various ethnic uh, backgrounds. Uh, now hiring, I miss in the morning program, Eskimos. <laughs> we need Eskimos so I can make fun of um, uh, whale blubber eating uh, fat people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cold up there, baby. <laughs> I like mixing the uh, old Imus with the new Imus. Because <laughs> he doesn't say yeah, baby, anymore.
<laughs> you know, Anthony's on to something. The one thing I'll give Howard, he was smart enough back in the day to hire some uh, some black broad to just laugh at everything. Oh, Howard. And it wasn't yeah, because she was it. actually going to bring anything to the radio show. She was there in that in that booth, by the way, where Travis now sits. So uh, Howard could do all that black humor without mm-hmm. Reverend Al Sharpton and the, and the gang getting on his ass. You know, that was really smart on his part. And we've been told to do the, the very same thing over the years, and we, we just don't want to play that way. No, it, it takes the fun out of the room. Right. I'm looking around. So, Ugh. You guys really went out of your way. What? All the interns you hired, they're all, they're look, they all look like little Amish boys. We, we just wanted. No, that's not us. Aryan that's, nation of interns yeah, that we really have. That's the same. That's the no, same. that's Steve. Uh, yes, yes. That's, that's, I like them young, white, and twink-like. Yeah. Steve, Steve, Steve hires his type. Yes, <laughs> the twink. This is Steve's. <laughs> this is Steve's stable of twinks. I will dress them up like Hitler Youth. It's wonderful. Hi, Steve. Bunch of little white, blue-eyed children. I, I want to get them all pea coats. I pat their little faces and go. I wish I had a hundred generals <laughs> like you. What's up, Steve? No, I was just gonna. I'll uh, show it to you uh, off when, when you uh, go to break. Roland uh, Roland wanted to offer up his opinion on your uh, Gordon Ramsay experience. Oh, if okay. the bosses go to fire me, I'm going to commit suicide. Please take me out front and burn me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be captured and displayed. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Steve. Oh, what a creep. Uh, love Steve. Uh, this is- by the way, of interns, they are his type. Yeah. It's like if you were picking interns and, and a bunch of hot girls were there, yeah. you would turn to the guy picking them and going, you're obviously picking your type. <laughs> right. Now, we, we don't know Steve's type. <laughs> Young and t- tender and twink-like. And that's, that's how you executive produce. Yes, that's how you executive produce. I could train them. <laughs> I like having a young, malleable <laughs> child malleable. to work with. <laughs> <laughs> Soft like lead. <laughs> <laughs> Forged into my own image. <laughs> they have twinks and half like bears. <laughs> yes. They're all little things. It's a hybrid toys. like my car. <laughs> yeah. He really does have a hybrid gay <laughs> I have hybrid gay people. <laughs> A, a twink bear. Really not that calculated. <laughs> uh, well, it's just oh, and, yeah. and it's ingrained. In, but, yes. Uh, the the animated Steve is terrific. It really is. The latest Love animation it. from Coke Logic, which you could download for free if you go to iTunes and go to the podcast section. We have a whole section uh, on iTunes in the podcast section, and it's a free download. We're not asking you for anything. I guess you got to see like a quick five second commercial or something, whatever. Mm. But uh, Steve is animated, and it's it's great. Uh, it's a good one. He nailed you. Yeah. I don't think Coke Logic yes. nailed me for the most part, but he nailed he absolutely nailled you. What is it? what what, Eric? No, it's funny. Well what he it's funny because he asked for a photo of you, so he has your actual body, but he photoshopped your head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, the latest animation is uh Iraq's fridge with the door falling off. It's really a funny bit. Yeah, very funny. And, and Steve makes his first appearance in the Coke yeah. Logic yes. animations. Uh, that are just taking over the world. And it's not even him talking, which is the best part. Oh, no, it's it's, it's various. Yeah, it's me and Jimmy doing the bad Steve impression. Hey, uh, <laughs> so he's got two voices. So it, going back to the chef table, I I, I was at the chef's uh, table last night at, a, I don't know, a Gordon Ramsay restaurant or something like that. And uh, Steve, what did you just uh, hand me? Uh, Roland, uh, who is uh, a connoisseur of restaurants and chefs. I guess it's in his family. There's, there's a bunch of chefs in his family. Okay, so... So this is his comment about my experience last night. Let me read this to you, Anthony. Bob, to have Opie do a radio show for you is a -a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Opie is awesome. His radio background is one that should be respected. My dad is also in radio, and it's something earned, not given to you. Oh. Well. (laughs) Well, actually, he said, uh, to have Chef Ramsay cook (laughs) you a Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That is a -a once-in-a-lifetime thing. Uh, chef Ramsey is awesome. His culinary background is one that should be respected. My dad is a chef, and it's something earned, not given to you. <laughs> I like the first one better. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> Hey, Black History Month, everybody. Yes. Uh, we got a brand new honor. How honorary. much time we got left in uh, Black History Month? We're running out of days, unfortunately. I'm like loving half over? I'm no. loving this bit, though. I think it's a, it's a good one. It certainly is. We might have to carry it over all year long. Yeah. <laughs> now, we'll do something different for uh, March. We'll figure out. We'll, we'll make our own holiday. Um, why don't we play yesterday's honoree, and then we're going to play the brand new honoree a little later in the show, okay? Yes.
just in case you missed it yesterday, this is uh, the honoree for Black History Month. In honor of Black History Month, the Opie and Anthony Show is honoring black heroes, African-American individuals throughout history, without whom this country would not be the melting pot it is today. Today we honor Samuel L. Jackson and Halle Berry for their poignant roles in the racially charged 1991 Spike Lee joint, Jungle Fever. Yo, Viv, would you let two loving brothers get a moment alone to get reacquainted, you know what I'm saying? Where the f*** am I supposed to go? I don't know where the f*** I am. Where the f*** are you going? Okay, I'm going to f*** you other than my f***ing wing away from me. Swing, motherf***er, call me back out here. I'm going to get all this f***ing money, brother. What do I look like? Oh, motherf***er, go f*** your mouth, f***er, smoke your f***er. You f***er, give me a motherf***er. Never has such raw f***ing emotion been captured in one f***ing scene. Stay tuned for more icons of black history on the Opie and Anthony Show. Yeah, moving right along with the Opie and Anthony Show. Phone number 877 212 ONA, Bob Kelly in studio today. Bob, uh, you're promoting anything? Yeah, I'm actually going to be at the Cleveland Improv. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah, the uh, 8th, uh, February 20th, next Wednesday Ooh. through the 24th. So I, I think I'm actually moving there. Ohio? I'm going to get an apartment for a, a four month. days. Really? Yeah, I might as well. That's crazy. He's there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and doing shows Sunday night, too? Sunday night, yeah. Wow, you're blowing up. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well he's trying to take care of that. He's. Working out. <laughs> right. I lost weight as Opie. You knows. definitely have lost weight. Thank you, Opie. Sorry, I don't look at guys like that. It's not looking at me I don't in a notice. gay way. It's just looking less of me. Uh, no, yeah, okay, you have. Uh, no, uh, you, you can, have. You can admit you're looking at a guy, and it's obvious that he's losing no, no, a few I, pounds. I it's very obvious. I don't really notice it, but you have. It was very good. Keep it up, Bobby. No, look, look, he's got some guns, Bobby. Yeah, I've, I wouldn't mess with you. Oh. All right. Hey, a little definition. I saw. <laughs> a little definition. That's you got to nice. squeeze really hard and, uh, and and look just right. But I see something going on <laughs> there. Just right. <laughs> In the right, exactly right lighting. And <laughs> oh, my gay trainer, Bill, is just shredded, too. It's Ooh, embarrassing. Really? You got a gay trainer? He's like, sit down, do this. Go out. Do the one that tells you to eat those bananas every morning. <laughs> <laughs> it's called practice, honey. <laughs> hey, uh... <laughs> We'll work. We'll work your way up to holding two plums while you, while you do it. <laughs> I'm getting communiques like crazy because now people are are waking up that uh, kind of uh, know me in my personal life. Yeah. Uh, you know, talking about the chef's table uh, last night at Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, of uh, which you had a complete lack of appreciation. Yeah. For. If you're just tuning in, we'll we'll re-explain a little later on. But uh, uh, the Philly crew checking in. Uh, Lindsay's brother writes, Ray, who's uh, another part of the uh, Philly crew, Ray is so jealous of your night. He says, watching Ramsey cook in his kitchen is like sitting on the bed while, oh, what happened? Scroll, okay. scroll. Uh, yeah, while Ron Jeremy goes to town on some broad. Well, there you go. Another <laughs> fine analogy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, And it was really more like that when he uh, spilt the... Um, New England clam chowder on Opie's lap. <laughs> All right. I reached for it and I stumbled a bit. <laughs> I can identify. I don't need Jimmy here to laugh at me. Bobby gives me the same look. <laughs> like, you're struggling, ass, aren't you? I see it. <laughs> we got Big A in studio, but before we go to Big A, we have to play the Bronx, uh, the Bronkish, okay. the Bronkish tale. We uh oh god the Bronkish tale oh yeah this is <laughs> this is Steve and Derek they put together a fine piece of production here basically it's amazing uh, that we were able to do this yeah because Chaz Palminteri it just it, it's huge giant actor I mean he's fantastic and I've uh, never been shocked on this show that yeah. was like that was like a TV moment yeah yeah where I they bring up- someone out and it's like you don't expect it. It was, and he's become a friend of the show, and uh, he wanted to come back in and say hi before his Bronx uh, tale run is over mm-hmm. uh, down there on Broadway before he heads back to Hollywood. And we're like, all right, but we want to, we want to do something. Are you, are you game to do something a little different? And he, and he was so cool. He's like, yeah, whatever you guys need. Yeah. You want to explain what happened? Ann? And then uh, Rich Voss, who was in here, um, Jimmy tells Rich that he wants to uh, check out Rich's acting chops because. Uh, quite frankly, Rich is always talking about his acting prowess, how good he is at it. 
And um, Jimmy is always goofing on him that he's an abomination as far as acting goes. So uh, Jimmy gave Rich uh, part of a script from a Bronx tale and said that uh, me and you, Jimmy and Rich, will be doing this scene from a Bronx tale, and then we'll all watch and see how well or awful uh, Voss does. And we had a lot of people in the studio that yeah. day, including Bob Kelly, Patrice O'Neill, and yep. a bunch of other people. No one knew what we had planned. No, and uh, at the last minute, when... Uh, Rich stepped up to the mic, and we were going to go to the segment where him and Jimmy were going to do this scene from A Bronx Tale. Uh, it, it's not Jimmy. Uh, Chaz Palminteri walks in. Door, yep. Uh, at, which, at which point, Rich just pretty much S craps. Hell. Yeah. Yeah, it's over. Uh, any confidence he might have been able to conjure up, he was just a nervous, babbling wreck. He was nervous doing this with Jimmy. Yeah, he was uh, right, right. right. The second Jimmy gave him the script, he goes, oh, I got to study this. I got to go to the bathroom and study. He didn't know what he was doing. He was beside himself. And then when Chaz Palminteri walked in, he got so nervous. And for him to do the scene, it, he was awful. He was just awful. If, if you could have taped his, videotaped his hand when he saw Chaz... <laughs> His his little his hand was going. Did you see his hands when he was doing the lines? They just kept going out in this, like if, as if you were to go, huh? I don't know. I don't know where it is. What you do with your arms? You kind of go out. That's all he was doing. That's the only body expressions he was making. <laughs> the, and, and the contrast between an actor like Chaz Palminteri, who's fantastic, the natural way he just goes through lines, and then the train wreck that is Rich Voss right after it. Is just stunning. It was a lot of fun. So the guys took the audio and they put together this little piece. Yeah, called en enjoy. Called a bronkish, <laughs> bronkish tale. A bronkish tale. Robert De Niro. It's not what you say; it's what he sees. In his directorial debut. We can't accept that. Starring Chaz Palminteri. I didn't give it to you. I gave you a son. And Rich Voss. Louis, beans. I want my money. A bronk. <laughs> 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 See what I mean? See what I mean? It's just, you hear all these great lines, De Niro, Chaz Palminteri, yeah. and Rolly Beans. <laughs> He's so over the top and awful. Oh, does he suck? He sucks at life. Ugh. Robert De Niro. Not Try to get through this. It's what he sees. In his directorial debut. We can't accept that. Starring Chaz Palminteri. I didn't give it to you. I gave it to your son. And Rich Voss. Louie, fiends, I want my money. A Bronx <laughs> tale. Fiends, you can't dodge me forever. Come on, what are you doing about? What are you yelling about, huh? John, I got a problem with this guy over here, Louis Beans. This guy owes me 20, and it's been two weeks now, and every time he sees me, he keeps dodging me, John. Should I crack him one or what? The struggle of an idiotic Jewish comedian stammering his way through a few lines of film dialogue with a genuine Hollywood actor. Listen, see, sometimes violence is not the answer. Is he a good friend of yours or not? Nah, John, I don't even like him. Well, there's your answer right there. Look at it this way. It costs you $20 to get rid of him. He's never going to ask you for money again. He's never going to bother you again. He's out of your life for twenty dollars. Come on, you got him cheap. Yeah, you're right, John. You're always right. A Bronx <laughs> tale. How do you know the right answer all the time, Johnny? Well, I try to keep my eyes and ears open all the time. Then I read. You read? Yeah, I read. Come on, come on. Let's go to Mario's next door and get something. <laughs> Burr! Suddenly, I'm freezing. I've heard robots read better. Did someone leave a douche window open? I'm cold. <laughs> he is wow. such an ass. He doesn't breathe. Uh, no, no. My God, Louis Beans. You read? You read? <laughs> huh? Oh, God. Mr. Fabersham? <laughs> uh. But no, but now we know. Now, you understand? Now we know. Voss, funny guy. Voss, great personality. Been in the <laughs> business 47 years. <laughs> what? Why? Is the business really that mean? Is it really that unjust? Yeah. No. 
Now we know. Now we know. Every audition he's ever, every shot he's ever had at opportunity in this business, he's done that. That's exactly what they hear. Now anyone can hear that stinks on ice. Could you imagine being a professional that auditions people and having that disaster walk in and read lines? You'd be, the second one word comes out of his mouth, you would instantly chalk up the rest of the time to a complete waste of your time. Yeah, he really does just get a check as soon as he starts <laughs> yeah, Exactly. The second. <laughs> Louis Bean. All right, I hope oh, the next wow. guy's good. Let <laughs> yeah. me look down the list at the names. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, he wouldn't get past Louis Beans. Louis be Beans! Oh, my God, thank you. <laughs> Send him the next guy. Oh, he couldn't sell pork and beans in a commercial. <laughs> Never mind Louis Beans. <laughs> pork! Beans! Oh, he sucks. It's, oh. it's hey. uncomfortable. It's like it's It like, really is. It's like hearing somebody sing Journey in their car <laughs> while Journey's on. <laughs> Don't stop. Oh, he stinks. With the windows down. Oh. Let's say hi to Big A. Moving Big right A! Big A! There he is. Big A's shirt is actually going to sh kill people. What's up, Big uh, A? Let's get the, uh, let's get the cam Who's on Big A, a for a while. Bit, hey, get Sam in here, too, because Sam went out to L.A. with Big Man, A. They were hanging out at the uh, Playboy Mansion, something I've never done. Not many people we, have. Yeah, I we don't mean, get well, that uh, opportunity, uh, Big A. you got a fine opportunity to, to hang out with the, the broads. Something I would have liked to have uh, done. Maybe I will in yeah, okay. uh, my career. hope it would have been like, uh, what is this? What good is this, a birthday party? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> what, is, uh, what is going on here? The uh, Playboy Mansion? What is, what is uh, this? You wanted me to put pajamas on and do like something called movie night? With, Never I, I heard of this. I don't like I'm, going in caves, dude. I don't want to go to the grotto. <laughs> I don't, the grotto? What are there, nude girls? I um, Hey, hey, the nude girls is all right. Yeah. I, I would understand why that's cool. Trust me. But a chef's table in the middle of a kitchen. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hi, Sam. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So you got some fine audio of um, Big A on the red carpet at the Playboy Mansion for the Knight Rider premiere party. Yes. Big A and I were fortunate enough to be on the red carpet to interview all the celebrities as they came through. Ah. The NBC fortunate. Knight Rider. Huh? For the NBC Knight Rider premiere party. Yeah. Big A, you have a good time out there? Yes. Um, I had a great time. I want to thank um, Opie and Anthony. No. Show and I'll tell them when they come in. Yes. Um, Can't just say I want to thank you guys. Right. I want to thank Opie and Anthony, they're radio guys. I go on their show occasionally. You're on it, dummy. <laughs> just say, you know, well, you're thank welcome. You. Good. Thank, thank you. You're, you're welcome. Looking at us. You can just <laughs> thank us. We kind of have a weird relationship. We actually have a relationship. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, happy about right, it, but okay. it is a relationship. Yeah. Somehow it blossomed. I feel right. like I'm in the Godfather every time he... Uh, <laughs> Like Don Colleone. I'd like to thank you on the day of your daughter's wedding. Wedding <laughs> right. on the day yeah, of her wedding. <laughs> <laughs> That's Big A, all right. I love Big A. Sam, uh, comments? Uh, how, how, how do you want to start this? I will leave you now, Don Colleone. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know you are a busy man. <laughs> Well, Big A's just Go staring. choke yourself. He's just Go get choked with a knife in your hand. He's staring off into space. So that's, yeah, that's I wonderful. know. Wonderful. Thanks, Big A. That's a movie reference. Oh, Big A? Yeah, he just stares off into space. Sam? Uh, I, <laughs> I thought he, might, he seemed nervous uh, when he first started, so I made sure to write questions for him because I knew that, you know, yeah. he might have a tough time just coming, them, coming up with them off the top of his head. Right. Um, and I quickly realized that one of the most uncomfortable positions to be in as a human being is trying to avoid eye contact with a celebrity and their publicist as they realize they've gotten into something that they... They just don't want to be in. <laughs> yes. But they can't oh, walk away. Great. From, they can't walk away from the retard because then TMZ will be on their ass. Exactly. Not the big A is a retard. Oh, sorry, no, Jesus. Oh, he's not retarded. Is he retarded? <laughs> he's not retarded. As sharp as a tech. And that's the thing. I, 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 I'm telling you, Dana has that joke about always give the crazy guy in the office, and he always gives him candy. Yeah. So that one day he comes in, he just kills everybody, and then he goes into your office, he goes, thanks for the candy. Candy. Yeah. And then he walks away. He just blows his head I, off in front of you. <laughs> I, always give, I always give big A candy. <laughs> just, so when I'm in here, and he snaps, right. and he breaks you, hit your back over his knee, and he grabs Anthony. His head and just twist it off. He's gonna go, Bob. Thanks for, thanks. thanks for the candy. Thanks for the candy. All right, I guess you're right. Sure. <laughs> he just gave me the thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, oh. hey, you're fine. This guy's dead. Spike uh, W. from New Hampshire writes, Voss reading with Chaz is like Opie going to dinner at... Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. It. Yeah. <laughs> that is. Hey, yeah, yeah. see, we both uh, got to check off something on our bucket yeah. list. <laughs> we got a bucket oh. list. 
Uh, okay, so should we just go to the audio? Yeah, this was the, the first guy is uh, Bruce Davidson, who's what? Well, he's in the uh, new Knight Rider show, and he was also in X Men. That's where people might recognize him from. Yeah. Uh, what but, a, yeah. What's this X Men? X Men. No, it's kind of, it was, kind of a it was big an movie. indie film, a indie limited film. release. Lim yeah. Uh, yeah. Who did he, who was he in uh, X Men? I think he was one of the politicians. You'd you'd recognize him if you saw him. Basically, nobody. Correct. No, he, he's All right, let's uh, <laughs> let's go to Big A interviewing. Bruce Davidson. Oh, okay. Um, uh, um, hi, I'm Big A. I'm here with Bruce Davidson. Um, 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 what? Um, 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 what? Um, um, stands out um, to you as one of the main differences between the new Knight Rider and the old one from um, 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 um to up. <laughs> the new car is much more stealthy. You know, the old one was a little flashy and a real muscle car. This one sort of hangs back a bit, sort of like a more like a stealth bomber. Why? Why wouldn't you acknowledge what's going on? <laughs> that sound like like what the hell? I would be like, what the hell is wrong with you? That, that oh. sounds exactly like Chaz and Voss doing a scene. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is painful. Okay, that's who he is. I, oh, I thought guy. that's who he was. He's the guy that kind of turned into water and oh, really? splashed on the table. <laughs> that guy. Yeah, yeah the politician guy. Uh, say stealthy for us, Big A. Um, st uh, st um st uh, stealthy. All right. Mm -hmm. um, well, it only took five seconds. Stealthy. That's not bad. You're getting better. That I wasn't very good. Well, that was good at all. Uh, wh why don't you like acknowledge that that there's something going on? Uh, they're very uncomfortable. They, they <laughs> yeah. must have just been like, oh my God, please, I hope this is over. <laughs> would have been real, hilarious really if he went, uh, could you repeat the question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easy for you to say, <laughs> <laughs> because it wasn't. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's move right on to the next one. Big A.S. Bruce. He actually stayed for another question? Oh, yeah. They are all the celebrities, they, they tried their best not to acknowledge it. They had that glassy-eyed look like, oh, and they had this smile plastered oh, on their face like, oh. uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, like as if... There right. was nothing going on, and you were—were were you just mortified? Were you just I was uncomfortable in your own skin? Shaking with tears coming down my eyes because I was <laughs> laughing and just staring at the recorder, pretending I was checking levels. See, I—I <laughs> I live for moments like that. Live yeah. moments like that. I love being in that uncomfortable state like that. <laughs> Looking around at everybody's un uncomfortableness. Dude, you are plugged in all wrong. Someone got you a VCR and messed it up the wires in the back, dude. <laughs> I love living in that uh, zone. You feel uncomfortable <laughs> at a five-star restaurant at the chef's table. You feel comfortable watching somebody stutter through a conversation oh, yeah. on a red carpet. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> it's great. All right, here's um, <laughs> Big A. And how, um, how, how steamed um, um, would you be if, 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 if Artistically, Knight Rider did not live up to the studio's expectations. How steamed would I be? Yeah. I, I don't know how steamed I'd be. I'd be upset. <laughs> I'll tell you, I would really look forward to this going because I think it's quite a ride. Let me tell everybody uh, how much of an ass Sam is <laughs> and why I love him. <laughs> See, most people know. That uh, big A can't say S T words. S T words so are all yeah. these questions have an S T word in them. <laughs> or, or why would or you say three. how steamed? <laughs> steamed. Hey, you're not rice. You mean I, I couldn't believe he had you're trouble. Me with steamed. How steamed would you be if statistically the show didn't live up to the studio's expectations? <laughs> <laughs> that was my fault. I had no idea. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what would they do after the, like you, you turned uh, off the like the recording device? Every time it was just, uh, thank you, thank you. And, and they just moved on Yeah, because ran away. We they, were we were the last uh, spot on the carpet. Mm. And so a bunch of people tried to walk right by us. And both Big A and myself would say, oh, oh excuse me, excuse me. And then a publicist would see a microphone. So they'd be like, oh, yeah, talk to this person. They're with Opie and Anthony because they had the markers on the carpet. And then as soon as it started, the publicist was just like looking as if like, okay, is that, is, is that your last question? And Big A would just keep going. <laughs> Did you like the Playboy Mansion, Big A? Uh, yes, um, very nice, and I had a great time. 
Oh, good. I heard you were hitting on the girls and stuff. Is oh, that yeah. true, Sam? Yes, beautiful, beautiful girls. Kit Kat Club. You got close with any of these uh, ladies? No, huh? Nothing. Not really, no. No. Nothing? He tried to, but they were literally running away. Really? He was chasing them, though. Literally running away. Yes. Running. Yes. <laughs> oh I can't wait for like 10 years from now when he moves, he, half's dead, and he moves out, and they find like just one body behind the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Just du like a grave dug with big hands. <laughs> <laughs> and anger. Yeah. You can just see the way it was dug with anger. <laughs> her, her, her fibia bone is snapped in half. <laughs> uh, fibia. Let's Did see. Break it or something at some point. <laughs> Fibula. <laughs> Fibula. There you go. Fibia. <laughs> Fibia. <laughs> that's, that's my sister's name. <laughs> Yo, Fibia. <laughs> Fibia, what's up? Fibia, yeah. get over here. We uh, we have time for one more before the break. Big a, uh, big a asked girls with painted on shirts so they were nude. Yeah, they, that's all oh, the body yeah. paint stuff. Yeah. Wow, that's not clothes. I, I see the picture now. The lighting's a little weird, so it looks like they're actually wearing clothes. But that's all just painted on. Yeah, they painted that's on like black nice. T-shirts and the that's Knight Rider right. logo across the front. Nice. And the, they have nothing on. Right. Wow, nothing. That is cool. Right. So, uh, so the, the, that's crazy, dude. Big A uh, asked girls with paint on shirts how they applied their outfits. They they then break his heart. Yeah, these chicks weren't even actually doing interviews. They just got on the red carpet to take pictures for people. Yeah, but we stopped him and just started talking to him. And then, yeah, they they kind of were a little what's, mean to Big A. I thought breaking his heart is cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this girls. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, um, Big A from Open Anthony Show. Um, uh, 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 was the paint um, painted on or us, 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 on? Just painted on. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, 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 you beautiful girls, you ever think about dating a guy like me? If I were single, yeah. I definitely would. Are you just um, saying that, or really? Thank you, you so much. Oh. Uh, oh. And then he just he just gives up. Thank you so much for the rejection. <laughs> I hate that fake. Well, if I was single. If I was single. Ah, ah, at least they were honest afterwards. Are you just saying that? Yes. yes. I'm just saying that. I would never go out with you in a million years. <laughs> Even if I lost uh, three out of my four limbs, I still wouldn't go out with you. <laughs> That's when his big hand went over her skull and he smushed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very, very funny, man. Good All right, we got to take a break. Well, we got uh, we got the big get. I mean, they actually talked to Hugh Hefner at the Playboy yeah, Mansion. The yeah. guy. Yes, yeah, so we definitely got to get to that. How excited Big A is. He's all confident about this oh, one. Oh, yeah, of course he is. Nice. I think he did a great job out there. He did a great job. So far? So far, right? Uh, I'm, yeah, totally captivated no, by this. No, wait a minute. Both of you guys, don't try to give him candy like me. Was, <laughs> you guys are smashing him when he walked in. Uh, I'm still getting my neck twisted <laughs> off, like you said. Yeah. Uh, Big A singing Hey There, Delilah. We got that? Yeah, listen to this. Big A, everybody. Hey there, Delilah. Don't you worry about the distance. Right there, we get lonely. Just throw another listing. Close your eyes. Listen to my voice. It's my disguise. I'm by your side. Oh. Put your knife in the bathtub. <laughs> Leg in his hand. <laughs> yeah, carry, yeah, carrying her uh, leg around like it's a like a like it's a drumstick. <laughs> Sings like a crooner from the twenties. <laughs> Just gnawing on it. <laughs> He's actually playing air guitar with her leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, sitting on her head oh, like a stool. <laughs> oh, God. Cuts her head off first thing, uses it as a stool to cut the rest of her mouth. <laughs> oh, what an image you're conjuring up there. She uses it as a stool. <laughs> hey, uh, oh, more with Big A after the break, but let's go to the FU line on the Opie and Anthony show. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks for calling the Opie and Anthony FU line. Here's the latest batch of FUs. You have six new voice messages. First voice message. Yeah, this is Brad, and I'd like to give a big f*** you to my dad, who we just found was cheating on my mom after 38 years of marriage with some skank whore that's half his age. You know what? F*** you, dad. Next message. This is for Jim. It's been over a year. You owe me $1,500. You haven't even made an attempt to pay it back. You. Next message. I want to leave a big F you for Mike L. You're a big fat f***. So is your girlfriend. Next message. I'd like to give a big F you to my son for knocking up some crazy broad. Now I'm going to be a goddamn grandmother at 39 years old. F*** you. Next message. I'd like to say f*** you to my new ex-girlfriend in a way that she'll understand. Next message. Yeah, f*** you to that stupid bitch living below me who calls the cops on me for nothing. You know? Ah, oh, whatever. I can't do these stupid things. Oh, it's f***ed up. End of new messages. Call the Opie and Anthony FU line. 866-FU-LINE-1. That's 866-FU-LINE-1. Thank you and goodbye. We're in the middle of talking to Big A on the Opie and Anthony show. Sam in studio. He went out to L.A. with Big A for, I guess, the the Night Rider premiere, right? Yeah. Night Rider is this Sunday at 9 p.m. Ooh, look at you. On NBC. Corporate the loves new, you. The new Night Rider. Yeah, it's That's... a movie event. Brown nose! <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the party was at the Playboy Mansion. Something I yeah. really have always wanted to do. We, we just don't get invited. We don't get things. invited. Um, I don't understand. But they invited Big A. Well, I guess technically they didn't. They were surprised by Big A's uh, presence. Who wouldn't be? So we threw him on the red carpet. This is something we've done uh, a couple times over the years. People are, yep. like, yelling and screaming. It's a stuttering John thing, whatever. Uh, trust me. It, it, <laughs> we could do a whole segment where I list a, a whole bunch of things we did way before how we did. So just relax. Relax. All right, there's your acknowledgement. Now go screw. It's like stuttering John like 10 times over, though. Go screw. Yeah. I think go he hit somewhere got else. words out. Yeah, he got words out and just <laughs> hit one that he kind of got stuck on. Big A gets stuck on all of them. Mm-hmm. Da, 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 da. I love the haters, too. Watch, they'll never even acknowledge that this was similar to what he did 12 oh. years ago. Blank CC, blank CC, blank CC. Copy paste, copy paste. Fake name on a message board, fake name on a message board, blank CC. Shut up. <laughs> now what? There you go. There's your acknowledgement. Now what? Now what? And is Big A asking outrageous questions? No. No. See, Big A is talented enough to just ask normal questions and still horrify people. Yeah. He's so, also, he doesn't he, have to go for the bad question. He was ner he, he was he was nervous, so of it was like he was. fifty-five degrees maybe at that point because it was like evening, and so it was getting chilly. He was the only one on the red carpet who, had, his whole forehead was just beating sweat, oh, and he kept he kept coughing the whole time. Like he wasn't doing it when the uh, celebrities were there, but he kept leaning over and like hat coughing on the <laughs> other people. That were oh <laughs> no! Did he did he have his that big rape vein on his forehead? <laughs> <laughs> Bob Kelly in studio for Norton. <laughs> you can just hear a woman going, and all I remember is this big vein in his forehead just throbbing. Oh, it's okay. Okay, nurse, get the kid. <laughs> There's another observation here, too, by the way. I, I, I want to have a bet with uh, the guys today when that button is going to officially pop off your shirt. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> that thing is struggling to, to stay on the shirt. Yeah. Sorry, big guy. <laughs> What the? What the hell was, what that? was that? I thought that was it right there. No. Wow. I thought that was it. I thought. I swear to God, my heart stopped, and I was just praying that he. I wasn't on his list. Yeah, he's got a whatever he just did. I thought that was it. Like yeah. his brain just went. It's <laughs> over. He's got. He's Must the only kill. person I know that has like boulders for cholesterol just rolling through his body, <laughs> <laughs> just hoping they could squeeze through the. The yeah, tunnel wow. that, that'll lead to his heart. Jesus, the, the big A. The button is a little, wow, a little that is tight. Un, under yeah, stress. A little tight, man. You should undo that button, just that one. No, it doesn't stop. It's like trying to hold back mercury, that <laughs> liquid metal. <laughs> you can't do it. 
Uh, hey, uh, let's. Uh, all right, so we got Big A asking Wolf I Siren. Can't take my eyes off of that button. I'm frightened it's going to yeah. go off like a rivet in a submarine that's too deep. <laughs> yeah, someone's going <laughs> to. Someone's going to lose an eye, Big A. Someone loses an eye today. The thing is going to take out an eye. That's funny. Yeah, that's, that's one thing. <laughs> Hey, uh, so we got we we got Big A asking Wolf Siren and Stealth from American Gladiators about uh, the Joust. Yeah, he got to Big A got to meet all the American Gladiators were there. Wow, wow, that's a big one. Big yeah, a. It's huge. All the big celebrities. And so yeah, he got to interview uh, the now, American Gladiators. Now I'm officially jealous. Now I can understand why that would be a big deal. Yeah. Oh, are you really? No. <laughs> okay, <I'm> just checking. <laughs> You know he has headphones on too, right? Yeah, I just noticed that. Yeah, okay. Holy Jesus! All right, because he's staring at the back of your head. Right? Yeah, now he's waving at us. Yeah. He's actually squeezing. Even when he waves, it's death. uncomfortable. So. He just bit his ring off. He could just he could just stand up and like predator pull my spine out. <laughs> okay, I get it. You hate me. I wasn't a big I, I wasn't a big fan of American Gladiators when it was called American Gladiators back in 1989 or whatever it was. Well, this one is bigger and better. Is wow, it, is it really? There's a rousing endorsement. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, the season finale is on right before the Night Rider oh, movie this wow. Sunday night. Whoa, Brown nose! <laughs> Yuck. You're going to do great in sales. Congratulations. Yep. This, yeah. one, this one is a little better. I they, love they it. They actually get, the, the gladiators really get violent and hate yeah. the, the competitors. Uh, Sam, when, you, when you're in radio sales mm -hmm. at some point uh, in, your, in your career, uh, don't talk about how you used to be on the air and stuff because the, the talent really doesn't care. Okay. So remember that. Okay. You're a salesperson. You're in your suit. You shake hands with the the talent when they come in to meet a client. Mm -hmm. uh, don't be like, "Oh, I was on the air." Well, oh, yeah, you might remember uh, Fan and Sam show and uh, on the Opie and Anthony show. They don't want to hear it. All right, I'll okay. keep that in mind. Thank you. And uh, happy uh, Black History Month. We forgot to acknowledge that. Oh, thank you. Uh, he only he only gets to participate in two days of it, though. Two, yeah, I was it was half a day. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, two days. It's just some <laughs> indiscretion by President Jefferson years ago. <laughs> One night, Mrs. Jefferson wasn't in the mood. He had to go out to the old shack in the back and uh, yeah. take care of business. And then your ancestry got back <laughs> on, the, on the white highway. The old branch of uh, the Sam family tree. <laughs> right. He would play the black Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sam's uh, white ancestry. Uh, it was white. He was on the white road. Yep. They uh, they had to they had to take a leak, so they went into the black rest area. Yep. And then they w got back onto the white, back on the highway, the white highway. But the that memory is always there. It's all speculation. It's yeah. all, well, you you were related to Jefferson. Yes, that is true. Yeah, he checked his uh, ancestry, and it goes back to <laughs> Jefferson. Mm -hmm. And you, Jefferson was just known. Well, to take a few trips out to the uh, the shack. Yeah, he's he's and related. Take care of business. He's related to the side that they don't really acknowledge. They don't like acknowledging that one. Read a book and you'll see what I mean. Yeah, let's just say mm. they're not on any money. No, <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, Big A asked Wolf Siren and Stealth from American Gladiators about the joust. Wolf Siren and Stealth. Big A at the Playboy Mansion. Who? Um, hi, I'm Big A I'm on the Open Anthony show. I'm here with Wolf. I'm Siren and and Stealth. Hey, how are you? Okay. Do you find it hard uh, to uh, stay stationary when performing the joust? To stay, to stay stationary. stationary. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, it, it's tough, you know. Um, the nervous she has laugh. A little easier time than like myself because she has a uh, really like squat. a shorter wheel uh, wheelbase, you know, like Kit. Um, but yeah, she can squat a little lower. Oh, she, you know, I go and step back a little, and all of a sudden, there's no more platform for me. So she has yeah. a little more room. Ah, my my favorite part of that was when uh, the publicist announced them, and they're like, and this is stealth, and Big A just goes, oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> S T word why oh, why why. <laughs> um. The gladiators pick a name for Big A and basically just call him Fat. Yeah, I thought when they were picking, they they started picking American gladiator names for Big A, and I huh. thought they were being really insulting. Yeah. You could uh, like like Mountain. Yeah. You could call him Mountain <laughs> or Planet. 
a mountain like to me, or that's, planets. That's is that crazy. insulting? Because it's saying he's very uh, oh, Earth stature is. How about earthquake? <laughs> <laughs> Take earthquake's name from the WWF. Yeah, earthquake is kind of a good name, about, uh, though. Yeah, I like that. Stephen S. from Bayshore. Uh, the guy had to blow dry his hair after this interview. <laughs> <laughs> Big A did have a little bit of a uh, spittle. Yeah. A uh, problem with a little bit, you know, drool on the corners of his mouth. Oh, was that bad. happening? You're a little nervous and dry mouth? Yeah. Yeah, you got a little dry mouth. I imagine Big A is always dehydrated. <laughs> he what? didn't need to send a... Did he have the white in the corner like he just ate like a 90 marshmallows? Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> mosh. Mosh. <laughs> <laughs> love the Boston accent. 90 marshmallows. Uh, all right, let's see what this clip's about. Do you think I have a, a proper you know, body of, of physique um, to be an American gladiator? <laughs> Any day, my friend. Well, the gauntlet. I've been trying to pick a name for you, and I haven't quite got it. But Chomp we're, we're going to think something I like, like uh, mountain yeah. or rock. You know? oh, rock, I like rock, yeah. I think, you, I think you'd be good. Oh. Do you really think he'd be good? I think uh, disgusting. How about <laughs> that for a name? Disgusting. You know what I hate about these people? As soon as they walk away, that they would obviously say to each other, "What a fat mess!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fat mess. Why, That's good. why do we have to talk? Talented, yeah. Why do we have? Why do we have to talk to that fat mess? They, oh. find, they find each other with a like a, a, a huge Q-tip, and they think it's talent. <laughs> <laughs> huge Q-tip. <laughs> Stink. Big A should be one of the events, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to put him in an alley. You have to get by him with your clothes on. <laughs> what, what do we got next, uh, Big A? We've got to get to the big Hugh Hefner interview. It's the it's just unbelievable. It's the highlight. Yeah. It's awesome. What's next? <laughs> Someone said his name. Uh, cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. The uh, other ones, I mean, that's the rest of the gladiators. If you want to just skip to... Well, if you... Well, uh, you got Big A, he's asking Mayhem, uh, Militia, and Helga, and Justice about American Gladiators coming back. Is that worth playing? I, the, the, the only part that's worth playing is that Big A might have had a little crush on Helga. Okay. Oh, right, Helga. So we'll go to that club. With it's, a sexy name like that, I can understand. Yeah. Helga. You were actually flirting with Helga? Uh, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> She's a mountain yeah. of a woman. I heard you also got really hammered at the Playboy Mansion, <laughs> huh? You, know, you like your drink? To get you drink on there, Big A. I heard. I heard eight rum and cokes. <laughs> oh, um, perhaps the more than that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, perhaps more than that, gentlemen. He's shouting out, I feel no pain. <laughs> <laughs> Physically. Was he scaring? Was he scaring people out there? <laughs> yeah, he was. The truth I mean, is on the news again. Oh no! Right, don't, <laughs> you know what? Don't, don't. That's what gets us fired. I'm sorry. Right there. Well, no, he was, didn't I, mention I, the channel. Oh, and he was the other day on Channel yeah, 11. All right, all right. It's a repeat of his Channel 11. Because after we went into the party, yeah. he kept going up to the celebrities that we had seen on the red carpet and trying to talk to them and thanking them for the interview. And, all, and it was so uncomfortable. Like I, would turn, I wouldn't even coax him into doing it. I would turn around, and he's trying to find the American Gladiators again to reminisce about the interview. That uh, they had remember on the, red the interview we did? Here's him flirting Mess. with Helga. <laughs> uh, what quality of men do you like? Intelligence. Whoa, whoa. whoa that's a... That's <laughs> Wait a, a minute. Whoa, wow. That's, that's Big uh, A's gay? Allegedly a... <laughs> what? You gay, Big A? No. But that's... You're, you're talking flirting, to a man. You're flirting with a dude. No, that's Helga. Well, let me tell you. <laughs> right. uh, what I like in a man? <laughs> mm, she does look like my... Steve. <laughs> Wow, really? That's a that's a uh, that's a broad, huh? <laughs> uh, what quality of men do you like? Intelligence. Yeah. Muscle doesn't hurt, though. <laughs> that sounds like. Would you a ever guy. think? Of, <laughs> would you ever think of dating a man uh, like myself? Well, I don't know. I don't know much about you. Tell her about you, player. Tell her about you. <laughs> 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 Um, well, actually, we could talk at the party and. Oh, you know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, that sounds good. I'll get a bottle of Chrissy. A couple drinks and, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Big A's got some game and a little humor <laughs> behind him. She laughs like Gene Hackman. 
I thought it was all in good fun. Like it was just yeah. as soon as we got into the party, I turned around and lost Big A, and he was at the bar talking to Alga. <laughs> really? Oh, oh wow! Straight for her. You walked the walk too. You like man women, yeah. man. I like all right, Big A. Is she good? Did she? Did you arm wrestle? <laughs> no, I didn't. What did she? Did she talk back? Was she into you? Um, not really. No? She knew he was coming because her drink on the bar started vibrating like Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> Behind that creepy smile, he's got game and a sense of humor. Who knew? Did you did you make what did you make any moves? What'd you say to her at the bar? Um I How big's your <laughs> <laughs> I love my beepy button. <laughs> He just ruined it with that little gay thing after it. I love my BB button. Oh, <laughs> shut the f*** up. <laughs> Say I love Say, my BB button. I do. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. Now we finally get to Hugh Hefner. We got to move uh, move forward here. So what what can you tell me about the Hef? Well, he was doing all the TV. There's a lot of TV, like extra and all those shows. And so he was just about to get off the red carpet. And for whatever reason, his publicist turned around when we were shouting, you know, Hugh, Hugh, Mr. Hefner, Mr. Hefner. And he went straight for Big A, and within, I would say, five seconds, he realized it was not a place he wanted to be. It was an forever. awful mistake had been made. Yeah. yeah. But we got him. Um, I'm Big A from the Opie and Anthony show, and I'm here with Hugh Hefner. Um, uh, what brings you to such a star event? Uh, something about the event. Uh, what brings you to us? What How do you think women? Is that what you're trying to ask him? <laughs> oh, no. Uh, go ask yourself, the stupid publicist. Oh, uh, the publicist. Uh, at this point, the... no one gives a crap that he's got three fake girlfriends. Go screw yourself. Is that what you want to ask him? Yeah. Shut uh, up. Up, bitch. Wait, that's way, you you should have told her. That's, that's way more interesting than, wow, Hugh, I see you got your three girlfriends with you. Yeah. So how do you handle three girls, Hef? Whoa, you're crazy. I don't. Why doesn't anyone like, now say it? Uh, uh, Hugh, you got three fake girlfriends. I mean, it's great for the magazine and stuff, but obviously it's fake and you're not really banging these broads. Uh, listening to him ask that question is painful, it, uncomfortable. It, it's the most funny, painful, uncomfortable thing I've ever felt. It's some. It's a range of emotions. Yeah, I haven't felt since junior high. <laughs> <laughs> that painful. Yeah, because right. Hef couldn't really hear him, and so like he, but he wouldn't lean in that close to Big A, and so the publicist grabbed the notebook out of Big A's hand and read the next question. Oh. So he didn't even get a chance to say statuesque. Oh, she grabbed the notebook yeah. out of his hand? All right, let's uh, see how this goes down. How do you think such statuesque women? Is that what you're trying to ask him? Oh. How do you find such statuesque women for the magazine? Oh, statuesque women? Yes. Well, uh -huh. these days they kind of find me. <laughs> I, I've... um. I've never hit a woman before. <laughs> really, I haven't. I want to punch that lady in the face. You've never hit a woman, you've never hit a woman in your life? How do you no, find such statuesque women? I hate mm. her. <laughs> I hate her. That wasn't the qu question you... Oh, <laughs> 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 well, slow down, you Jane Fonda. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> uh, I, mean, I love when he, he's defeated. Uh, <laughs> she goes, is that the question? Is that the question? <sighs> he was a very busy man. Why not? He's, yes. He's too long to He's got to walk around the party with his three broads so everyone can say, wow, look at Hugh Hefner doing great still at the age of 80. Shut um, up. Shut up. All right, fine. Thoughts for us, women? <laughs> Uh, we got one more oh. they, find, clip. they find me yeah. drooling on my chest <laughs> right. in, a, in a lazy boy. <laughs> you know, God bless you, Hafner, but, you know, you got to call it like you see him. I mean, that's such a great, great ruse. Well, you don't think, he, you don't think he's... Uh... There's nothing going on with those three no broads. No way. Nothing. He had four. One ran off with Rob Schneider Oof. at a, a roast party. Yeah. That's how much these girls wanted to go, get away from him. They ran up to Rob Schneider and said, save me. 
Well, they, you know, Bobby, uh, as a as a bisexual man, yes. would you have uh, sex wait with you? Wait a minute. Wait a second. <laughs> hey, wait a second. I told you. Know, you know, as you said that. that, it just slipped right past me, and I didn't even question it. I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I told You're Greg. Say, Kelly, yeah, well. I told Greg Hughes that. I didn't tell OP from the ONA show that. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I, I'm pretty close. I'm, just, I'm, I'm as close as you can get. <laughs> I have a bidet. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, we got one more Hugh Hefner clip. Yeah, at this point, he had no humor about him whatsoever. Yeah. He was just annoyed. Ah, good. Why? This is something different. He, he's got to be bored with the same old crap. This is no, something different. Not. Why not just go with the, roll with the punches, man? But, um, if I behave myself tonight, um, um, could I... Start coming here more regularly. It depends on the nature of the event. Ooh. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much, Mr. Hefner. My pleasure. You have a nice evening. Okay, thank you too. Thank you. you have a nice evening. You have a nice, nice evening. Nice evening. Nice evening. Well, we... It depends on the event. When we're hosting Fat Retard Night, yeah. you're cordially invited. We have the Special Olympics here. <laughs> <laughs> You get to come and play volleyball. And we hold a button popping contest. <laughs> You're nice, in. Have a nice evening. <laughs> Ma, see? Yeah. Hey, Muggsy. <laughs> Take the car around front, see? <laughs> All right, we're going to have more with Big A's trip to L.A. a little later on in the show. Sam, great job, really. That's yes. a great job, man. And Big A, you got you got big ones, man. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that. Uh, big A's great. I couldn't do that. You got big ones. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. God bless you. Yeah. Absolutely. <clears throat> we're um we're gonna take a break and uh Michael Emerson's here. Woo! Who's he? Stop oh, it. God. Don't God even you. start. What are you out of your mind? That How? is Ben from Lost, my friend. Oh, I'm, I'm just playing the part of I don't know for the You're listeners. I don't know guy? Yeah, for the listeners. This <laughs> show is huge. What show? Lost, you lost. Is this it's huge. Huge. The biggest show on TV. Yep. It's like yeah. a movie every week. Is it people on? were freaking out. That, and I'm, I guarantee you this. It's the only reason people were freaking out over the writer's strike. Really? Is because they want Lost to... You know, we want a season. Is it on the WB? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I can't believe they found... So ABC. Sawyer was in the coffin. Oh, my God. No, I'm kidding. That's, that's a lie. That's uh, a lie. I just made I, that up. I, even I know that's probably <laughs> something you probably shouldn't nah, say on the radio. Nah, I'm Imagine I was right, though, and I guessed it. Oh, <laughs> Shut <God>. up. <laughs> right. Go, go on a blog somewhere. Put your theories up there. All right. All right, listen. Uh, really quickly, I, I want to remind people, you got a chance to win $2,000. And the money, obviously, really cool. But more importantly, you can become a, a star. We're looking for animations. We're really big on the animation thing right now. Mm -hmm. Actually, it might uh, lead to something. Hint, hint. Oh, yeah? That's all I'm saying. Coke Logic is doing, doing a, a great lot of job. work for no money. Well, <laughs> Coke Logic <laughs> is doing a great Steve. job with animations. And we're looking for other uh, animators out there. It might uh, Something might be happening. That's all I'm saying. Mm. Basically, you take an ONA bit, a classic ONA bit. Could be something we did today, something from the old days. And you animate it. Uh, like Coke Logic has done uh, brilliantly. If you go to iTunes in the podcast section, they're, they're free, free downloads. You can check out all of uh, Coke Logic's work. They're, they're great. We love, love animation. Does it matter what type of anime? Could I get like a sticky pat and draw little figures, stick figures, and then yeah. just brrr, someone, brrr, like that? Someone animated you puking on our show and made us all into just square people, and it was hilarious. Okay, cool. It was hilarious how they just uh, made us into square people. Uh, this is what you need to do if you want to win the $2,000. This is really, really cool. You go to onaradio.com for all the details. And uh, we've teamed up with uh, Be Kind Rewind, starring Jack Black. Can't wait to see this movie, by the way. It's in theaters. You name it, we shoot it. Yes, of course. It's in theaters, what, a week from today? Right? The new Jack Black movie. So there you go. Uh, thank you to those guys. Thank you to, to uh, you name it, we shoot it. Uh, Be Kind Rewind, yes. Okay? Go to onaradio.com for all the details on how you can win two thousand dollars another thing we should do right before the break it's uh, uh black history month and you want to set up the bit for everybody out there? yes uh every black history month uh, a lot of uh stations and tv radio they um they pay tribute to uh black people in history that's great we want to do that too but um a little more you know people that don't get the recognition that the networks give uh to um black celebrities mm -hmm. uh, athletes uh inventors Peanut guy, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, so we go a little more obscure. Right. And here you go. Here's today's honoree. 
In honor of Black History Month, the Opie and Anthony Show is honoring black heroes, African-American individuals throughout history, without whom this country would not be the melting pot it is today. Today, we honor actor Peter Edmund for his powerful performance as the engaging Private Snowball in Stanley Kubrick's Vietnam War epic, Full Metal Jacket. Anybody know who Lee Harvey Oswald was? Private Snowball. Sir, he shot Kennedy, sir! That's right. And do you know how far away he was? Sir, it was pretty far from that book suppository building, sir. Suppository building. Yeah. Book suppository building. Stay tuned for more icons of black history on the Opie and Anthony Show. Yeah, you're checking out the Opie and Anthony Show. we got to get right into this. Uh, right on our couch, Michael Emerson. Uh, let me let me quickly just say, we, we're lucky enough to interview a lot of people, and we have a lot of big stars come through our uh, studio, right? The excitement around this place, knowing that you were coming <laughs> in today from these guys, just uh, unbelievable. I'm glad he liked the show. Yeah, yeah. yeah big, uh, you got tons of fans of Lost here. Ben from Lost, of course, uh, and uh, great to have you here. Huge fan of the show, like Up said, as is everybody. Thanks. And uh, the uh, <laughs> when you were in the in the green room, I guess a few people came in to say hi. Yeah, that's and, right. Uh, what if Travis came out and just went, "Oh my God, it's, it's, it looks just like him." It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's the actor. He plays him. <laughs> you adult. <laughs> it's just so exciting. <laughs> I mean, go on. There is. Uh, I, I was saying before uh, oh, wow, we came really, back also yeah. about the writer strike. I did a lot. Yeah. It it upset so many people, but the 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 people I noticed the most upset were Lost fans because you, you want to see a full season. Yeah, there there was a there. Were, uh, I, I was at a picket by uh, Time Warner one day, and a, a car drove by, and somebody was hanging out the back window, and and they said, uh, "We're with you. Go for it, guys. But give me my Lost." Yeah. That's what everybody was just eager to see. Is like, what's going to happen here? They can't just drop it off. It's bad enough when the season ends; it's dropped off, and we don't know right. what the hell's going on. <laughs> it's not. I don't want to see half a season. It does, it, this show, I've never loved and hated something <laughs> more in my life. Every time it ends, you're like, what? It, Why would you do that to me? It is one of the most talked about shows. Uh, obviously, I got to ask you: when you first signed on, did you did you see the potential for this when uh, you first signed on? Well, I, I came into the show late. I came mm -hmm. in the middle of season two. It was already a pretty big hit when I got there, but I, I didn't sort of realize the full scale of it. I I should have taken my cue from my wife, who has been a hardcore losty since the pilot. Yeah, I, I should have known that something big was up. Did you know you were going to be on the show when the show started? No, no. No, because I, 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 as, as they've said many times, everything's planned out, everything's written, they know the story from beginning to end, so I assume everyone was cast, everybody... Oh, no, no. See, that's why I well, think no, that's what, a bunch of... Well, <laughs> they, they do have a master outline, yeah. I'm, I'm sure, but within that framework, there's wiggle room, there, there's room to improvise, and I, I think the character of Ben was a, a sort of a tryout character. Really? I, I think they felt like they, they wanted to put a, a, you know, a face and a voice uh, on, onto the adversary in mm -hmm. the show, but if, if I hadn't worked out or if that character hadn't worked out, I think they'd have been happy to kill me off and, <laughs> really? and go in a different direction. Well, uh, obviously, it, it took off. Uh, yeah, what do you, out, what right. would you attribute that to? Because uh, it you're you're not very likable on the show, but there is something uh, that, a, a bit uh, charismatic about you on, on the show. But I, why do you think people have taken to you so much? I, I, I think because it's it's ambiguously played. The the character is mysterious. Uh, mm -hmm. We we think we have evidence to suggest that he's villainous, but we can't quite be sure. He, he has a kind of a candor and maybe a little bit of charisma that keeps us sort of off balance. Yeah. yeah plus, they showed you as a kid and all the bad stuff your dad, That's and you were right. like a good person. And then you actually, what you did wasn't, it was kind of revenge. Which you know, which anybody would do. Yeah, and, then, and all, yeah. all all we see too is is behavior and effects. We we don't know what the motives are. We don't know what the agenda is. I, I think a day will come when we find out what Ben's real mission is. Mm -hmm. and we we may see him in a much more heroic light. 
The uh, uh, our buddy Jim Norton, who's not here today, is a, a fan, but he's just catching up, and it was pretty <laughs> funny because he's on. Um, I guess he's on season two. I believe so. Yeah. And he goes, uh, "Who's coming in from Lost?" I go, "Michael Emerson." He goes, "Oh, who does he play?" And it's like, "Oh no, yeah, you know the guy in the balloon that crashed? <laughs> it's him." Like because he and what was it? What was his name? What was your name when you first and you were lying about your name? Henry Gale. Yeah, Henry Gale. It's like, oh, Henry Gale. Yeah, you've missed a lot. Man. <laughs> yeah. You really have to catch up. And it's kind of good he's not here because it would ruin it. And that's been a huge thing, too, with loss. People do not want to know. It's like, don't tell me. I, I have a T vote or I, you know, I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to get it on iTunes, whatever it is. Uh, it's really one of those shows where people don't want to know what happens. Well, everyone appears to be begging for spoilers, but nobody really wants them. Yeah. I mean, the, the landscape of the show is that set of mysteries. Mm -hmm. And and if, if you give those away, then... You don't want them directly given away, but a lot of people are searching out clues. They want to draw their own conclusions and then see if they're right, because we were talking about right. the amount of websites out there that are dedicated to loss that take every little piece of the the episode chop it up get pictures of it enlarge them and you're, you you don't know if that was just a a glitch in a prop or if it really is a clue i know it's, it's like the zapruder film yeah yeah it's people have just over analyzed crazy. it crazy theor <laughs> do you look at those websites at all and I, get a laugh i don't go on them often but I, I have a brother who's a kind of a computer guy and he he checks them out for me and yeah gives me a report on the on the coolest it, stuff. It had to be the best line in TV history at the end of uh, last season when Sawyer shot the guy. And you know he's going to say something. You think he's going to say something stereotypical. He goes, that's for taking the kid off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> the best line ever. It is a great collection of characters. I mean, that you, uh, and that's, that's such an important thing in a show is to have uh, the audience have a relationship with the characters on there. And they've built such strong characters on lost and yeah. i think it's because of the format the the flashbacks and now the flash forwards really gets to build uh the story of these people instead of just here they're on an island deal with this you don't right. know what they were before uh, or what they're going to become uh but th the show really gives you that and i think it's a genius way to do it, it yeah it, it does have a really universal appeal i think that's partly the casting partly the way the story works i, I mean everybody sort of gets a, the feeling of what it would be like to be lost somewhere in in a in a place where you were up against you know issues of trial and mm -hmm. redemption having to examine and make up for past crimes or mistakes in your life you know i mean that's a sort of a universal idea yeah and it's a it's a great way to um bring in new characters which is something that uh, at the beginning the first episode you'd be like now what are they going to do okay it's these <laughs> people we I'm sorry, but we have Gilligan's Island here. We're, we're going to, you know, have uh, be these people and have to uh, watch what they do. But it, it's amazing the ability uh, with that storyline to just bring in new people and, and kill off favorites, which is something that is so odd yeah. uh, to see on a successful show. It people sucks dying. As, you go, it sucks what as an heck? actor to be on that show, though, because you could just be gone next week. But then you're back again in a flashback or a flash forward or something. You know, you're it's still true. seeing these people. Yeah, uh, w William Mapother, who, who plays Ethan, says he, he has now officially been in more episodes <laughs> since he was killed. Dead. Now, probably very, very recognizable now. Uh, these days when, when you go out. I, I have been noticed on yeah. the street. Do people treat... Now, I'm sure you're not like Ben, but do people kind of approach you uh, as, as that character and with that... They, they do. Pe people are really polite with me. <laughs> I bet they you are. Know, they, they, <laughs> a guy like Jorge, when he goes around, everybody wants to you know slap him on the back and buy him a beer. Yeah, yeah. With me, buddy. there's a little more formality. You know? <laughs> They're very nervous around they, you. They keep their distance a yeah. bit and reach out to shake my hand, and they keep their eye on me. Any part, any part of that in you? Because I know a lot of people bring their personalities to a role, but any part of, of that Ben character in, in you? Well, I, I think I'm sort of slightly formal and i'm and i'm kind of a verbal kind of a person i but i i'm nowhere near i think as chilly or as calculating <laughs> yes, chilly as he is <laughs> he is the, he is a great uh, bad guy if he is a bad guy right that's just and, it you know you don't it. you just because don't know but he's not he's not physically menacing at all you're just this little guy with glasses yeah. and you scare the hell out of people <laughs> But it's I, like, I, how do you do it? It's that those eyes, and you you just stare at them, but you know that you have something psychological that you were working on 
two months ago with somebody that's going to come into play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I I think that's that that's sort of the concept is that the the package is at odds with the contents. He he looks like the least likely yeah. guy to yeah. be you know. A, a criminal mastermind. And I know I enjoy, and and people have enjoyed, and especially the past few episodes. You just getting the crap beat out of you. You've been punched in the face more times. <laughs> they can't. They can't go any further with it. <laughs> yeah, it's like everyone has hit you at this point. I, I'm, I'm waiting for just some extra to come up and pop you in the head. <laughs> there's nowhere left to go. They they run out of places to put wounds <laughs> yeah. on my head. I, how? I I mean, no one ever looked worse in a speaking part on broadcast TV than no, I did last night. No, just pummel. <laughs> but finally, I was telling him in the green room, finally last night there was a point where they were talking about him and he just looked like, you know what, dude, I just need a break. <laughs> I, I don't want to take over the universe right now. I just need a break. You just let me sit on a rock. <laughs> and uh, everybody has to ask you uh, spoilers and stuff, and I'm sure you're, uh, you're pr pretty tight-lipped about that because they don't want you talking about it, but anything you could tell us well and you catch me at a vulnerable time I, i'm in a dangerous position because i i actually know four or five more episodes than you have seen damn it so the, and there's some good stuff in there and I, I i can tell you that some people that you've learned to like a lot are gonna get hurt <laughs> and that <laughs> And that some people it scared that, me. Him just saying that, yeah. I, like I'm not. I, I think he's not even talking about Lost anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that some people that you thought you'd never see again are going to turn up uh -huh. in really interesting ways. Yeah, the the flash forward aspect of the thing is amazing because uh, you're. It's it's it goes against every rule of television. You're giving away something. Right. You're telling the people this person will get off the island at yeah. some point. And this person's going to do this. Uh, but we don't know the middle part. We don't know exactly. how this happens. And that's the, the captivating part of the whole thing. It's really daring. I, I think it's a strong yeah. genius. You know, I, I think it will ultimately elevate the show in, into being something that's really for grown-ups. You know, re really an adult theme. Because we're, we're going to see that post-Island, there are no fairy tale endings. There, mm -hmm. no, no, sort of no one gets out alive. or you know, it, They have to deal with the same regrets and misgivings and compromises that are the truth about real life. Now, now, uh, last night's episode um, with Saeed and you pop in there, ending up, uh, you know, well, turn turn it off if you're, um, you know, not caught up yeah, yet. Spoiler you're alert. TiVo and you're TiVo'd. Uh, you're his boss. <laughs> yeah, so what what is their arrangement? Exactly? What transpired between you know, the, the, the present time on the island and that situation? How did it's, we get from yeah. here to there? Yeah. That'll be a, that'll be a story. Right no, I'm there, asking well. you how. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. That's what sucks. I was telling about the show is that it's like every episode, every week, you have to live like the, the Sopranos finale. <laughs> You you ever you know like the show usually goes all year and then the last episode you kind of kind of hush hush every week he has yeah to there's not this last episode cliffhanger thing it's every ep uh, or, or last uh, of the season finale it's every episode gives you this what the hell when that lost comes up I just blurt I I curse no no what are you doing come on <laughs> give me another minute <laughs> it does piss you off every week I get mad yeah and there aren't there aren't many shows like that you got to be really proud to be on a a, a, a successful show yeah smart I mean, smart writers yeah and when uh, that first pilot episode which was amazing for television. You know yeah. that was that was major motion picture action, yeah. and the way it's filmed. The effects crew on that show on. is amazing. When uh, they showed the plane breaking up over the island, uh, it looked great. I mean, it didn't look cheesy. Uh, some great CGI uh, uh, working on that show. Uh, uh, th those scenes where parts of the fuselage come hurtling in like bullets. And, yeah, and yeah. The beach, it still makes my hair stand on end. It, it gives it a, a major motion picture feel. And then it, it, the action in the first episode, uh, the first pilot episode, but then it just takes this turn. Because you think it's going to be, all right, it's a plane crash movie uh, yeah. or show. Yeah. I, I get it. And we're going to learn about the people. And that, wait, wait, what? What is the smoke? Right. <laughs> what is the smoke? And don't say I don't know or I'll have to punch you in the face. <laughs>
As you're always asked that. Uh, what is the smoke? Do you really know? As as an actor, do you know what that is? I, I don't. I'm not sure what no? the smoke is. But uh, my brother sent me a list of theories <laughs> every morning after the show. I get a list of theories from him, and he had an, a, a really interesting one for the smoke he this did? morning. You what can was it? Share it or? Well, he he just he 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 told me he he thinks the 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 smoke. You you remember those uh, those particles that make a circle around Jacob's yeah. cabin yeah. he he thinks th those particles when animated when they get up in the air they make this cloud <laughs> that is controllable by who Excellent question. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like I feel like I'm going to get an answer, but I'm not. I, I, it's just like in the show. Yeah, it doesn't I, give answers. <laughs> Travis really wants this. another shot at this. Travis, you got a Travis play here. We got Michael Emerson in studio. Huge from Ross, who plays, fan. Who plays also, ben. I mean, huge fan. Also, yeah. this is Travis. Hey, um, Travis, shut up. So, <laughs> no, go ahead. <laughs> You've asked some of the questions that I had. Oh. Um, but as as an actor and a fan of the show. Is there like a specific question ab about the show that you're looking forward to finding out, like the answer to? Well, it, I guess it's just my own ego, but I, I, I'll be I'll be really curious to find out who, what Ben's Uber mission is, who, what are the stakes, and who are the players, because it, it's got to be larger in scope than what we've seen. This is the tip of some great iceberg. I don't, I don't know if Ben is, you know, the last defense of humanity, if he's the only thing that stands between humankind and annihilation, or, <laughs> or, or maybe he fancies himself that. I, I'd, I'd love to know the answer to that question. Oh, who's the guy that doesn't age? The guy that brought... Uh, what's yeah, the character's name is Richard Alpert. He, he's the only guy that I've seen that hasn't aged. Yeah, he's pre-other, too. Yeah, mm. He's, he's the, older. Yeah, he's the. Yeah. He was like a an other before the others were before there. Before the others came. And he, when you were a kid, he was the same age. That's right. He brought the lady. I mean, now he's a, he just has a haircut now. Yeah. <laughs> he just has a that's haircut. Right. And it's like that freaks me out. It's yeah. like, just give me a nibble. Interesting character, isn't it? He's staring at me like Ben. You creep him out. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> he just. It'd be funny if I just went missing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be nice. To tell you the truth. <laughs> There you go. There's one way to look at it. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, you guys are all uh, making the rounds, I guess. And uh, let, what's the arrangement for the season now that the strike's over? But I guess there's going to be a problem writing uh, all the episodes. Well, they, they uh, yeah, we used up all the material we had. So I'm sure someone is writing <laughs> furiously, <laughs> yeah. even as we speak. But it'll take them 10 days to have a working script. And, and they have to hire back the entire company. You know, ev everyone was pink slipped except the actors. So they, you know, they have to rehire, you know, drivers and camera wow. and grips and greens and all, all, wow. all those people. So it'll be two and a half weeks before we can film. And we're going to shoot an, an abbreviated season. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm a little worried about. We're just going to do five more, but th these guys are the masters of compression and you know rearranging the pieces. Yeah, the, so we the, needn't worry. No, the, oh, the, <laughs> everything you would have gotten, you will eventually get. It may, may just not be all this season. They'll, they'll, you know, they'll stick it in. And how how much time do you actually spend in Hawaii? Well, previously when we shot twenty three episodes, I would be there nine months out of twelve. Mm. But now it's not more bad. like six. Because yeah. we were shooting shorter seasons. What island did you shoot on? Oahu. E everything you see. Like last night, all those scenes in Berlin with snow in oh, the no, streets. Really? That was downtown Honolulu. <laughs> wow. That's with, that's with snow machines doing that. And there's, there's Saeed making snowballs and stuff, you know. In Hawaii? And they, and they're in Honolulu. That's something. I like the little piece of business he did on the trash can. Grabbed it and wiped his hand with the smile. <laughs> That's act of talk, Ann. <laughs> you must be psyched as an actor, though, to land this gig because this is going to be played forever. And the, the check, you're going to be getting checks for this. <laughs> You're just going to wake up one morning and there's going to be a check for like 30 grand. You'd be like, you haven't worked in 10 years. You could see the guy with the artistic integrity yeah, here right. is just talking about the, <laughs> the money the aspect. Money. You know, Michael's talking about it. he likes to see where his character's going to go and sure. end up, hey, those checks are rolling in, Listen, aren't they? Hang on, hang on. That's right, Norton. All right, you were banging nails five years ago. All right, me you're alone. This, you're on the same boat with me. <laughs> I'll be 90, and I'll be at the Loss Convention. That, yeah, yeah that, that's that got to be your biggest nightmare. Oh, look at him. Oh, cringing man. over there. You're going to be the guy uh, at the table because it's going to last forever. You know, it's one of those shows that it's a... It's one of the, these groundbreaking, legendary shows that are yeah. just going to find a place in history like Star Trek did and the X-Files, right. and this is... 
This is this generation's uh, version of you're gonna, the You're going to have to wear a brown jumpsuit with a Dharma logo uh, on yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember in episode 15 when... Uh, okay, hey, get out of here. <laughs> we really have to take a break. We're really late. But, yeah. Uh, uh, Michael, f- fantastic uh, to have you in here. It's just great to really be. great to meet you. I'm looking forward to. I mean, any other cast members you want to say? Hey, Opie and Anthony, you're very nice. Hey, we're cool. uh, the and and they the are baby. fans of the show. Uh, you, you come in because I want to try to get a lost uh, box set uh, signed by everybody. That's my only mission. Yeah, but okay. not the, not the chick with the baby though. She, I almost stopped watching. My baby, my baby, <laughs> my baby, Charlie, my baby. I almost stopped watching. You the see show how hot she is, and the hills have eyes. She's hot, but yeah. in that hold, she's always holding the baby. Bye, 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 bye. I almost wanted to kill. You myself. can't get past that by how cute she is. Um, no, You're a mess. No. Mm. I was hoping the lightning strict to strike the tent and hit the baby in her. <laughs> you're, you're an awful human. I was just that aggravated me. I was so glad when Ben came in and just Dude, went over that way. It's, it's, <laughs> his Michael, name is Michael. Michael, do something awful to him. Just I'm, <laughs> I'm, calling, his brain. I'm calling Emily when I leave this. Yeah, yeah. She'll, yeah. she'll no, be like here it. next week. Oh, that's fine. I'll be in. Going, and you say, won't. <laughs> yeah, you don't. You're not invited back there, Bob Kelly. Uh, uh, Michael. Good. Yeah, th- this was a pleasure. For Lost everybody, Thursdays, ABC. Who doesn't know that? Best show uh, ever. Yeah, amazing. Uh, best of luck. Congratulations and continued uh, success. Not just for you, but because I'm a huge fan and I want to see the show go on for quite a while. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thank it's you. Good to be here. Man. Woman! A woman! You're checking out Opie and Anthony with Bob Kelly, who's going to be at the improv in Cleveland. Ohio. Good afternoon, Cleveland. Uh, Bob's going to be there Ohio, Wednesday Ohio. through Sunday of next week. Wednesday, Sunday through next week, February 20th through the 24th, Cleveland Improv. Go to improv.com and hit Cleveland Improv for tickets. Uh, call me crazy, but uh, I'm very good at uh, observation. Yeah. And I'm getting the, uh, the impression mm-hmm. that what just happened here in the studio was a pretty big deal. Yes, uh, Michael Emerson being in here was uh, a big deal. And he's on Lost, and uh, he plays Ben. Yes. And um, I got to tell you something. I, I, uh, I have never seen Lost. Which is crazy. And I, and I wasn't even going to fake it. I, like, uh, the good old Mike here says, uh, I noticed you, that you, you threw in a couple of uh-huhs, and mm, that's all I could do with that interview. But... Uh, I got the box set from the Philly crew last Christmas, and my brother took it from me, and he refuses to give it back. That's See, that's why. what it is about the show. And, and that's the God is honest truth. I keep telling him, give me my effing lost box set back, because I do want to watch the show, but I haven't yet. But didn't you, everybody, everybody in the room got a free new box set, except for me. <laughs> Wait. I didn't get it. These, are, get- all, these are all pieces of boxes. See, I got season two. Well, give me season one. I'll, I'll start there. Now they're all signed. You're not getting one of these. <laughs> what are you, crazy? Michael Emerson signed it. I, I was- want season three. I want to start from the beginning. Th- give him season three. He'd be, you'd be <laughs> lost. You watch that going, what the hell is this show about? And um, <laughs> I, I'm actually really bummed because it was Michael Emerson, right? Yeah. I had all these Emerson, Lake, and Palmer questions prepared no, for today. And, he's and, and, not an Emerson, Lake, and I, Palmer. He's. I, I was Googling my ass off last <laughs> night. I was Googling ELP. You until, Googled I, wrong, my friend. I'm like, wow, Michael Emerson's here. Cool. No. I want to see what uh, Lake and Palmer are up there. <laughs> What? No. No? It's uh, He's from Lost, and I, yeah, so. I was a gushing ass oh, yeah. when we went off the oh, air for, for uh, commercials. I go back where he's signing the lost box sets because it's not enough that I had just spoken to him. I have to go back and and g- talk to him on more personal level. And then I'm just a- saying stuff about the show and how uh, the ensemble cast, it's amazing that you could have that many people and still have the audience care about such a big cast and it doesn't come off soap opera-ish with uh, such a huge cast. And he goes, he goes, that was a big concern of mine. I was like, yeah. He thought the same thing I did. And I'm just, ugh, I'm a gushing girl. You almost kissed him. I, I, well, I probably <laughs> yeah, would have. No, you, you almost kissed him. Let's be honest He's with you. He's a cute other. guy. Not in a gay way, but in a, uh, I, I, and I respect what, what you, you do. Yes. Wait. Thank you for entertaining me weekly. Right. Thank God it wasn't yesterday. You would have to be a Valentine. <laughs> hey, where's. Is it too late. Is still <laughs> Can't around? catch him out on the street. And then from what I hear, he, he, he was walking past. <laughs> He was walking past the other studio, and who was in there? The board op is is in there? He's more than a board op, Jesus. Uh, Well, you know, uh, the audience doesn't care. (laughs) 
And uh, Michael just kind of peeked in and went, what did he do? He went, hello. He went, hello and waved at him and freaked him, just freaked really? him out. Really? Like, he could just do that, though, to people. He could walk around and freak people out. It's those eyes, man. Yeah. He was, when you were talking to him, he doesn't blink. Sometimes he's talking and, and you, you know, you're talking to an actor, yeah. but then he gets into this cadence with his voice, and his voice will go down, and you're like, holy crap, that's Ben. Yeah. That is absolutely the guy. So cool to uh, <laughs> meet him. And then Roland has to tease us and go, uh, Locke's going to be in um, in New York next week. Maybe we could get him. I go, don't don't even ask. I go, the time you're wasting asking us, you could be trying to get him. Yeah. You don't have to ask for lost people. Bring them here. Let's say hi Bring to them Nick. to me. Let's say hi to Nick in Maine. Nick. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey. I, I want to be the first to welcome the new character to the show. Opie's know nothing guy. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that, Nick. <laughs> no, I mean to, to be honest with you, the two things that I've been uh, talking about uh, this morning: the chef's table at uh, Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. Oh, that's right, yeah. And this guy, Michael something from Lost. Emerson. No, ben. no f and clue. And that's the guy's eyes truth. But you know, because of Nick, I'm gonna develop no nothing guy. <laughs> I I love the character. Uh, I like it too. Thank you. I finally have something to do on the show. Thanks, Nick. <laughs> well, they say I do nothing, you know, because they know how a radio show works. Yeah. They listen and they think they know everything. Kind of yeah. like watching one episode of Lost and you got it all figured. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. All right. So, exactly. That's the point I'm making. Yeah. But you know everything, right? Blind CC. Blind Stop. CC. Copy, paste, copy, paste, print, message board, fake name. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, you dopes. You know nothing. You know maybe uh, 1%. One percent of what goes on on a radio show. Uh, anyway, I hope he really didn't say one word during that. No, hour, you know why? Well, there are times I'll blow up uh, someone's spot and just fool around with it. Yeah. But I, I this was I, I'm not stupid. I know yeah. loss is huge. I, I'm not you know, and I know Anthony's massively into it. I've seen him him and his chick uh, cry on trains watching episodes. So I, I, what? No, no, no. My what? girl, she uh, cried. You got a little teary eyed. A little bit. A little bit. A little bit. I didn't. She was bit. crying though. It when when, when, Locke, emotions, when Locke got shot, a little bit. When Locke got shot, and it looked what? like he was like done. When he got thrown in the, the, the yeah, yeah. Of bodies, you yeah. you got emotional. No, <laughs> she did. Really? I was throwing old people out of my train seat. <laughs> Believe me. He did kind of turn into a chatty Kathy. <laughs> he really did. <laughs> Bobby, you were right behind it's him. It's called an interview, you douche. No, I know, but you didn't want no, anybody no. else. No, no, I didn't. He, you, I, you he was mine. Yeah, he was mine. Hold on. <laughs> First of all, an interview is where you interact with the person you're talking to. What you did was kind of a monologue of how much he was <laughs> talking. It was like Voss acting. First, I had to let him. You know, here it I is. I am glad that you brought that up because when Anthony gets excited about someone, yeah. Anthony is a great interviewer. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> not going to bust your balls right. as far as that goes. <laughs> But when Anthony really likes somebody that's sitting in that seat, oh boy. It's very difficult. Bastards. I am so glad it came from you, Bob. Let me tell you something. It it makes the guest more relaxed uh, when you know that you le legitimately appreciate their work and you're familiar with it. Makes everybody else feel uncomfortable. Like when you're in Letterman, you stop. <laughs> Oh, my yeah, God. It, it well, makes the guy much more comfortable when you actually answer his questions for him. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't answering. I was asking him stuff. I was I was also trying to bring people into it that might not be such big fans yeah, that, by that, that, yeah. letting one, them know. Number that, one show. Yes, yes. Um, Michael Emerson said to say um, he loved you and thank you. Oh. oh. Who, who, who? That is fantastic. Who? who? Anthony. Uh, that is great. Yeah. No, it was, Maybe he uh, would have loved us if we could Catch him on the street. In. Lunch. I see me and him doing lunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. do you? Do you really? No, you I, really? I, I go are. home. He'd actually I start right dressing home. like him, too. He'd come up with little round glasses and a Little vest. round glasses. Yeah. Can't be that yeah, try intimidatingly to, scary, try though. To, try to use that to, to maybe, you know, get a reservation for dinner tonight or something. Hey, but but I uh, interviewed uh, Ben from Lost. Yeah, yeah people whatever. would go, cool, how is he? Tell me no, about him. Not, no. like, not like Bob Kelly calling him. Uh, you pretty much called him a little guy with glasses. When? When he was sitting in the chair right there. 
You go, you know, and you're, you're just, you're a little guy with glasses. Yeah, Jesus, he is. insult the guy. He is not an insult, it's a fact. Yeah, but I'm people not don't by like asking the hard questions. People don't Anthony. like to have, they don't have a self image of themselves like that. I'm a little guy with glasses. Yeah, he they, does. Bobby. I bet he, you don't think he read that in the character description? <laughs> Jackass! What do you really think he thinks he works out? Basically, That's the description. Yeah. He's a little. He's a psychological chess player. He's not a weightlifter. And you're an ass kissing fool because <laughs> I. You're offended that I made fun of your new girlfriend just because you didn't make <laughs> as good up. an impression. Are you're you, just jealous. You're, you're, you're jealous of me. Anthony has a man crush. You're you're jealous of me. Anthony has a man crush. Because you wouldn't let me. Oh, you're, just a, you're a C blocker, is what you are. <laughs> I wasn't. It was a little C creepy. Blocking you. A little creepy. You were creepy. I'm a huge fan of the program, and his character and is amazing. And so am I. All right. And look, so is Travis. And he said and he fans. loved me. Because you wouldn't. <laughs> he only loved you. Cause Find you your own lost star, Bob Kelly. Let's yeah. say. Help let's me. say hi to Scott in New York. Scott, <laughs> jump in here, please. Help us out. Help. Yeah. Oh, this reminds you of Anthony's beautiful interview with little Shawnee Smith. Oh, my God. Okay, look. Well, you know what? I've been a Shawnee Smith fan for many years, and I was gushing a bit with her. I got to tell you, I, I thank Bob Kelly today because it's something we kind of have noticed over the years, but too, we're too scared to bring up to Anthony. That he gets a little little chatty when he really likes somebody. Yes. So now we're going to have to bring some examples to this show. Yes. Jesus <laughs> Christ. It turns into All the, right. I, it turns into the <laughs> view. And I'm not saying... That is not good radio. It, it's oh, de- it's oh. not about that. It was great radio. It was very, I don't even know the show, and I was very uh, in, uh, interested in, in the whole process that was going on in front of me here. But yeah, with tra- that said, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> dude, you, you are you're so eager to make a connection. You're at, no, it's trying to get out. I know we have limited time, so I want to get a lot of yeah. information and, out. And you don't want anybody else getting involved. Yeah. You, yeah. Would have, you would have put curtains up around you. <laughs> Come on, Jesus! I am really a douche. Poor Travis yeah. is, is probably a bigger dying. fan than you. I was ready to cut him off too. Oh my god! Uh, yeah. Oh wow, Bobby. Oh, I. And you notice also, like Anthony doesn't smile a lot. Yeah. People think I don't smile. Anthony barely smiles. He he leans in a little to listen yeah. to the answer, and he just really kind of has this like. I was looking into uh, his eyes. Yeah, a little most, smile on his face. Most of the time, he's just a club soda drinking, miserable ass. <laughs> But today, oh, hey, leaning over, turned all the way around. <laughs> yeah, my back was completely to open. Doesn't even acknowledge that he's actually doing a radio show with other people. I was exactly. I was having a conversation As, with uh, uh, an actor that I respect his work. But he was making it sound like I was like, you know, this must be great. Any yeah. question I had, yeah. he actually was like, you know, put trying to put it down because he didn't want yeah. him to go, you know what? You're right about yeah. that, Robert. Michael Emerson was Robert. this close to going, uh, Anthony. Even though you're I, I just need to let you know I'm not gay. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting a vibe here. I just want oh, to. He's a married know. man. Yeah, no, he. Act, but why do you think what he said gonna, that? Yeah, he that's what I'm saying. That because you were weirding him out. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> weirding him out. I'm a fan of the show, dude. Conducting an interview. You bad sta- boy. You, was, <laughs> oh, you bastard. You were staring at him. <laughs> we got a fan boy. <laughs> you were staring at him like he stares at people in the show. <laughs> <laughs> you think I creeped him out that much? Oh, wow, yeah, you were man. creeping Jesus him out. Jesus Christ. And let's not forget, uh, oh. Ken Burns came in here, and wow. Oh. I'm a big fan of his documentaries. <laughs> I think they're officially dating. <laughs> I mean, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. Really a bug-eyed fanboy. Oh, uh, fanboy. What is it that Pray for me. Me and my... He said my wife for no reason, too. It had no reason. Be, my wife... <laughs> he did not. He did. He looked right at you. He went, but he, be, be, look at the picture. <laughs> look at the picture. Oh, no. What, what? Turn oh, no. Look, turn the this. monitor on, ass. Oh, turn, yeah, we, had, we just, just say that, that every morning. Oh, look how much I'm smiling. <laughs> I am a douche. And Look at me, I'm in love. He's like, ah, oh, another picture <laughs> with a fanboy. Here we go. Oh, God. Here's my, I, I give a crap that I'm standing yeah. next to your face. And you got mad at me from calling him a little guy with glasses. Look at that photo. Yeah. What well, is he? he? He's Ben from Lost. He is. I love him, too. Why don't you share him? I didn't have enough time. I, uh, We're not uh, hanging out drinking over here. We're uh, conducting an interview, and I knew time wait, was running out. Me and uh, me, me and Michael Emerson had an awkward moment because after the interview, he's taking pictures and stuff with all the fanboys, and uh, 
He kind of looked at me like, uh, yeah, you know, you want a picture? You know, I'm standing yeah. here for a couple more seconds, and I was just like, I don't really know who you are. I, uh, oh, you said that? I, See, no, I didn't say it, but I kind of said it with my eyes like, I. Uh, that's not And now right. when I catch up with this loss with the box set, I'm going to be very disappointed oh, to get a be, picture with Ben. You're going to be really mad. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're really going to have Oh, there it is. Anthony. It's up on uh, Pal Talk. Look at how happy I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I look like a goofy fan. Nice. Bobby, you oh, you like, I am. you open the floodgates because now I'm just getting uh, communiques from people that want to remain anonymous. a bunch of rats, whole family of rats. Uh, somebody is somebody uh, is reminding me that you did the exact same thing when Quentin Tarantino was in here as well. Yeah, okay, we Quentin Tarantino. Getting, we are getting examples for next <laughs> yes. week's show. I'm a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino oh. and his work. <laughs> <laughs> a chatty do? Kathy. When Anthony really likes someone and it, and the interview's Dude. going well, and I, I, you know, call me crazy, but I try to maybe maybe be a part of it. <laughs> Sometimes he'll turn around and look at me with these big eyes, like, "Oh God, don't ruin this for me." <laughs> How dare you, speak. <laughs> right? Don't ruin right this now it's for the me. Anthony show. <laughs> We'll get back to your craziness uh, in a his, while, but him, I'm interviewing the big star. Him and his high cheekbones. <laughs> <laughs> I can't stand you. You, you just, you really did. You're just jumping in. You are just an FP blocker, <laughs> a famous person blocker. You just want to be the only guy in the room. I, I may, you know something? I, I'm willing to have an open mind and realize I could be a douche. Yeah. As far as this subject goes, I might be the douche. What picture is that? Look at that. Oh my God! <laughs> it was like you're getting your first picture with like your third grade teacher. <laughs> Shut oh, that up. Hot chick that he's, who is that? Kristen Bell from Heroes. Oh, Kristen Bell. Okay, yeah, sure. All right. Yeah, another show well, I don't. Uh, I haven't seen she, unfortunately. She, but she was cute. But and, look at you. Uh, you couldn't be stiffer. Oh, you are. You just. I am really there. stiff. I'm standing there. I'm an ass. What can I tell you? I get. I'm like Lucille Ball when it comes. I love Lucy with famous people. I'm, I make an idiot of myself. You don't even know what to do with your hands. They're just straight. You. You side. know what you're gonna do? You're gonna make me so self conscious that I'm just gonna be like uh, hamna 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 uh, next interview. Good, good, good. Why don't you try shutting your face for an interview? <laughs> you shut up, Let Travis. Maybe Fan and other people of the show get some in. How's that, Mister? <sighs> Just loudmouth, chatty Kathy. Well, so I, was I, very, I was very, I was very you, happy and oh. and and very uh, thrilled to to talk to him. Yeah. Well, we're gonna get some examples now because it's <laughs> something that we have noticed, and I'm so glad Bob Kelly brought it up. Thank you, Bob. We didn't know really how to like. Uh, Bit <laughs> yeah, to break this to you. <laughs> wow. So, so China. Ben, yeah. you, going uh, through celebrity pictures now? All right, well. The show's amazing the way you shot up. Well, yeah. I, I was bringing up examples of, of how. No, it was, a, it was very good. Oh and Bobby, God. shut up. You were pretty close, man. You were a close yes. second. Yes. Thank you, Opie. I want to thank Opie for bringing that up. Oh, you were a close Bob second. You, were his, maybe, you, you were his Robin maybe, to his Batman. You maybe. came in second place in the douche. You couldn't even be top douche. Maybe I was a little. Maybe I am a little <laughs> jealous that I couldn't be top douche. Then I did like Bobby's question uh, to the character Ben about the character Sawyer in that scene he was not in at all. Which one? Oh, yeah, yeah. thank you. Because I, I was a little, uh, I, I felt a little embarrassed and, and awkward uh, during that what line of questioning. You talked about how your favorite, they were talking about something completely unrelated, and then he said, right. wasn't that cool how Sawyer said that cool line? No, I said it was one <laughs> That of was cool pretty much it. Thanks reason, for summing it up like that. that. You don't, you don't understand. No, no, no. Then you're, you're getting too brainiac, which you usually do, because you're smarter than everybody it's, in the room. It's not about me. I hate you and your two parents. <laughs> Focus. Uh, <laughs> okay, but uh, while you're talking... And the reason why I said that, I, if you listen, I said one of the, it's one of the greatest lines in uh, history of Yeah, TV. and it wasn't his. And no, good job. Uh, but good job. A good way to make show, the guest feel good. No, but the show itself... Yeah, on the virus the tour, lines. on the virus tour, uh, d let's say... Uh, Jim Norton, uh, the best comic and uh, one of the funniest jokes ever, yeah, as did. I'm interviewing you. He did. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it is. It's true. No, it's not. You comics are petty asshole. No, we're not. Uh, oh. Whoa. Uh -huh. Whoa. I knew, I knew, I, I knew I'd say something that would get done. All right, listen. Put the picture of Bob Kelly up. Look, you look like look I'm, at you. I'm having fun. Fun. I'm, I'm fun. You're not he having fun. It's a said, photograph. Dude, it looks, like, it looks like you're trying out for the new Three Stooges. Said, <laughs> <laughs> look at that look on your face. You're the curly. Oh, right. He curly said, curly for the new century. My friend told Eyebrows me to make. Eyebrows up in the air, my, you freak. My friend told me to make a silly face, and I did. Oh. All right, listen. You, you at least, not, at least not have some energy. You're standing like you're paralyzed, and they propped you up with a stick. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true, man. That's kind of true. Right. Plus, 
flat and stiff as a board there. this one. A little uncomfortable. You're so nervous to get a picture with your big... Uh, you're a big hero there. All right. Hey, we got to go, unfortunately. And uh, I want to remind people before we get out of here for the weekend, you can win $2,000 courtesy of the Opie and Anthony show and courtesy also of Be Kind Rewind starring Jack Black. You name it, we shoot it. This movie looks Ooh. like it's going to be all right, huh? Ant? Yeah, I saw the trailer uh, the other day. Yeah. It was on the, uh, on the uh, iTunes. I like that. You can just download trailers. Yeah, that's And I checked great. it out. Looks like a funny Jack Black movie. I love the Jack Black. Uh, this is what we're looking for, an original animated bit from our show, because we love animations. Mm-hmm. Coke Logic has, uh, has proven that to us, man. We love animations. This is what you need to do if you want to win the $2,000. Go to onaradio.com for details. Uh, courtesy, uh, like we said, of Be Kind Rewind, starring Jack Black. You name it, we shoot it. In theaters a week from... Do the math. Today. There you go. A week from today. And that's how we end today. Bob Kelly's going to be at the Improv uh, Cleveland. Yep. Cleveland Improv uh, starting this coming Wednesday all the way to Sunday. 20th, February 20th to February 24th, Cleveland Improv. And I still haven't watched that thing you wanted me to watch. I apologize. Oh, sorry. Right. But I will watch it. Uh, it's going to be, it's yeah. it's be a DVD coming out soon, I got right? The, yeah, I got the uh, Comedy Central special coming out April 4th at 10 p.m. And then four days later, April, uh, April 8th, my new CD... DVD and the half hour special. And the DVD is a documentary. Colin's in it. Uh, Jimmy, little Jimmy's in it. Everybody's in it. So it's good. everybody's in it, Bob. Yeah, well, everybody. Uh, I tried to get you everyone. Guys. I tried to get everyone. I tried to get everyone. I tried to get everyone. I tried to get. <laughs> Did you just say I, everyone? I tried to. You guys, your name's in the front. Why wouldn't you guys put us in anything? Because, no, this is back when I first... I beg Colin Quinn. I'm like, give me just, uh, give me like a minute on Tough Crowd. Just one lousy minute I'm looking for. I would have put you guys in. I actually asked you guys to do a thing, and you, yeah, 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 and you blew me off. Honest to God. Really? Yeah, I asked you, like, hey, hey, I wanted to do this thing. Yeah, that sounds cool. And it was at the end of the show, and you guys, yeah, uh, hey, uh, and then you went to some meeting. Do you listen to this radio show? We don't listen to each other. So why would I, like... Actually, listen to what you were saying. Well, this is when I first started coming in, too. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we didn't think you were going to blow up. You're Thanks. right. <laughs> 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 now I'm jealous, though, to be honest with you. Uh, Bob Kelly, he's he's a great friend of the show. Uh, Cleveland, you're lucky to have him next week, man. Make sure you go out and uh, and check out Bobby when he's in town. All right, we're over uh, TechSem now, where we're going to be yeah. interviewing Michael Madsen. I'm a big fan. Yeah, so am I, man. That's going to be a, that's gonna I'm be not going to say a word now. Go screw yourselves. Good. All right. Uh, <laughs> thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you. Not on Monday. A little repeat, but good repeat stuff. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, and we'll we'll do our next show live uh, for all of you. Just battling now. Just hit whatever. <laughs> this is the Opie and Anthony Show. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony. Opie and Anthony.
And here we are at XM Satellite Radio, the Opian Fanboy Show. <laughs> <laughs> Call him an Opian Fanboy. <laughs> Why? You know, I get a bad rap. <laughs> Hey. I I, uh, I haven't been this excited in a while because it's something I've wanted to say for a long time. Uh, you don't, a, you don't think I felt like a, 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 a nothing sitting on Letterman's couch and I, I talked for 30 seconds? Hey. Bob Kelly finally brought up the fact that Anthony, when he gets a little nervous because he's a little excited about the person he's talking to, hey. gets a little chatty. I'm a little just, chatty. I just chat a little. Uh, um, when I, but, saw, I saw that Letterman... I, ne- I was like, shut up. No. No. Let him talk. Now you're, now you're going too far. Look, okay. now you've gone. Uh, now, you're, now you're messing with my, my, my Irish brother here. Now we're both going to have to beat you up. He's Italian. Well, you know what I mean. The Irish, though, they're, they're known for that. He's Italian. They beat the a, shit out of each other. But as soon as you mess with cock. one of them, then they, they join forces and kick the sh- shit out of the, uh, the stranger. <laughs> which you are. La, 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 la. And Dave. And then. And then Dave. And then Dave. And then Dave. And then Dave. Oh, you Paul are Opie a had douche. his feet dangling off the couch, I was twiddling like, his thumbs. I was like. Da, 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 da. No, I don't. <laughs> hey, it took the pressure off me. I still get the credit for being on Letterman, so <laughs> I don't give a shit. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> You did look like the cool one. I was you, just, you were the man in the relationship that night. Oh, I was just kind of you know what? talking. We're trying to keep this fun, Bob. Uh, <laughs> it's a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're obviously referring to the uh, interview with uh, I have already forgot his name, <laughs> Michael em- em- Emerson. Em- yeah. I got to think Emerson Lake and Palmer. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Uh, ben from Lost was on the other side of the show. If you're just tuning in and. And Anthony was a bit excited, and Bobby hmm. finally brought it to everyone's attention, something that I think a lot of people have picked up on over the last few years. And well, <laughs> you know, I, a- Anthony uh, asked questions and, and also answer them, answers them at the same time. I do not. And the key I, is, at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were, he's pretty much answering the question he's asking. <laughs> no. <laughs> Travis was all excited. <laughs> he I turns was, his back to us. It's like, all of a sudden he's uh, he's uh, inside the actor's studio. He, <laughs> he's, uh, <laughs> uh, he actually wanted to go to the couch and sit next to him and interview <laughs> right, him that way. No, right. <laughs> oh, I'm getting, I'm getting a bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good interview, obviously. Oh. But I, now I got to, I guess, kind of jump in the barrel myself because someone writes on the answer feedback. We don't have it printed out. Uh, I, if, yes, right here. Um. Somebody brings it to my attention. Uh, this guy from his cell phone. If you if you instant feedback from a cell phone and you want credit, you got to write your name somewhere. He writes, and why doesn't OPD uh, OPD uh, and why doesn't OP do more interviews? Two words. Ed Asner. Ah, thank you. And see, that's my problem. That's when uh, I was and... out of the loop. I was playing <laughs> poker in a tournament, and Ed Asner was brought over as a guest when I wasn't there, and it was. All you could call it was complete anarchy <laughs> at the table with poor old Ed Asner in the middle of it. We had me. We had Joe Rogan. He was like Reginald Denny at that intersection. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had... Uh, you, have you heard the Ed Asner clip? No. Oh, my God. Do we have a short version of this? It's two minutes. It's two minutes? That's, yeah, we could... It's XM, yeah. please. We could kill two minutes. That's easy. Um, yes. Well, it was a poker tournament in L.A., and I had to do the show by myself, and uh, I mean not by myself without Anthony. Oh, there was uh, Jimmy. Was Jimmy there? Jimmy was there. Yeah, Jimmy was there, and uh, Joe Rogan and yeah, ben, Rogan and Ben laughing like an idiot, <laughs> and and I have to now sit down with the great Ed, Ed Asner, <laughs> and it was kind of a boring interview, so I I just kind of <laughs> had to tell him it was. He pulled the switch. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, it, yeah, <laughs> the switch flipped in we, his head. We have <laughs> we have different styles in. As far as interviewing. There's different interviewing <laughs> styles. <laughs> Anthony Gezza. <laughs> Which I call then, making the guest comfortable. And I like to make him uncomfortable because I didn't do my research on the person we're interviewing. So <laughs> this is my MO. Here's the Ed Asner interview. Part of it. Trying to get rid of me? Yes. What are you doing, Ben? <laughs> oh. <laughs> ben, what, ben, what are you doing? Making sign language. What's the sign language? Uh, Ed... That's Ben. And, and, He's our producer. And he decides when uh, a guest is uh, getting a little too boring, and that was the sign that, what the that oh, he okay. usually gives. And, uh, More man, what's disrespect the to Ed well, I, We're I, having I, a good interview I with can, Ed Asner. I, I, can, I can tell you, Anthony, that that's the last <laughs> time I'll ever be on your show. No, that was, uh, that, yeah, Ben. I've, I've suffered your insults you enough. Anthony. And I, <laughs> I, I certainly wouldn't come insults. back again. 
I'll be glad to talk to you about the Columbia uh, oh, documentary some that. other time when he's not around. Can I talk to you, Ed? I'm okay. a big fan. I love you. Absolutely. Thank you. Be how, sure how, that he's not in. I, I don't. He does this all the time. I'm oh, a big fan. I'm very happy to have you on the show. He is. Uh, he is. Uh, yeah, he's a destroyer. He's a destroyer. <laughs> destroyer. <laughs> he's like Gordon Gecko. He builds yeah. nothing. Yeah. He liquidates. He's filthy. <laughs> He's, he's greasy. Yes, he is. I don't swarthy. want to smell his shorts. He's a Sven <laughs> In quotes, I don't want to smell his shorts. Ed Asner. Bravo. The great the Ed Asner. The great Ed Asner. Thank you, sir. Very Thank nice to meet you. you. Thank you very much. Where's Norton going and where's Voss going? Oh, you're getting photos and stuff? All right. Everyone is uh, getting pictures with, with Ed Asner. <laughs> what you do? Dude, you went after Ed Asner. I didn't go after oh him. Oh, my God. You we so just, hurt him. We were just having <laughs> fun. I think he was really upset. I, I, I guess he didn't really get our, I don't think, no, uh, he, our, our sense, sense of got, humor. No, no, the goof. It's hard for people to get the Actually, goof. Actually, he's dude. a legend, and I... Uh, I I loved Mary Tyler yeah. Moore growing up. A lot of the old guys don't get the goof. No, they don't want it. They're no. like, come but, on. But I can't, like, I can't be something I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> You're a destroyer. He calls you a destroyer. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till Anthony hears this on the replay. Oh, it was phenomenal. Hey, Jimmy, get back here, man. I'm, I, I started sweating. <coughs> Ed, no, come on. Give me a handshake, please. Fuck you, he said. No, fuck you. Dude, Ed Asner just said, fuck you. Oh, that's phenomenal. And we're back live. So maybe that's oh, why I don't do many. <laughs> take the helmet. I like uh, how he was blaming me. <laughs> right, uh, uh, Anthony. Anthony, I'm like, no. Nah. That's Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan was playing the part of Anthony in that told, segment. He would have told you to shut up. Yes. What, what a mess <laughs> of a show. I would have shut up. We go all the way out to L.A., and, like, Anthony's not even doing the radio show because he's playing poker, and Joe Rogan is making believe he's Anthony, and Asner doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Hmm. Uh, just another day uh, doing the show. Yeah. This is a great name for Opie. The Destroyer. Oh, I know. He's just the Destroyer. <laughs> the Destroyer of everything that is holy. <laughs> the guy had you pegged. <laughs> and then I was like, all right, well, shake my hand. He goes, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you. Probably hasn't s sworn in like 18 years. Right. He finally just let a nice fuck you out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're uh, reminded of that today. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So what would you rather have? A chatty Kathy or the destroyer? The destroyer. <laughs> I, uh, I I looked at that as a compliment. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Jesus, you call a guy boring. <laughs> that guy's a legend yeah. in the business. It's like it, it, the thing well, is the way it led up. It was like, well, our producer, well, uh, is I, telling us, and usually it's our producers telling us, you, you know, we're out of time or this. Uh, our producer is telling us the interview is boring. It's like, wait a minute. Well, what? No, he, he loves breaking the fourth wall down. Oh, he blames the producer. He doesn't blame himself, like, but he bl blurts it out. He's like Bruce Willis in well, Moonlighting. He just looks at the camera. Yeah. Can I, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's where we got our break down the eighth wall right from it, by the way. Um, no, but to take you inside that, like, um, the interview was going nowhere. And Ben was, it really wasn't, because I just didn't do my research I, well especially out there the, you didn't know who was all who was gonna all of a sudden be in front of you like oh fuck ed asner and then you start thinking what the fuck can i add? whatever and ben was like giving sign language because he was like, like trying to tell us something like i forgot like another guest is standing by or anthony's doing really good in poker or, he was doing something i'm like having oh. a seizure I, right <laughs> yeah. and i'm like this is my fucking out <laughs> get out yeah, he did call me a fucking uh, wasp as well. He called oh, you a yeah, wasp? Yeah. yeah, that's just the short version. It, it's fucking a, wasp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, why, can't you, why, can't, why can't you get fired for calling somebody a fucking wasp? No kidding. Uh, are we getting the great Ronnie B on the phone? I hope so. Because um, uh, we got Roland in studio. Now we got to reset this for, for people that, that are just tuning in. But for Valentine's Day, uh, Don Wicklin invited me and my girl and Ronnie B and his wife and of course, Don Wicklin's uh, wife to uh, dinner last night for Valentine's Day, which I thought was really weird. And he kept emailing me. He's like, "Come on, you could check this off your list, whatever that means." I guess he was like referring to the bucket list or something, things you should do before you die. He goes, "You could check this one off." And then he started saying that we were going to sit at uh, something called the chef table, the chef's table, right? And I didn't even know. I swear to God, I had no clue what that meant. Really, had no idea. And then he said uh, it's going to be at some restaurant called uh, the London, uh, Gordon Ramsay's restaurant, I guess, yeah. chef table. Gordon Ramsay. And uh, a little thing about Don, maybe we get Don on the phone, too, because uh, he was very excited because he went to culinary school. And I'm like, all right, whatever. Did he? And then uh, 
We get to the restaurant, and the restaurant was beautiful, like five star, ridiculous. And I'm like, wow, because he made us wear suits and stuff, which I didn't want to wear. Uh, and all of a sudden, we go through these doors, and now we're in this crazy VIP room, which is even nicer than the restaurant itself, which I thought would be impossible because it was beautiful. <coughs> and then we go through another set of doors, and now we're in some kind of like uh, hallway. And now we're in the kitchen. I'm like, wow, I guess they're, they're, we have to walk through the kitchen to get to that real, real special <laughs> area. But no, he, they set us at a table right next to the chefs as they're cooking in this really nice booth. And I still didn't understand how great this was. <laughs> and Roland is actually mad at me now. Well, it's like an uh, honor, though, because it's Chef Ramsay. Well, he creates the food. Gordon Ramsay, right? Yeah. Oh, Chef, Chef Ramsay. Jeff I thought you said Jeff Ramsay. Jeff. No, Chef. I, I thought he Ramsay. goes, it's Chef, Jeff Ramsay. Yeah, Jeff from, from Animal Chef. Planet. No. <laughs> right. No, he so. has Michelin stars. He's huge. Right. And uh, and then there was course after course after course after course after course. And uh, I don't know. I I thought the food was really good. Yeah, but the chef's table, you go, I like, they'll say, what do you like? And if you like, I like this certain mousse, and he'll create it for you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I got all Did that. Did you cook with him, though? I didn't want to. Huh. <laughs> no, like the honor. And I said it earlier, uh, Gordon Ramsay wasn't actually cooking. It's his joint, and uh, I guess he was in the area or something, but it was some other chef. But and, his suit, I mean, the guy uh, is huge, too, the guy, his right-hand man. He's on the F-Word show. The oh, really? phenomenal, yeah. Yeah, the sous chef is, is oh, so it wasn't, unbelievable. So when I, after the meal, like had a moment with him and said, you know, I, uh, I'm a restaurant owner, and my brother, he's a great chef, that was probably bad, right? He was probably going, oh. Really? Right inside, yeah, because it's like... Oh, so I shouldn't just, compare any yeah. restaurant to the no, restaurant he's, he's a Michelin. Yeah, I mean, you can't... This is, What's you a can't, Michelin? I got, Mich I got Michelin it's tires. Based, Who listen, gives a shit? You can't compare a chicken pot pie. <laughs> or, or, you know. Are you making fun of my... Are you insane? No. You've never eaten at my brother's restaurant? No, no I'm not saying it's bad. It does a little better than a chicken pot pie, Do they, ha they have Mr. that? Bob thing? Kelly? Do they have that? Oh, uh, no. It's it just their training, though. It's like intense. So like they go to the indigenous regions. Like his chef wanted to learn Italian food. He stayed in Sicily for like two years. Two to, years? Did you study. get that done in a month? Two months? No. D well, delivery. Yeah. Right. The pizza but, joint. But it just, his background <laughs> is, is just insane. His whole background. But from two the years. Series, the After sauces. a week or two, you're like, all right, I get it. Some basil, oregano. <laughs> no. Is that the official story? He had to go to Sicily for two years no, to study no, cooking? No, he or, started, or did you pull a Michael Corleone and shoot a cop? Right. No, just he started oh. as a teenager <laughs> to go through. But it's, like, it's insane, his well, background. Let's get the great Ronnie B on the phone. Yes. I bow to this man. It's uh, Ron Bennington from the Ron and Fest Show. Ronnie. What do you say, buddy? Uh, well, I'm, Ron. I Ron. I, I don't know. I, I, I think we were kind of in the same boat. I'm starting to get the impression that last night was a really big deal. We were living large, my friend. Yeah. We were living like Jackie Gleason there for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie Gleason. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I show up in my suit. Ronnie's in his. We're looking at each other like, all right. What is this? Opie, it was so great to see the old confirmation suit. It's been so many years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look pretty awkward in the suit. But, uh, so he found $10 in his pocket from his grandmother. <laughs> yeah, and, and she's been dead for seven years. <laughs> I miss her. But anyway, um, so what do you think, Ronnie? Ten courses. We had like, like pre-dessert appetizers. Like the, uh, we had appetizer desserts even. And then we yeah, had we something after like dessert. Like we were living like Romans. It was literally <laughs> a Roman orgy. I never ate so much while I was jerking off. <laughs> just... Yeah, it's good stuff. We lost count Seriously? in the kitchen. I think officially it was an eight course meal, but there were there were things they were serving that they didn't want to count as courses, right, mm -hmm. Ronnie? Yeah, there was a, a cheese plate that came in three and a half hours into this thing. <laughs> no joke. We were there four hours. Yeah. Four hours to eat but, dinner. No, Four hours like with Don Wicklin. It's an experience. And I, I talk. Roland's saying. And okay. I got to apologize to Ronnie and his wife. It's Valentine's Day, and I'm just talking Ronnie's uh, ear off. I, I know I was talking a little too much, but I was I was uncomfortable to be in the oh, booth no. with Don Wicklin. And I, I, I every once in a while I would like turn and like ask him some question I didn't really need the answer to, and then <laughs> I would go back to Ronnie and we'd talk radio and this and that, but. On Valentine's yeah. Day. On Valentine's Day, right. Yeah. Wiggy was so excited, and then he got to put on a little apron yeah. and go cook to everybody. I was like being at a kid's party where the, where the birthday boy gets to ride a pony. <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, you went to Build-A-Bear. Yeah, it 
Could we Rather, build a bear of food? <laughs> of food, where the kid gets to get up and build his own bear. <laughs> I, I swear to God, the guy's like, would you like to uh, cook? I go, what the fuck do you think? I'm going to go over and cook with everybody? Yeah. I've, been to, I've been to a salad bar before. I'm not impressed with it. Thank you, Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you, because I've been getting shit all morning that I should have been more impressed. I don't know. Maybe oh. if I went to culinary school, I would get what's going on. It, it, it looked impressive. Well, it, they, you, they put food in molds. Great. Were they sautéing? They had a no, saucier, I believe his yeah. name is, right? Yeah. Well, I know that from Ratatouille. So. Oh, Ratatouille. <laughs> Ratatouille or whatever, right. Here's the thing. The food was amazing, but we're in the kitchen, so it's hot as piss. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One more for me. Yeah, the kitchen doesn't seem like the place to be to eat. You don't even want the chair near the kitchen door. I was bitching, and Ronnie was bitching. We took our jackets off immediately. The sweat is just, like, forming on our foreheads. It well, was you know, so like, hot. Uh, you know, it's like when you eat good food, but in the kitchen, you're a fucking busboy at that point. <laughs> That's what they do. They have to pick at it as they're running in and out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're eating with the border crossers, and I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Me and Ronnie are looking like the, uh, the portions. They were a little small, huh, Ronnie? Yeah, they were a little tiny, but they went on forever, bro. They really forever. I mean, yeah, the stuff portions. you felt guilty that you were going to eat because it looked just way too pretty. Yeah. Who, who was the waiter? Was it the actual chef? I yeah, guess. Yeah, the chef brings it over to yeah, you. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Where it's from, and then he shows you the raw materials. Yeah. He's showing us like in uh, a lemon from India. Yeah, that looked like an octopus head. It's yeah. the only way to describe it. But uh, Bob Kelly's in studio today, too, Ronnie, and he's mad as well. I, I'm sorry. We don't know this culture crap. Yeah, but it, it's, it's like, you know, I mean, maybe because you guys get a lot of stuff or whatever, but, like, you know, if somebody took me to a five-star restaurant for nothing, I'd be like, I don't have to pick up the check. Yeah. It's like, like half. I'd be excited about that. If they took me to another portion of the thing, and then it's it's Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay's rest he's on, restaurant. He has four TV shows. Oh, great. It's yeah. a five-star hey, restaurant. People, uh, that's terrific, but take me out of the kitchen, put the TV show up on the screen. Where I can do the <laughs> yeah, it was hot as balls in there. Uh, and these guys have, are trying to make me understand uh, how great this was last night. They're, I mean, this analogy hasn't come in yet, but they're basically saying it's like watching the Rolling Stones kind of work out satisfaction in front of you. Yeah, I know, but don't sit me too close to the amplifier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. It's gonna hurt your ears. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, there was are... a really beautiful restaurant that we missed out on. Fuck, fucking Ron had me dying, man. Because I mean, the food is coming out. He's like, "Holy shit, we're three and a half hours into this, and now a cheese plate." And then he made some kind of coke analogy that was brilliant. <laughs> what was the coke analogy again, Ronnie? Well, basically, it's like when you're on a twelve-hour coke run where you don't want to give it up anymore, but. You know the next bump could kill you. <laughs> <laughs> All that excitement factor was going on for us. Oh, God damn and it. You can't great. really refuse anything either. You can't just no, say you no. you don't turn it down. And like you said, if somebody else bought the Coke, what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> and, and um, you know, I really, especially at first, I, I'm no joke. I'm not trying to play this up for the radio. I had no clue how unbelievable this experience is was uh, going to be, okay? So the the waiter, the first waiter, we had probably 10. Well, no, we had about, how many waiters? Probably three or four waiters, and then we had probably 10 chefs that stopped by the table. Yeah, they all, all have a specialty in this yeah. restaurant, right? And uh, I felt like such an ass because the waiter goes, anyone have allergies here? And my girl just starts rattling off everything I'm allergic to, and then I... I Is I, she I, monk? And, and and then of course I have to start with the jokes like yeah also allergic to dust mites and uh, and grass and I don't think they're he, cooking with that no they they yeah they didn't get the joke the uh, dust but uh, it was the captain though. but that was the head waiter oh oh the captain yeah he's the one that goes in the kitchen for the chef yeah captain. he looked a little more uh, special than the rest of them so I don't know I, it was great it was and, and Wicklin just wanted like. Me to go, wow, Don. He wanted thank your you. love. Like, it, yeah. like, all he's ever wanted was your love. Yeah. And then Ron, oh, yeah. And then Ronnie's turning into a therapist trying to have me and Don work out our differences in front of, the, in front of this, like, amazing <laughs> situation. It's, it's just a story of unrequited love. It is. Uh, between Opie and Wicklin. Like, uh, w Wicky is just uh, taken. Yeah. And Opie, um, not so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, then Ronnie, you know, because he's been in the business a long time like like we have, 
And Ronnie and I all of a sudden like start looking at each other. We're like getting very suspicious. We're like, what? What is this going to cost us in the end? And it wasn't whatever money. Who gives a shit? Throw the money on the table. But we're we're talking. What is this going to cost us in the end? In the Are long we going to have to yeah. deliver a kilo to somebody? Are we going to have to be uh, you know promoting trips to the Dominican Republic? <laughs> there was going to be some kind of something going on. A little plug hole or yeah, type of yeah. thing, right? Right, Rod. Well, it was always the we're making some changes dinner. I don't know what you're doing that. <laughs> we're restructuring some things. Yeah, by the end of it, though, I certainly appreciated uh, what was happening in front of us, but uh, I didn't know going into it. I really didn't. <sighs> did you, Ron? Yeah, I did. You, you did I, understand? Yeah. I mean, I, I, the, the place is incredibly famous. He's a, a very famous guy. Yeah. Ron's a man of the world, too. Yeah, he certainly is. He's got a, a definitely more culture. I don't know culture. what Wiki spent. What the hell did he drop to get that table? On One Valentine's Day. Also- on Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, yeah. I just thought that, you know, they, they kind of overbooked, and that was the last table they had available. And literally, <laughs> and he's like, he's handing roses to our chicks and stuff. Like, the Oof. Whole yeah, and, Jesus. And I, I, we try to pay because we're like, all right, because I know Don. Don will take a bullet for the fact is he'll take a bullet for any of us, and he'll like, he'll like just max out credit cards just to try to get us to love him and stuff. So I'm thinking, <laughs> how how much money is this costing? And he's not taking a dollar. It's, not a not a one. He's he's probably going to expense it and hope it gets lost in this merger. <laughs> oh, by the way, we're, we weren't supposed to talk about this on the radio because he kind of was hiding this from Elo. I just remember. Oh. That. Holy shit, I just remember that. Yeah, so thanks to Elo. We had a great time. Because he goes, please don't tell Elo. Oh, sh- oh, shit. And I'm not even joking. We were oh, supposed to keep boy. this on the QT. But I'm thinking to myself, this is going to make for some good radio the next day. <laughs> hey, someone's got to go under the bus. It's got to be Wicklin. <laughs> he's, he's got some secret deals going on behind Logan's back. <laughs> That was the dinner that stopped a merger. Right. What are these expenses? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are commenting. Uh, why wasn't I invited? Hmm. Uh, because we... For, we No, it's not interesting. Oh. Actually, it's gotten to the point where people just don't invite you anymore because you say no all the time. Yeah. You really just never... I say no to burgers at the Parker Meridian. I say no to another... Uh, it's chicken not, pot pie at the Brooklyn Diner. It's not burgers at the Meridian. It's burgers with our staff that works hard behind the scenes. I've taken these sons of bitches for burgers at the Parker Meridian. I understand they that. They don't want to, but to drive that you're taking in the sons of bitches for burgers. <laughs> what? <laughs> they want to. They, they would like to think you're you're thinking about that. I've taken them many places. I've you, taken them to Rue. But when you call them sons, sons of bitches, they, they <laughs> are sons of bitches. Yeah, it's just really, the price we have to pay. You do, yeah. you do, if you could teleport back to Long Island right after at 11 o'clock, you would. Mm-hmm. You're just gone. Why wouldn't I? You're just uh, gone. If that you was never, possible, what, why would, if I could teleport, why wouldn't I? You, but you never that was hang the dumbest out. thing you I've ever heard. You never hang out. You just leave. You just no, gone. I would hang out for as long as the commute would take me and then i teleport. Would save me all that time. My point is, you should hang out a little more. Have some breakfast one day. You don't hang. It's always about food with you. Oh, oh you're gonna have do breakfast. Ron and I were thinking, and you'll you... never fit in the teleport machine. You're fucking. That's the way you'll lose weight. Your love handles will drop to the floor <laughs> where you left, <laughs> and you'll be a cylinder-shaped corpse. Um, <laughs> and Ron and, I, transport Ron and I were thinking, could you imagine what kind of omelet this place would make? And I think that made Don's eyes roll too. But just imagine oh. what kind of omelet this guy would roll out for you. My God. Oh. Oh. Hey, hey, is the uncomfortability over? Is uh, we uh, finally back to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. This listening to you guys makes me feel like I need to call my parents. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, I'm sure Fezzi's at home crying right now. Oh, yeah, the oh, Fezzi yeah, angle. Uh, oh, fuck, Ron. You're... This guy is one of the funniest guys on the planet because <laughs> he was explaining why Fez... Uh, didn't make it, because I guess Fez did get the big invite. Oh, he Fez did? The, yeah, Fez got the invite, and he couldn't go because he has sundowner's disease. <laughs> <laughs> where he's afraid to be out after dark. I've heard about his sundowner's disease. <laughs> is when the, did this perk this up on him? truth, by the way. <laughs> so, like, I think this is what happened. He uh, lives his life like I am legend. Where <laughs> he thinks when the sun comes down, the zombies come out. Ah, <laughs> So, so, so Ronnie goes. So Ronnie goes. Well, Fez, just wear a miner's helmet. <laughs> a miner's helmet. Uh, it would brighten things up. What? 
just live in perfect safety with your fucking minor <laughs> helmet on. He goes, just walk around at night with a minor helmet on. <laughs> Sundowners. <laughs> oh, oh shit. the poor and then, guy. And then I'm like, Ron, I have to know, man. I just have to know. Uh, you've been to Fez's joint. Like, what does it look like? And what do you say? <laughs> I said it looks like a four-year-old with a credit card. But... <laughs> 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 oh, <laughs> shit. on the walls and shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, that's exactly what I pictured. So I'm sure Ronnie's going to have his own take uh, from noon to three today, obviously. But uh, we've we've been having fun with it today there, Ron. Well, it was, it was a great night. It was. It, the conversation was terrific. Uh, the ladies looked uh, wonderful. The food was amazing. And, uh, uh, could have been a little further away from the fire, that's all. <laughs> you know, really? It's almost perfect, Wiki. Too bad. And I admitted, <laughs> I admitted a lot of things to Ron last night. Ron uh, has a way of making you talk. I'm like, why am I telling him half very this shit? Open. This is not yep. smart. Uh, but uh, unmasked, unmasked healthy. It, uh, yeah, I think uh, you got me unmasked a little bit last night, and I, I basically admitted to everyone. Yeah, I know I'm an ass, but I'm working on it. My my chick has certainly made me a lot better. I got a ways yeah. to go, but uh, <laughs> I just remember something else. So we walk Everyone into nervously yeah. laughs in agreement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he he, Miles to go before you sleep, big man. Miles <laughs> he just left himself I, an out. I, yeah. No, I got one other uh, thing that I forgot. So I walk in, and Don has the excitement on his face that we all agreed to come together so he could really show us an amazing thing that we'll talk about this uh, to our grandkids someday that old that old gag right so i walk in and uh, don's like you want a drink you want a drink and i'm like yeah I'll, I, I, i'll enjoy it's a school night but i'll enjoy a nice glass of uh cabernet so 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 yeah so he he runs to the bar to get me a drink he wants me to feel comfortable right away he oh, wants boy. this night to be He's perfect love. so uh Ah, God, this makes me look like an idiot. Anyway, he gives me the glass of Cabernet, and I'm kind of a wine snob. Mm -hmm. So I I take a little sip of uh, the Cabernet, and without even like a hint of sarcasm or humor, I go, "Wow, did you just get me the house red?" <laughs> <laughs> what did he do? Too? Did his, his eyes open face up? Dropped. He was like, "Oh." He just he got all to, upset. Just, just wants want to, to please. Want to please Opie. So then I made him like buy like I think uh, a a pretty solid bottle when we finally sat down at the table, just so I could have one glass. And then I like kind of slid the uh, the glass he did give me at the bar kind of to the waiters. As, oh, so you absolutely meant it? Yeah, that's what I'm getting <laughs> okay. at. That's why it's really awful that I admit this stuff because it doesn't help the image. Ooh. Yeah, and and uh, and uh, yeah, Don was. Uh, he melted it like a he, candle, the poor thing. Yeah, he was just... Uh, it, it was like Frosty the Snowman. Everything yeah. just left him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, thanks to Don Wickland, thanks to Ronnie B and his lovely wife, and uh, and Don's lovely wife. We had a great time last night. Maybe Ann will come out sometime. I don't know. Maybe well, now this is going to cause a problem because Anthony didn't get the invite, but uh, I don't know. Uh, well, are you guys out uh, drinking <laughs> champagne, uh, champagne cocktails? I'm, uh, I'm home. <laughs> but be honest, you wouldn't have gone. Uh, I, m I might have. You wanted the invite. I understand that. Uh, it doesn't matter. What'd you do last night? I don't night? think you would have. knows. What'd you uh, do for Valentine's uh, Day? Valentine's Day, Call of Duty. <laughs> I spent it with uh, the gay uh, team. Yeah, <laughs> uh, playing with the gays, which is uh, Bobby's uh, clan on yeah. uh, Call of Duty. Gay, yeah, gay with a uh, uh, icy cold Guinness. Yeah, it was nice. And uh, well, Ron, <laughs> Ant's had a great show today because uh, he was fanboy all the way. We had Ben from Lost in today, well, and uh, you know Ben from Lost was in. Yeah. And that's huge. Did you just do a line, Ronnie? What? what <laughs> yeah, Ron. Just a quick one. <laughs> oh my God. Quick you know one. what? I, I call it a little morning cappuccino. <laughs> get out here. Let's get the day started. Uh, froth that shit up and yeah. put it on your uh, espresso. There you right, go. All right. So Ben from Lost was in, huh? Yeah. So uh, you know, I'm a, a huge fan of the show, and uh, I get a little. You know, I get a little excited when guests are in like that, and I like asking questions and uh, and talking to the uh, uh, gentleman. Yeah. And, and then they call it, it, me fanboy. It, it disappoints me. You had the opportunity to kill him, and you didn't do it. 
Same as Locke. You had the chance to kill him. Yeah, and they don't got the episodes written or, or produced wow. yet, so they would have had to kill him off if you actually killed him in real life. And Anthony. you know the press we would have gotten? Hell yeah. Oh, coach, you'd have been a god to those people. Wow. Yeah. They'd have, they'd have uh, put me on the website and tried to uh, enlarge pictures of my hat to see what's written on it. Mm. <laughs> Fucking geeks. The other thing, um, man, uh, we talked about Earl probably one out of the four hours. Oh. We had at least an hour of material on Earl at dinner last night. Well, Earl's dad was one of the bus boys. It was great to see him. On <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> Shine my shoes in between uh, horses. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> we... <laughs> We were playing uh, Top This uh, with Earl stories. Ronnie started, then I tried to top, and then he's oh, topping yeah. me, and then I'm trying to top. It was just endless. For years. Endless. You, you could go forever. We're going to have to have a Ron, uh, uh, a Ron. Uh, yeah, well, a Ron and Fez, Opie and Anthony, Top This Earl show. Yeah, I'd love to. Because yeah. I'm getting all the new yeah, Earl stories that are just amazing. Amazing. I, I listened on Worst of the other day, uh, maybe last week or so, and it was Earl's picture hanging episode yeah. where it took him uh, four, hours. four hours to hang six pictures. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I hung all six pictures in the time of a commercial break yeah. with time left over. Oh, that's how that ended? Yeah, and right. he couldn't fathom how that happened or why he had excuses. And then he just did what Earl always does, gets really mad and storms off and says, fuck you. And, wow. and takes went, a half a day. Takes a half yeah, a day. takes <laughs> a half a day. He just leaves at will. He, he learned a very valuable uh, radio lesson, though, because we've all done it. You know, the phones don't work. You know what? Until these phones are fixed, I'm not broadcasting anymore. <laughs> yeah. You did 15 minutes of radio. <laughs> you just figure out ways to take the day off. And, and no one's going to question you. Ron, you know, you got to at least give uh, uh, Earl credit for figuring out that. I'll, I'll tell you the truth about Earl. He's going to bury us all like he did Muni. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember uh, with Ken Stevens. We were we were having our problems with Howard back in the day, right? And um, oh. and uh, word came down that, uh, you know, they didn't want us talking about Howard or something like that. And Ken has given us this big news in, uh, in his office, right? And all of a sudden, I... I, I Dead seriously, I I just didn't want to work that day. I just didn't feel like doing radio, so I go to. Ken. I remember this one. Yeah, you remember this, right? Yep. I go, Ken. You know what? I hear what you're saying with the Howard stuff, and we're on the same team. I got to be honest with you, man. I'm having a tough time with this. And, I don't uh, think we can l leave it alone. I, I go. <laughs> I really don't think we'll be able to leave this alone. And you know what? Let's 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 uh, let's be responsible for once. I tr I really think we should take the day off and let this just kind of settle in, and we'll start over tomorrow. And Kenny's uh, Ken is like, oh, this is a great idea. Great, yeah, I like this. I like this. All right, uh, uh, you guys yeah, okay? take the day off. He's like, you're okay with taking a day off? You got worse stuff and stuff. I'm like, I see yeah. two weeks as being a little <laughs> <Right>. hard. <laughs> Uh, and I really need to unwind down in Atlantis. And we walk out of Ken's office, and Aunt looks at me basically and goes, "That was smooth, man." I'm like, oh, and "We're I'm like, out. Let's enjoy our day off, man." <laughs> <laughs> that was the only reason we were just fishing for a fucking day off. And he and he bought it hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, you can do that in this business for some reason. Sure, mm. Mr. Bennington. All right, boys. Noon to three. Yes, the Ron and Fez three. show. Yep. Tune in. Yeah. Everyone yeah, does. So Everyone hey. does. Hey, uh, I, I was telling the guys, by the way, I'm just about ready to shit the first five courses out. Oh, my Great. stomach Time, yeah. my stomach is a-bubbling. Yeah. It percolating? I'm going to take care of the first five, and hopefully after the show, the second five. It's going to look like an Indian lemon. Dude, the cholesterol. Holy shit. Was I good? saw Wiki go up and throw up like a bulimic as soon as we left the place. So. <laughs> <laughs> He's way out in front of us all. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> All right, everyone's, later, boys. everyone's getting nervous. Uh, we got Michael Madsen. He's been st uh, standing by for like 15 minutes. Ron, thank you so much. All right, take care. Uh, obviously, Ron from Ron and Fez, noon to three, like Ann said here yes. on 202. Uh, let's do a very quick break. Very quick break. Regroup, and we'll get uh, Michael Madsen in here. Who's, who was early? I, I apologize to Michael in advance, but we'll get we'll get to him in a second here. Oh, oh. oh. oh hey. Oh, fuck. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey. Oh. Hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. What the hell's going on here? The OB and Anthony Show. Awful. Awful. Yeah. awful. They're, just, they're just awful. Awful people. Holy 
Holy shit, we're going to get along with Michael Madsen. I'll tell you right now, man. Uh, we're back with the Opie and Anthony Show. Bob uh, Kelly in studio. And the great Michael Madsen. Yeah. Who just yeah. told us that he hasn't been in New York in five years. And he, he, he's thanking us right off the bat because he got a free trip to New York because of uh, our radio show. Yeah, That's a course. pretty good deal as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of cold outside, but, you know, it beats the hell out of L.A. Yeah. You, you've been in L.A. for how long? Um, when I have to be there uh, back yeah. and forth for about 14, 15 years now. Yeah. Oh, shit. But you've been traveling, you were saying. Uh... I've been all over the world. I've been uh, Ireland and uh, Bulgaria, Moscow. What the hell is it to do in Bulgaria? <laughs> I don't know where Bulgaria It's called is. employment, son. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I have to go where I need to go. I'm more popular in foreign countries than I am in my own, so... He's, is that the truth? Come on. Yeah, it seems that way. It's a little rough getting work nowadays. Um, Why the fuck is that? A lot of competition in Hollywood, you know. Michael Madsen, for fuck's sake. You know, the guy with the towel and always the, does a scene with a towel on. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm up against him, you know, and the, and the other one, the Scientologist, and, uh, <laughs> and um, you know, the rest of them. Uh, I mean, good Lord, you know, make some room for Daddy, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, they're not very gracious about that. Believe me. No. no. I mean, you, you know, they drive past me in the street with my legs amputated to get to a meeting with Bruce Willis. <laughs> 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 you know. Oh, oh, get it all out, Michael. Know? Come on, let's get it out. Then, 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 let's then, get it out. Then I meet Bruce on Sin City, <laughs> and he starts telling me about all these projects we're going to do together. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that sounds pretty good, Bruce. Yeah, thanks for looking after me. Meanwhile, you know, a couple years later, <laughs> you're, you're going to Bulgaria. <laughs> I see him at Astronaut Farmer premiere. I'm like, hey, man, uh, remember all those projects you told me about? He's like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what projects? Yeah, you know. What about the last Die Hard? You could have mm, been yeah. in that one. Oh, wouldn't that have been wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> that would have really given my career a boost. <laughs> I would have been the guy that he threw out the window or something. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus All right, Christ. in this scene, you light a cigarette, you fire a gun, then Bruce kicks you down a flight of stairs. <laughs> uh, no thanks, fellas. I, uh, I'd I rather pump gas. By the way, uh, I, we're all huge fans of what oh, you have done. Hell yeah. And I just didn't expect this angle, and I'm loving it. Huh? Fucking no, it's not an angle. It's not an angle. I understand. It's fuck. It's the are, bi are the business end. The business end of the business no blows. Matter, it just blows. It so blows. People really knew what goes on behind the oh, dude, uh, closed doors. Not to try to relate to a, a, a great actor like me. yourself, but I mean, just doing radio, the bullshit we have to deal with. You're like, yeah, fuck you. You think it's all fun and games, and then right. behind the scenes, everything sucks. And management, they're assholes and everything. And and it's it's, it's got to like, be the same way they, in movies. They ruin it as far as where we sit. The greatest job you could have. It's Which like, how do you ruin the goof, greatest job you could have? Goofing on shit. I right. was listening to you guys in the other room, and I went, well, "Which one of you got?" Take a shit. I do. <laughs> yeah. I just thought that was amazing. I never, never heard of a radio show like that. What <laughs> the other you word should... is fuck this and fuck that. <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> I gotta take a shit. <laughs> Holy shit. And you're sitting there like, fuck. And this is why I, I'm sitting on these bleachers waiting to get in there so they can talk yeah, about yeah, a right? shit they have to yeah, take. Yeah, Great. Take shit. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's, uh, way. We like to call it an open and honest show. Yeah. Uh, I took a good shit before I left the hotel. <laughs> did you? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> it, it does make you feel good. <laughs> it did. It's like the great way to wake up in the morning. So, <laughs> oh, God, yeah. So I think I'm reading you. I th I'm uh, ready for the uh, day. I'm hearing. I'm ready to load up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the feeling oh, that you. Uh, this is so not what I expected. <laughs> no shit, man. Uh, we just got, we just got done with Ben from Lost. Very actory, very formal. Yeah, yeah, yeah this sure, is yeah. Great. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. Another exciting show. <laughs> <laughs> what will happen next? <laughs> Someone will get lost. <laughs> oh God in heaven! I'm gonna bring a camera crew over to my fucking house. <laughs> They want to make a reality show, I can tell you. Oh, no more shit. Than that I, shit. <laughs> oh, Michael's dude. been, I could, I could uh, kind of sense. Don't even Michael's ask him. Michael's been through the mill <laughs> yeah. uh, as far as Hollywood goes. And, and a lot of people hide this stuff, but 
They're a bunch of assholes over there. I mean, it's just the, the way it is. Oh, there's a lot of them that are nice, and I've had some great times. I've made some good pictures. I've been very lucky. Oh, hell but, yeah. But, but, you know, 85% of it is horse shit. Yeah. Yeah, there's... Uh, it's too hard to... It's... Uh, I get more I get more work on my own than I do by uh, you know playing the normal game of getting work. Really, I, I run into people at a at a party somewhere and get a script or meet somebody that wants to do something and you just scare the shit out of them. They're like, all right, I'll put you in a movie. <laughs> Jesus. Well, they have to stay together. Don't stare at me like you do with me, but <laughs> 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 it, it, does it amaze you sometimes when you look at the top grossing movie of the week and go like, what? What the fuck is this country thinking? Yeah, I kind of get that feeling, uh, especially with uh, some of the pictures that are nominated right now. It's uh, yeah, very bewildering to me. Like what? Which one? In, uh, Oh, well, you see, the thing is, is if I start naming certain <laughs> titles, those people will never hire me again. Not that they would anyway, but uh, I, 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 I am a bit mystified by some of the things that seem to be, um, that get uh, an enormous amount of attention in box office. It's amazing to me. Yeah, I don't know where, because I'll look, I'll look at a trailer on TV or, or in the movie theater and, and say, there is no way I'll ever see this movie. I have no interest in seeing it. And then it's, you know, number one, number two. And you go, well, who the fuck well, who, you didn't who like, saw this? You don't like Fool's Gold? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Is that a movie? <laughs> We're just I, a bunch I, I, of I, lemmings out there because Fool's Gold is getting the worst ratings, like, as, you know, reviews, whatever. <laughs> And it was number one at the box office. I'm does like, does, does, does anyone read? No. Is there a scene in there where he wears a towel? <laughs> <laughs> a towel. There's got to be one, right, with the big <laughs> knot in the front, <laughs> and his yeah. hair's wet. Oh yeah, oh, exactly. Course. I mean, I, my I, I did a picture in Ireland. I played a Irish American prize fighter in a picture called Strength and Honor. And it's the first time I uh, produced a picture, and I tried to get involved in the distribution and all that. And uh, I learned a lot of lessons about the way that that stuff goes. And believe me, there's a lot of big money changing hands yeah. for promotional campaigns and mm -hmm. this kind of thing. And, you know, the picture really got overlooked. And uh, I'm trying to get some guys to re-release it. But I I think I'm up against a stacked deck. I mean, it's really hard to uh, it's hard to make room. They don't make room for, for anybody, you know. It's a, it's a very doggy dog uh, thing. Yeah, they got the thing figured out the way they want it to make the most, and they don't want anybody changing the rules on them. Well, as soon as I get in there, I'll be, I'll, you know, be saying, telling them that they're all the greatest guys in the world. You know, <laughs> I was wrong. You know, no, fuck. no, I was just kidding when I was on the radio. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> I'm, I'm You're living our, oh living our life. I know. Oh, Jesus, get me a towel. Get me a towel. I'll do a with a towel. I'm scared, I'm scared to ask him questions about movies he's uh, been in now. I, I'm very lucky, and I've been very fortunate. Actually, some of you have I'm, been I'm, in I'm great in a great movies. industry. I really yeah. am. I'm some, just kidding around with you Someone guys. threw you in uh, IMDb, and they're saying, unfucking believable You made 18 movies in for 2008 alone. Well, I got six boys to take care of, and, you know, I need to keep a lot of groceries in the fridge. <laughs> you have six kids? Yeah. Yeah, boys. Wow. My house is like Lord of the Flies. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I actually saw it. like theme days. Like one day they'll all dress up as cowboys and Indians. They're running through the house, spearing each other and shooting arrows at me. And, you know, it's amazing. I got a striped shirt with a whistle. That's basically my wardrobe when I'm at home. You know. Yeah, no, it's just uh, you know, the army day. The whole camouflage are in camis. They're out in the bushes, you know, shooting paintballs at each other. <laughs> It's insane. I mean, I don't know how my wife, she's amazing. She deals with it. They tied her up one time. <laughs> <laughs> tied, her to a, tied her to a tree outside. You know, she was like, my God, God, my God, help me. I couldn't believe it. I, mean, I always wish I had brothers growing up, and now I got all these sons, and it's just like amazing the way they are with each other. Really, yeah. I didn't miss fuck all, you know. <laughs> Can I, I got to ask the obvious. Have you ever oh, done stand-up, Michael? Huh? Have you ever done stand-up? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> nobody ever asked me that. Yeah, he, 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 I mean, he, he's if, got, if like, he did stand-up, though, and some, if, he, if a heckler ever messed with him, oh, that'd be if, if, if I did stand-up, I always thought that I would want to do this thing where one time I was in my trailer and I was making a movie. I was in, I was in Poland, and I was so fucking bored. I was going out of my mind, right? I had a shit in a bucket. <laughs> All right, that's how that's how low budget it was, and and I was just sitting there thinking, my God, is this what it is? I was being eaten alive by all these Polish insects, and 
<laughs> you know, it was oh like four God. o'clock in the morning, and I was like, oh my God, you know, I wish I was a lumberjack. This is so <laughs> fucked up, you know. I just don't want to be in this business. Why yeah. am I here? And I started thinking for some strange reason about a hotel that could open up and they could call themselves the Kevorkian, <laughs> the Kevorkian Suites. <laughs> and so you would check in and they would have all these different themes in different rooms where you could go to kill yourself. <laughs> to die. <laughs> yeah. To kill yeah. Yeah. And so I was thinking, oh man, I'm really onto something here. <laughs> so, so I started writing it down and I started thinking, Okay, all right. In one suite, they call it the Robin Given Suite. And when you go in, there's like a piece of glass. And on the counter in front of you is a gun. And she's behind the glass, and she's going on and on about her relationship with Mike Tyson. And she just keeps going on and on and on and on about it. And she won't stop, and you can't leave the room until finally, you know, you either shoot yourself in the head <laughs> or keep on listening to her. <laughs> and... And I, I thought of another one would be like, you, you, you go in, and when you go in, they inject you and put you to sleep. And then there's a big metal sliding door on the other side of the room. And when you wake up, the door comes open, and there's a big gorilla standing there. And then you suddenly realize you have bananas around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> on, a, on a chain, right? And you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, oh, my God, fucking hell. And you grab hold of them because you want to give them to the ape, but you realize they're made out of plastic. <laughs> And he's just coming at you, you know? <laughs> and he's going to rip you apart. <laughs> Do you smoke a lot of weed? That's hysterical. No, you just got to get... You no. think about certain yeah. things like that. Why yeah, that's not? That's you I think mean, about in Poland when you have to shit in a bucket. Shit in a bucket and <laughs> Polish bugs are eating you. And you're waiting to go on the set to play some bananas. Uh, it's just... <laughs> Well, and you said uh, shit in a spackle uh, bucket. Well, well, I, was in con- I was in construction. Yeah, uh, got a little you something have to in do, there, yeah, right? Have to do that. <laughs> anyway, yeah. that's it for my stand-up career. Damn. Well, <laughs> well I, I, I just that did would it. go yeah. over. I'm, that's it. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you about the greatest scene in Reservoir Dogs now. <laughs> I don't want to know the sarcastic answer to that. Oh, actually, uh, <laughs> that's probably what you're asked the most anyway, right? You're probably sick of talking about that scene. No, not really. I mean, I'm lucky to have anything that anybody wants to talk to me about. Uh, <laughs> I could be, uh, you know. Digging ditches somewhere, but I, <laughs> how was it uh, working with Quentin? We uh, had him on the show, and we were just amazed by the guy. He's a nut. If if I cured cancer, and I was at a news conference, and they were asking me about my findings, most likely someone would stand up and say, "That, that that's that, that's great about the cancer thing, Michael, but what's it like working with Quentin?" <laughs> <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just let him. T- just let him talk. Guys. He's a great guy. He's a genius, and they, oh, wow, he uh, can talk though, huh? Yeah, yeah, he can go on, but it, but uh, at least it's interesting. Yeah, and he's a. Uh, He's kind of a film historian, the guy. I mean, he's got about 335 millimeter prints of movies in his mm-hmm. garage. And, it does and those the, film nights, those themed uh, yeah, film nights a, and stuff. Yeah, regular theater in his house yeah. with the curtains and a popcorn machine and the whole fucking thing. You know, after our interview with him, we felt like we were going to be invited over to movie night. <laughs> oh, did you? <laughs> well, you, you know how you told that you, story about Bruce? And, and he's like, yeah, next time you're in LA, give us, you know, give me a call. But the problem was he never really no, never gave wanted us a contact exchange number. numbers or anything. You know? well, he's, he's hard to nail down. I mean, <laughs> when, I, when I did kill Bill, it was only because I drove up to his house and I knew the gate code. <laughs> 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 and I just went and I sat by the pool and I waited for him to get home. <laughs> you know, I sat there for like two hours and finally he showed up. And I'm like, Quentin, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> did I need a job, man? You know, what are you doing? And then he whipped out the Kill Bill script, and uh, <laughs> fuck, this is, you know, I was playing just blood, gets, but Jesus, if I had to wait for him to call me, I mean, it never would have happened. It never would have worked. Kill Bill no, gets just man. better and better the more you watch it, too. It's just one of those movies you never get sick of. Yeah, totally I think great. a lot of... Oh, my God. Great time, man. It was a wonderful experience. It was uh, really one of those pictures that stands out in your mind, you know. Mm-hmm. Quentin's got a good way of uh, pulling people out of relative obscurity. Like, then came Bronson. You yeah. know, Michael just, Parks, yeah. Michael Parks is hysterical. Hey, he wonderful. What he the hell great. new? <laughs> now, it's obvious to ask uh, Michael about some of the great roles he's been in. What was the what was the biggest piece of shit you were involved with? <laughs> I think this um, is the way to go with this interview, I'm thinking. This show. 
Oh, damn. Oh. Holy shit, we got a new promo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, put, that in the, put that in the fucking intro to the radio show. Oh, uh, shit. Uh. <laughs> All right, now that I'm completely uncomfortable. That's great. Oh, fuck that. That's fantastic. And I also took notice that, uh, you know, fuck it, we're letting it all out. Yeah. He comes in, and I go, hi, I'm Opie, and he gave me a look like... <laughs> what, a, what a stupid name! Yeah, I was just I, trying to figure out if you were the one that had to take a shit. Yeah. <laughs> I saw it in his eyes. I'm like, I know. I've been stuck with this dumb name since I was 12. Will you give me a break? Uh, uh, shit. Change it, man. All in his eyes. <laughs> he didn't even have to say anything. I just saw it in his eyes. It, like, uh, change the uh, name, man. <laughs> I would love to. We're just known for. Oh, how many ridiculous fucking radio shows do you have to do? Oh, fuck you know, I met Ron Howard once, and I called him. Being wappy. And he never hired me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was I thought it was gonna be funny, you know, and I was like, hey Opie. I thought, you know, I thought he would take it in the right way, but he, yeah, yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't really know how to, he doesn't know how to take a joke. No, he he probably says it. something like, If I cured cancer, mm -hmm. people would <laughs> You won't see me in any Ron Howard films, put it that way. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's how quick it can end for you. Hey, what about this movie? Uh, do you want to talk about the new movie? I don't even know. Uh Boarding Gate? Uh listen, I shot that picture in Paris. I played a stockbroker with a girlfriend who's a dominatrix. Mm. Um, <laughs> I, I, I saw moans and groans. I saw half of it. How Rowan you... gave me the movie, and I watched it last night. But halfway through, the the fucking DVD gave me was bro had a scratch. What? But it was right. The movie. It, it, Where did the, it end? In the scratch. Right when you were about to get. Right before she pulled the gun out, you were about to get killed. Oh, oh, good. So, oh so he gets killed. Dude, in the but Thanks, it was Bob. this. this Thanks for giving no, that away. Yeah, no, no, no. Good, good one, Bobby. Good one, but I don't know. I don't know if he got killed. Oh, That's what okay. I'm saying. I didn't see it. She pulled the gun out. <laughs> Honestly, God, it pulled the gun out. And they would, but the sex before that, it was this big lead up. So I, they were doing all this kinky shit, dude. I don't know. Oh, she yeah? pulled the gun out. There was handcuffs. He had a belt around his neck. It was oh, one. Little. And I was watching it with my wife. And it's it's so <laughs> sexy. Valentine's Day movie. <laughs> yeah. Dude, but I didn't know. It's so the sex in this is so Good. dirty and oh, sexy. Yeah? But it's that it's 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 beyond what sexy in a movie is. It's one point where he actually she's got a belt. Oh, this girl's hot too. She's dirty hot. And yeah. uh, she's got tattoos everywhere. She's really sexy. That I don't know. She German or something. I don't know. She's, she's Italian. Is she Italian? Oh, yeah. I think she got that accent. The blah, 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 blah. <laughs> the blah, blah, blah. Oh, I don't know. But he dummy. grabs her and he's he's done. his rage. Can I just say something about your rage, dude? He, the way he is right now with that voice, he's very quiet. He's very cool. And then all of a sudden, hey, just jumps, dude. <laughs> hey, just jumps, blah, blah, blah. And then he goes right back to wow. Well, sometimes. <laughs> You want a beer? <laughs> Honest it's to God, uh, dude, his rage is like that real <laughs> fucking holy shit rage. Yeah. It's been, you see it in this movie. He's just talking to her, and then she says something, and he goes, I did it, but, and it just snaps. And then all of a sudden, they're outside. He, he It's the scene. He she gets in her, he rips her clothes off, and nice. she rips a belt off, and it he goes down in front of her. Oh, I don't know how you. She's reaching around and grab, <laughs> and her hands is. There's no faking this. Dude, it's her hand was satellite. It's what satellite. What did he? Where did he put his dick? His hand. <laughs> what are you fucking hey, beating she around just, the bush? She just. I'm sorry. I'm getting nervous. <laughs> he grabbed. She just reached in, unzipped his fly. It was open, and she's just stroking his mule. <laughs> and he's in front of her, and just smelling her fucking pussy. <laughs> but no, but through the underwear, which is even sexier. He didn't even just rip them down. He's just holy shit. And and you're looking to see if he starts kissing her thigh, but then he just says, "Fuck it." <laughs> and I'm watching it with my wife, and I, in my head, I'm going, "Now nah, I'm gonna have to fuck her." <laughs> now I'm gonna have to fuck my wife. Probably is a good Valentine's Day movie. This fucking movie, yeah, I'm gonna have to Valentine's fuck her tonight. Movie, it's a man. Disney movie in Bulgaria, by the way. It this, been uh, released on Valentine's yeah. Day. Uh, <laughs> what wow, a fucking. And it, but it's this is the one that it fucks with you because all of a sudden they'll just stop. 
And she'll go, I don't love you anymore. And he's like, but he's, he's like, wow, what are you going to do? <laughs> and they'll go in a room, and then we'll go back into dialogue, a lot of really good dialogue. Yeah. And then they just start fucking, like, <laughs> just <laughs> fucking smashing each other over the face. And Bobby has given this movie a, a better plug than anyone else I know, could. I don't even have to be here. No, yeah. now I want to fucking. Yeah, who doesn't want to? You should go to work for Roll, the where's my copy? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the scene in the front when you and your office is so fucking, it's so back and forth. I never get to do a picture with a girl. I'm always beating somebody up or smoking yep. a cigarette or <laughs> shooting a gun. And I never get to do any love scenes, you know. Love. I never get the girl. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it's, I don't know. I'm gonna ride off into the sunset with the girl, you know. All of his life. Well, you did that. Happy when they gave me the part. It was my chance to uh, break it, break my my stereotype, you know. Yeah. Break my, uh, you had a you had a great love scene. Ruined my reputation. <laughs> <laughs> what was the he love scene? Girl, he fucked her. Oh my god. <laughs> god he, he had a belt around anybody. your neck. He didn't <laughs> shoot anybody. What's There's going anything. on? What was the love scene he had where he's fucking the, the dude's wife as? He's in the in the. Oh, is that oh, fucking um, hysterical? Good love scenes. The getaway. Yeah. Getaway. Loved the getaway. getaway. Just shuts the door in that his face. <laughs> what are you looking at? You. That was one of the most despicable scenes. What, what are you looking at? You fucking. Yeah, he's, he's basically, basically. And she's all into it. He's just fucked. He's a nerdy dude tied up in the bathroom oh, as, as Michael's banging his wife. <laughs> I love that scene, by the way. But in his yeah, business. So and it was, it, was such, it, was, it was such a good fuck that the guy he, he, he killed himself right he hung himself yeah he, hung, yeah. yeah he hanged himself in the bathroom that was one of those really hot but disturbing <laughs> scenes because what you, a way to go you're thinking of it but then mm. you're like jesus christ if what if you're in that situation uh, and you're not the fucking guy fucking the broad you're the one chained to the toilet yeah. or whatever you and your old lady come in the next room you know, yeah oh, and she's it's enjoying it oh, oh. you, know, you, you haven't seen it. that scene bobby a, i've seen it but that's it just great. that's one of those things where you the <laughs> verbal uh, uh saying that out loud makes you go ah yeah, it's, yeah. And he's just the way he just said it Awful. and she's coming yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's a remake it's a remake of a sam peckinpah picture yeah the getaway right but you know what he yeah. has in this movie too which in a lot of movies uh, we're does. back to boarding gate the new movie that comes out march 21st limited release it, it, certain actors like robert duvall does it and the certain actors that do this business like stuff that's not in the you know it's in the script and it's just him doing it there's one part he ate he was eating this food and he makes the fucking, f just him eating it, he's just so interesting. And then he just, he has like an olive pit in his mouth, and he's delivering his line, he just goes, and spits it into the sink. It's like, you know, you're just like, holy shit! Because you get, when you're an actor, you get a script, you just read the lines, you do the things, you, you know, he just went, oh, yeah. sure, look, that's the fun of it, you know? I think uh, I try to get away with things like that as much as I possibly can. I mean, that's why... You know, a guy like Quentin, even a guy like Olivia from Boarding Gate. I mean, they both gave me that gift of being able to be on the spot and in the moment and let something happen just because it happened, not because it's on the page. That's a lot better for me. It's a lot easier for me. It's a lot freer way to work. When I cut that ear off, mm -hmm. you know, I walked over to the side of the room and I was holding I was looking at it. <laughs> and I was thinking in my head, what am I going to do with this fucking thing, right? <laughs> I got this fucking hand right here. What am I going to do? You know, and they're rolling, right? So I'm just holding them. I'm thinking, okay, what am I going to do? And Quentin's over on the side, and he's going, toss it. Throw the ear, Michael. Throw it away, Michael. Throw it, throw it. And I'm thinking to myself, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to throw, throw it yet, you know? And so I spoke into it. I said, hey, can you hear me? You know? <laughs> you know, and then I threw it. Fucking you know? twisted. And so Quentin's like, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> and I go, well, what do you mean? He goes, no, no, no. What are you, what are you doing? You're talking in the air? And then the, the next day, he goes, Michael, listen, we went to saw the dailies, you know, and we're, it, you know, when you're talking in the air, it's staying in the movie. It, it's and such said, oh, a, yeah, that's right. awesome. it's <laughs> such a, because no, only, around, only you know, a really... fucking lunatic <laughs> would do something like that. And the character's obviously out of his mind. <laughs> yeah. Hey, can you hear I me? I figured, yeah. you know, it was the thing to do. I mean, if you're going to have it, it uh, just made sense to me at the most. Point. I, uh, yeah. I, I, we, we were talking I can't to Quentin. Dance, so I had to come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking to uh, Quentin about that movie and that scene in uh, Reservoir Dogs. And uh, one, of the, one of the most, I don't know, the one with the most impact to me is when you walk outside of that funeral parlor and... It, you hear the birds chirping, kids it's playing. sunny, kids are playing, yeah. and it's such a stark yeah. difference from the horror that is going on behind those doors. Like, for a moment, you're out of it. 
And you're just yeah. outside. It's a beautiful <laughs> day. Going to get the gas. Yeah, yeah going yeah. to get the gas yeah. to burn him with. But uh, and that, was, then, that was my car, that yellow Cadillac. It's on eBay. That really right your now. car? I put it on eBay. It's up for sale right now. Get the fuck out of here, really? That was my car. I drove it to the set that day, and that's where I parked it. And when, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm, I swear to God, when we were going to shoot the scene, uh, they were going to go to budget and rent a car for Mr. Blonde for the the thing where the cops in the truck. And I said, why? Why don't we just use my car? It's right there. And Quinn says, oh, that's a good idea. Let's just use your car. So when I walk out there and the caddy's there, I mean, that's because that's where I parked when I came to work that day. <laughs> <laughs> damn, that's on movie. eBay, huh? What I've you, had the damn thing for want? about 15 years. And How I much you want for it? What do you want for the instant? I don't know. <laughs> I think John Schneider got four million bucks for the Dukes of Hazard Charger. So. <laughs> You're looking for four million? I don't million. know. Anything's possible, right? You never know. I mean, you know, I won't have to go back to Bulgaria to go to work. <laughs> 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 Fucking Bulgaria. <laughs> what is going on? Why is Michael mm. Madsen in Bulgaria doing a movie? Well, you know, I, I, Paramount hasn't called lately. Well, you're going to be in Sin City, too, right? Well, if they ever get around to making it, uh, I'm supposedly going to be in it. Uh, Robert Rodriguez told me if I did the first one and it did well, that he'd bring me back for the second one. So, you know, with those guys, you just kind of have to wait until they're ready. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, there's no use calling him. If, uh, if he wants you, he's going to ring you up, so... I hope I do. It was a, it was a great yeah. picture. I mean, it was a lot of fun doing that thing. And the one uh, one thing talking about just reading lines off a page and and then doing the things that uh, make a great actor different from someone just reading lines. The the facial expressions you can make. You don't have to say words, and that's a talent in itself. Like you can make a look and just go, "Oh my God, this person is so fucked." This person is so <laughs> fucked just from a It look. comes from a nefarious childhood. Is that you it? Know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes it's just out of boredom. Yeah, you didn't have any uh, professional or training or, or anything? Take, man, you got to come up with something. Yeah, Nothing was, like that? Just kind of... I, I tried to. Uh, early on, I, I went to Steppenwolf Theater in Chicago. I tried to take a uh, <clears throat> scene study classes there for a bit, and um, I just kind of fell out of it. I... I I'm a very impatient young man, and I just wanted to get on with it. And I figured if this is what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it. I don't want to be a career student. And, you know, God bless anybody who's studying. I'm not trying to take anything away from them. It works for them. That's fine. But for me, I just didn't understand all the sense memory business, you know, <laughs> pretending that this fucking thing is boiling hot or, you know, <laughs> pretending that I'm blowing in the wind or something. It was really kind of, <laughs> I, just, I didn't really need that whole thing. And I, I didn't figure I was going to end up playing Hamlet anyway, so... <laughs> you know, um, you want to you want to fan of the Meisner technique. I just wanted to get on with it, so I really kind of sidestepped all that. And and um, how'd you natural, break you know? in? What was like your first? Uh, what was the first role you did where you went? Wow, I think I think I'm doing this for a living now. I went to uh, well, first I came to New York. I met Sergio Leone when I was here, oh, wow. and he told me I should pursue an acting career. And he had a film he wanted me to do, but then unfortunately he died. So I went to L.A. and I um. At 400 bucks, I got a job pumping gas at the Union 76 station in Beverly Hills. And, uh, you know, my first customer was Fred Astaire. I swear to God, it was on Christmas Eve, and Fred Astaire fucking pulls in with a flat tire on his car. And I'm like this kid from Chicago, and I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, my, you know, God, my God, fucking right. God in heaven, it's him. You know, it's, <laughs> it's him. You know, he gets out of the car, and he says, hey, and he, you know, pops me off a $100 bill. And I says, look, it's twelve fifty for the flat, you know? <laughs> and he just walks off, and I'm like, holy Christ, you know? And my uh, my boss comes over to me, and I says, Jesus Christ, is that him? And he goes, oh, yeah, get used to it, kid. They all go, oh, those guys come in here all the time. And they sure did, boy. I mean, I've seen everybody. I didn't realize I was right in the middle of Beverly Hills, and mm -hmm. so... Over the next nine or ten months that I worked there, I seen everybody come in there for gas at one time or another, and it was pretty amazing. And I, I finally met a girl, and she knew a guy, and so and so and so and so, and they knew an agent, and this and that, and this and that. And that's how it works. And I went and I read for an episodic television show called Saint Elsewhere, and um, I, when I went to the thing. I had to go to work, and I was figuring I was going to be late. So when I went to read for the port, I had my Union Seventy Six <laughs> outfit out, out on because I was going to work, right? And uh, so I went in and I read. It was the, the bad brother. I was like the the bully brother of a family of bigots. And, you know, it was a, 
I was the hood, the hoodlum brother. And uh, by the time I got to, to work, there was a message for me to call this agent, and I called him up, and I said, what's up? And he said, you got the job. And I said, wow. I was, you know, I couldn't believe it. I was pretty stunned. And, and uh, they said, yeah, you know, the casting director said how brilliant it was that you came in dressed as a working class person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I said, what do you think? I went to Western Costume and fucking bought that. And I was going to work, for God's sake. You're on the phone. They're hearing the ding, ding of the cars driving over yeah, the fucking was, uh, hose. It, it, it worked, though, I guess. And that was the first thing I ever did. It was Denzel Washington was in it, and, and David Morris, it was a, a TV series about a hospital thing. And I don't know. The first Those are good. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> I had a cool jacket. I remember that. They gave me this brown leather jacket. It was kind of cool. But then you never looked back. I just let the jacket oh, act for yeah. me. You know? Yeah, let the jacket oh, yeah. do the work. Yeah, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I got this bitching jacket. I said, don't fuck with me. Like, hey, look at my jacket. Yeah. That's great, though, when you kind of, you know, you so vividly remember when you got out of your shit fucking real job. <laughs> I know, listen, I, I started getting... A couple of things after that, I got like uh, Miami Vice and Tour of Duty and a couple of other uh, little uh, Jake and the Fat Man. A couple <laughs> of things. Remember, I went to the, um, the to Ray who was running the place, and I said, "Look, Ray, I, you know, I'm not going to be here tomorrow because I come." And he goes, "I suppose you're going to go do another one of those television shows." <laughs> and I go, uh, "Well, yeah. As a matter of fact, I am." And he goes, "Listen, kid." You better make up your mind what you're going to do. <laughs> he goes, when you signed up here, you didn't tell anybody you were an actor. And I said, well, I, I didn't really consider myself one I, at that time. And he goes, oh, get an intellectual on me now. And I said, no. <laughs> and I said, no, man, I just really, I got to go do this thing. And he goes, listen, we need you around here, okay? So you better make up your fucking mind, kid. I'm like, oh, well, <laughs> should I make $2.50 an hour and having you yelling at my face, you know, and, and having people honking at me, you know, and asking, having Warren Beatty ask me if I should check his oil, you know, or, 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 or should I go and, you know, and try uh, to be Warren Beatty, try, try to, yeah, you know, I said, yeah. well, geez, that's going to be a hard decision, Ray, I said, I, you know. Let me think about it. I need to think about this, yeah. I'll let you know on Monday. I'll give you a call. You know. <laughs> Man, that's something, said yeah. That to me, you, know? you better make up your mind. All right, when, a, you, when you really an ultimatum. Stay here, Ray. Michael, <laughs> I need to help these people. Fuck Hollywood. Fuck, yes. Fuck the movies, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. Jack Lemon needs me. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a valve job, god damn it. <laughs> Uh, when, when you finally made it, did you ever go back to Ray's place oh. to kind of maybe go, hey, Ray, pulling for some gas? Right. You're pulling yeah. for some gas, see who the new kid is. With a fake flat tire. <laughs> I've, I've rolled in there a couple of times, and it's a kind of a funny feeling. Right on. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's like a whole nother life uh, yeah, a thousand years ago. I think I backed into one of the pumps one night in a limo. <laughs> yeah, knocked the damn thing off the... <laughs> Sorry, fun. Ray, and just Sorry, pull Ray. away. Yeah. There goes that son of a bitch. <laughs> I, get back I remember it. him. <laughs> Stupid kid. <laughs> uh, we needed him. You, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, motherfucker. <laughs> you always have the uh, the intimidating guy roles or anything. <laughs> Growing up, were you, were you like that? Were you kind of a troublemaker? Were you kind of just a... Nice guy with a low, intimidating voice. <laughs> no, no, no. My, 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 my parents divorced when I was young, and, and uh, we moved around an awful lot. My father was a Chicago firefighter, and uh, we just were constantly on the move, so I was always like the new kid, you know? Yeah. Whenever you're the new guy, you, you tend to, uh, you know, hook up with the wrong crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of my pals were, were kind of dangerous, and I, you know, I learned my lesson early on about those kinds of things. Yeah. Did you, you, I, you must have taken something away from them and uh, brought it into your, uh, <laughs> your acting. Know, I don't know how I made it, because most of them are dead. So, really? Yeah. Yeah, I got a, I got a couple of those. I, I was, you know, parents divorced and then moving around a lot, and the same thing. You fall in with uh, some real fun people when you're always looking new. for new recruits. They're looking for new recruits, so yeah. you get in. Yeah, yeah you're the new really, get in easy. They were exciting. It was the only thing going on, you know. Yeah. I was like, sure, let's go rip off a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> Fuck it. You know. Breaking into houses and stealing horrible <laughs> yeah. turntables. Sure. Oh, God, I stole, a, I stole a turntable of a church one time. <laughs> 
Jesus. I did. I swear to God, my I, I went to this youth group. You know, they had a youth lounge. You know, and they had really bitching stereo in there. And so, you know, like a couple nights later, I <laughs> went over there and I took the damn thing and I put it outside in the bushes underneath the. Yeah, front you had to stash it first. Yeah, I stash exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah, you know how it goes. Yeah. How do you know? This? See, you're just I like used to me. do that. No, you yeah. understand the mentality. Same so, stuff. I went back and got it, you know, and I put it in my room and. You, know. you have to let the heat blow over and see if yeah. see if like anyone was onto it where yeah, you, and, yeah. and found it where you stashed yeah. it or something and like that. Scratch it up a little, you know. Yeah, I found it. Yeah, I, I the, found it. Look at this thing. I found it. I found it. <laughs> when you realize the heat's not on, I took yeah, a bike. The fucking thing. Look at I was going to uh, <laughs> Dana Hills High School when I lived out in California, and uh, I, I used to walk home, and I didn't want to fucking walk, so I went to the bike rack and just grabbed the bike. And I rode the bike, and I stashed it in the woods, kind of under some shit, where we used to go with the horses. And uh, as we were going through one day, I went, hey, wait wait a minute, what's that? And they go, holy shit, a bike! I found a bike! And my father goes, my father goes, all right, uh, we got to call the police so they could take it down to the police station to see if it was stolen. No, Dad. So I'm like, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. <laughs> <laughs> they took it down there. The cops told me if it's not claimed in three months, it's mine. Three months. It's, and three months later, no one claimed it. So it was mine. I, so I felt I, bad about the church thing, you know, but then again, the whole reason I did it was because the priest was like hitting on my mom, you know? Jesus. At least he wasn't hitting on you. That was exactly <laughs> worse. Yeah, it was worse. Then I would have burnt the place to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> with, 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 with him in it. Okay? I had to wait until he was in there doing his spiel and set the whole fucking place on fire. <laughs> And burnt that motherfucker up with the whole place. Oh, it was bad enough he was hitting on my mom, okay? We're out there singing the hymns and he's hitting on my mom. Okay, you fuck. Guess, guess what I'm going to do later today? I'm going to rip off your youth lounge, okay? <laughs> I'm taking your stereo system, you freak. So it was completely you justified. Freak motherfucker. <laughs> on your mom. Yeah, come on. You know, That's it's my not mom. Right, what's, what's he doing? He's supposed to be a man of God. He's like hitting on my mom. That. That oh, is not Jesus right. Jesus wow. Christ. You know, wow. Come on, man. I'm glad I stole that goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> is he the most intimidating guy That's we've it. ever had on the show? I love him. Jesus Christ. Top of the list. The <laughs> most just... intimidating guy right here, man. <laughs> Open so, and um, honest. No I'm shit. A, I'm, a, I'm a dad with six kids, and I, you know, I'm really, uh, you know, I play dangerous people, but I'm... Uh, I, right. I actually saw an interview with you where they yeah. showed your house in Malibu and your kids. And, yeah. Yeah, you're actually, yeah. you were just this nice, peaceful guy. Almost like, it was almost... Well, he writes you, poetry, right? Yeah, well, you do a little poetry. Not lately. Lately. <laughs> 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 I kind of got over that. <laughs> I got over it. <laughs> it was fun for a while. I, 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 I wrote a lot of stuff, and then finally one day I just figured that's it. <laughs> I got nothing else to say. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'm out I wrote of words. a couple of books and that's it. You know, I, I really am going to re repeat myself. <laughs> the, the leaves were blowing across the driveway. Frank Sinatra's dead. You know, <laughs> you know what am I going to do now? You know, I'll have another shot of whiskey. <laughs> I'll light a lucky strike and take a walk in the rain. You know, thinking about Frank. You know, it's like, oh, Jesus, Michael. God. <laughs> What the hell are you writing? About? <laughs> oh, that it was, was fun while it lasted. That was actually kind of good. Yeah. Well, it's in there. You got to get conjured the up an <laughs> image. It really did. It's available. He's got oh, an actual book yeah, out. It's Frank's on Amazon.com. Yeah. yeah. Oh, conjures up an image. Oh. Do you uh, <sighs> you drink or um, give that up? You know, once upon a time, uh, you know, when I was uh, younger, uh, that was definitely the the thing to do. I mean, I I think I probably. Um, well, sure. I mean, uh, I never lost my mind, but uh, <laughs> sure, yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it's uh, you just you, you got to know when to say when, and uh, you have to wait till uh, you, you, you have to wait till after work. Put it that way. Oh, did did you ever uh, on the job? You ever drink on the job? No, it's kind of dangerous, yeah. especially if you have to jump out of a Hummer onto the flatbed truck or you gotta <laughs> fall through a plate glass table or you're shooting off guns. You know, you better be careful and you yeah. can't be uh, hammered. Oh, that's, you know, that's how accidents happen. Yeah, who the hell is that one guy? It happens every so often. Yeah. Oh, John Eric Hex Hexum. Yeah, that's yeah, that's a perfect example. Yeah, yeah. he had a, a blank gun. He put it against his temple and pulls the trigger, and you're still getting the same force coming out of the barrel, and the thing uh, put a piece of bone right through his brain. Yeah. Like, what that's the very, hell uh, are you doing? It's yeah, a gun, yeah. you idiot. A movie set can be a dangerous place. So you got to be careful. You got to know what you're doing. 
Yeah, you handle a lot. Yeah, do you do you shoot uh, guns at all? Uh, re- real life? I got a I got a Winchester pump. I got a twelve gauge shotgun. Mm-hmm. Home security. And, um, yeah. Keep talking. Well, you're making Anthony hard. I love that shit. Yeah, it's nice gun. It's a <laughs> Winchester pump. Yeah. <laughs> Look at it actually, the gun actually used to belong to uh, Steve McQueen. Oh wow! Holy it's the shit. it's the one that he used in the getaway. You know when he goes in the gun shop and uh, and he gets the, the shotgun, he takes the shells, he puts them in his pocket, he wraps it up in paper, and he goes outside and he tells the cops to lay down in the street, and he starts <laughs> blasting the squad car in slow motion. Sam Peckinpah. <laughs> he kept he kept that gun, and he really liked that one. And uh, years later, I became friends with his son Chad, and me and Chad were hammered one night. Um, it was my birthday, and I was over at Chad's, and he knew that I was a big fan of that picture. And uh, he gave me the shotgun. He gave me Steve's wow. shotgun. Wow. So. That's a fucking present. Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah it kind of was. It kind of was. That's a nice uh, thing to have around the house. There's a guy whose like, career transcends time. There are people now that are mm-hmm. huge McQueen fans that weren't even alive when uh, when he died. Steve was uh, much too young to uh, to go away, but God, what he left behind. Yeah. I mean, you know. Great movies. Yeah, well, it was a different time, and it was a different kind of directors back then, and there was a whole different mindset. Yeah. Sometimes I think I was born in the wrong era. Yeah. A little earlier would have been a little better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the guys like Peck and Paw and some of those cats, you know, they make us pretty good pictures. That was nowadays. some sick shit, Peck and Paw, man. It's like, yeah, this isn't graphic enough. Let me slow it down <laughs> to see shit <laughs> flying out of their backs. And <laughs> He's up on the crane with a tumbler of vodka, you know. (laughs) (laughs) A bar on the set. Those were the days, right? Uh, Yeah, well. Made some great movies, yeah. Yeah, he sure did. I know his godson, uh, Joseph Culp. He's Robert Culp's son. Oh, yeah? Told me some good Peck and Paw stories, yeah. He told me that when they did, um, when they were doing um, Wild Bunch, that uh, at a lunch break... Ben Johnson and Bill and I guess uh, they took some chickens and they buried them in the ground with only the head sticking out on top of the dirt. <laughs> and then they were all get back with their rifles and they were going to take a target shot and see who could blow the heads off. But the chickens, once they're buried in the ground, they go like they fell asleep. <laughs> their heads just go like this, like they're dead. And they just fall asleep, and they're like, oh, man, this ain't going to be no fun. You know, they're going to pop their heads off, but they're all they're sleeping. You know, this isn't right, right? That isn't right. And so apparently... <laughs> if, if they're not clunking, that's perfectly fine. Yeah, but sleeping, yeah. that's not right. So apparently Mr. Peckinpah... Jesus Peckinpah, Christ. Apparently Sam, uh, Sam Peckinpah, apparently him, or maybe it was Warren Oates, one of the two of them apparently went over to the sleeping chickens and squirted Zippo lighter fluid on all their heads. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it woke him up yeah <laughs> and they were awake then man and uh <laughs> then, <laughs> then i guess then the shooting began so. <laughs> the target practice commenced after that oh, so. then oh they had to put him out of their misery then it was humane right <laughs> of course of Jesus, course their eyes are stinging fire <laughs> 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 Holy boy it certainly was a different time time yeah was the boy, uh, boy. humane society person on set that day or no i don't <laughs> no, think I... those folks were around right yeah then. probably not oh my god um, wow <laughs> I, how many goddamn stories must you have holy shit <laughs> right <of four. laughs> we've been here for a long time yeah yeah we're supposed to be talking about boarding gate oh, yes yeah, well. the movie was i the half of the movie that i saw was uh all right was, you saw half movie. the movie don't make it sound did you like see it the half that i, no, I got it in my pocket well, right now i saw it so shut i got a face. screener copy well, i'm not in the pro- other half I'm, so it's michael fine. we like <laughs> to be <laughs> talking about the half he was in we like to be yeah. prepared for these uh interviews obviously and roland he didn't do the job he hands out these movies on valentine's day and we all got girls that well, we- and he also handed out a movie that was broken so halfway through. He calls me. He goes, I, I want to deliver the movie because, you know, you got Michael Madsen coming in tomorrow. I'm right. like, dude, I'm going to dinner in a half hour. I so I apologize. But uh, the synopsis, mm. it's uh, a story about a sexy ex-prostitute who's forced to flee London after a steamy S&M encounter. You saw that, right, Bob? That part? Yeah, there's a couple the of steamy. the debt-ridden ex-lover. Uh, <laughs> it ends in violence. That's uh, Madsen playing the ex-lover. Uh, she flees to Hong Kong and becomes involved with a couple who promise to help her get her papers and money. But nothing turns out the way it was supposed to, and the ex-prostitute ends up 
trapped in a sordid game of manipulation. You don't sound like the trailer guy. Wow. Oh. No. So no, I, I don't it's know. heavy, man. The, the, one of the, <laughs> it's, it's the sexiest sex it sounds. It sounds like I a mean, movie it's I just would enjoy. Sexy, sexy. And, and you, uh, you review your own movies, Directed right? by Olivia Asayas. She's a great, great guy. Great director. Great director, yeah. My fa- one of my favorite scenes is when you're eating your food and she's trying to fuck with him and he takes a tomato and just sticks it in her face. <laughs> She slaps it out of his hand. But you know it wasn't in the script. You just, she's talking. You know she's annoying him. He takes it to me and just sticks it in her face. It's like, what? <laughs> oh, well, you've done that before. <laughs> <laughs> what what, what, what so guy funny. hasn't done that? Yeah, just mush a tomato in her face. And he just starts laughing. Uh, she's angry. You know, as an actor, she really, really was pissed. Like, what are you fucking doing? And he's like, oh, his little laugh, his laugh he does. He's like, <laughs> that right there. She's, oh. a, she's a wonderful girl. I really liked working with her. I wish we would have had more stuff to do together. I mean, she's. <laughs> great little girl she's uh how great is it when, he, when we'd be great together in another film I, I hope somebody finds a script for us how great is it when he does laugh in some of these movies dude, he, he la- like, he, the maniacal. Like, oh that's what God. i'm saying dude he go, he, the scariest part about him is when he's laughing <laughs> right. that's when you're scared of him yeah, that's when he I starts mean. laughing you're like oh shit i pissed him <laughs> off sure <laughs> and uh but what, can i ask you a question though doing sure. a scene with that like regular sex scenes in these movies you can tell it's choreographed and everything but this Looked really improv what you guys were doing because like, I mean, did you get turned? I mean, she's smoking. Did you get, I mean, <laughs> Listen, how you- the first time I seen her, um, she was sitting in a window and I was walking by this little courtyard in Paris, and I seen her sitting there, and I had a peach in my hand, and so I, I gave her the peach through the window, and I went on the set, and then when I got there, I was waiting for her to come in. She comes in. And she's got a fist like this. And I, well, what's she gonna do now? And she goes like this, and she opens up her hand, and she got the pit in her hand. You know, I mean, she ate the whole fucking thing. And um, I realized she's holding a can of beer with a with a napkin around it, and she's got a straw in it. And I said, "Listen, I really like this girl." <laughs> you know? yeah. I mean. It was a great introduction, you know what I mean? There's a lot to be said for that first impression thing. <laughs> sure. And there was a lot of things in the script that just said, you know, they begin to do this and they simultaneously climax and all these kind of things where they write this kind of stuff, but they don't. the writer doesn't really you, you realize that you actually have to do that. And so I think she was game enough to just, you know, and Olivia was game enough to just run the camera. And if I just know what my parameters of the room are, where I can go out of frame and in frame, I think it's always better to just kind of just uh, make it up as you go. And that's mm-hmm. what we did. Yeah, yeah, you could tell, man. He he. There's one point where he she says, "You're staying," and you know that. Say, and she's like, she, "He goes, say yes." She goes. Yes, and I, he goes, and I'm putting handcuffs on you, and I'm fucking you. <laughs> and and she, he, she goes, yes. I, my dick filled up, and I'm trying to hide it from my wife because I don't want her to know that I want to tie some bitch up and make her my slave, and then slap tomatoes in her face. <laughs> you remember, when, uh, remember when Jimmy Cagney put that grapefruit in that? Oh, uh, classic! Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on, he classic. did it before I did. Just <sighs> smushed that. Yeah, 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 yeah. smushed that thing right now. Nothing, face. nothing better than mushing something in a chick's face. <laughs> so much better than hitting her. Food, man. Thank you. What, are you hungry here? <laughs> <laughs> Stick her face in a no, bowl of this, porridge. Eat this. Come on, come on, eat it. Eat it. Do it now. Oh, Christ. Eat We're, this uh, fucking thing, too. Oh, I hate here, to say it. I, I hate know. to say it, but we're getting the wrap-up song. Running out of time. I okay, hate this. Guys, listen, thanks a lot for having me. Please. I really appreciate it. I love, you kidding, man. I love New York City. It's really... It's cool to be here. Can we have your number? You like when we're having a slow show, we'll just call uh, you. I'll call you, you up, story. man. Jesus sorry, Christ, man, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> His opinion of the Quentin. show hasn't changed. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, be at, I'll be at Quentin's. <laughs> <laughs> what an trying asshole. to get a job. What an asshole. Oh, trying to get a job. You fit in perfect with this I fucking love show. It. Maybe I no should. Idea. Maybe, I, maybe I have a future employment in radio. Yeah, I you think you do, man. Listen, if the movies don't work out with me, I'll be back. Yeah. So it's Boarding Gate. Uh, March 21st, so we got to remember that. Yep.
We'll promote it when it gets closer, absolutely. Thank or you, you can call us and remind us. You guys are a lot See? of fun. We'll have Roland uh, get in touch, and yeah, that way you can give us a quick call or something when and, it comes out. And, of you course, Michael fun, man. Michael, you, you, uh, man. Michael Madsen.com. And, and someone was telling me you review your own movies. That's got to be weird. I kind of figured I had to make an excuse for some of the crap I've put out there. And, <laughs> you know, I, there's a lot of stuff in there that, you know, I, I just I figured I needed to explain myself. and I don't like, want anybody to think that I'm thinking it's all wonderful. Like which one? <laughs> I think there's a. I made about seventy four pictures. What that, he you make I your think own? There's about fifteen of them that are really good, and um, I think there's probably about twenty five that are okay. And nobody ever lost any money on me, but uh, but some of them I did to pay the mortgage. You know. Wait a minute. Uh, is this you su suggesting what to see and what not to see of your own movies? Um. Yeah. Wait, go up. He's got it. He's got. You got to go to michaelmadison.com. This is amazing. Only a while ago, he recommends movies. Recommend if you can find it. Movies, watchable, <laughs> watchable movies. Are these all movies you're in, or just movies in general? No, they're the ones I'm in. Yeah, watchable. I had you're in choke. Uh, yeah, I did that with Dennis Hopper. That's that. That's uh, based it's, on the Polynook. Um? No, they they stole the title from us. I did the original choke. Okay. Yeah, with Dennis. And then uh, watchable, and then it gets down to skip it. His own movies, he's telling you to skip it. And then he goes down to unwatchable. <laughs> Holy shit! Uh, and he lists the ones that are just completely unwatchable, and then can't rate, never seen it. So there's something you've never even seen that you've been in the movie. You've never seen it. You got a category. Yeah, can't rate, a never of... seen it. <laughs> Have you ever seen a more honest fucking actor? Holy Jesus Christ. Shit. No wonder you're not getting work in the United States. <laughs> exactly. You see, you see how that shit works? How about you don't burn a bridge? Yeah, I'm going to hire him. No fucking way. Uh, He's an indie guy. Yeah. Okay, man. Here's an example. You got it. Oh. You got to go to his website. It's better than this interview. Uh, Flat Out, which is one of the movies. Was it a movie? I don't even know. Yeah, it was a picture, it, it's yeah. in the section can't rate, never seen it. And this is a one line he gives for Flat Out. Interesting film about a paralyzed motorcycle race shot in two days as a favor to the producer. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's like that's helping exactly, someone move. That's kind of exactly I'll make a movie. It yeah. It's like know? either move a couch or make a movie for yeah. two days. Oh, if I hadn't have done it, I would have had to move. <laughs> <laughs> it was time to pay the rent, man. You know. That I mean, is gonna do it. Oh, Wow. Uh, oh, that's fantastic. Oh, all right, here's another one. I, you know, I got to do this. Ghost. I know you got to go, but this is too good. Ghost. He explains it this way. Low budget movie made during a time I was trying to pay my mortgage. <laughs> Also released as Code of the Dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to pay the mortgage. <laughs> Holy fucking yeah, honesty. I could have said a few more things about that piece of shit. <laughs> 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 You know, when you kid, come out, a kid who's the lead in that grandfather financed the movie, so, <laughs> you know, that's all I need to say. Yeah, right? says, says enough right yeah. there. So you were hired yeah. for a Sweet 16 party, James basically. Dean, <laughs> uh, James Dean's uh, mantle is uh, well protected. <laughs> God damn. Michael Madsen, uh, can't great. thank you enough for coming in. Uh, you guys uh, are cool, been man. A, been a fan for so long. Absolutely. And, uh, when you're in New York in great. another five years, you know, stop yeah, by. Stop by. We'll, we'll, we'll still be <laughs> languishing here in mediocrity. Like, hey, you guys still around? <laughs> yeah, we'll be here. The, the new movie. I guess he likes this movie because he's, he's promoting it. So they're probably gonna fire me from the, the press tour. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Did you hear the shit he was saying? <laughs> Get him out of the city. Send him back to L.A. <laughs> <laughs> the movie's gonna be, is uh, Board and Gate. It comes out March twenty first. MichaelMadsen dot com. Michael, yeah. one of the best interviews we've ever had. Yeah, absolutely. E yeah. We can easily say yep. that. In our week here on the air, it's been. Uh, <laughs> 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 Thanks a lot, man. Well, can we take for a, stopping uh, by our college radio show? Uh, yeah, we'll take a quick break and we'll back. fucking end Ooh. this mess. Yeah. All right, I'm Opie and Anthony. <laughs> This is an emergency broadcast. The unpleasant noise you are about to hear coming from your radio is not a mistake. Oh my god. I think we're all in love. <laughs> How fucking great was that? What Michael Madsen from, of course, Kill Bill. Oh, and all three of us have man crushes. You know, but get away and reservoir dogs and free will. It, what? <laughs> free will. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say one thing. Yeah. Uh, if anybody 
on any message board says that that wasn't a great time with Michael Madsen. I wouldn't even call it an interview. That was just a hang with his stories and stuff. They're insane and should be banned from the board yeah. because that uh, that was amazing. You're giving uh, you're giving power. Oh, I know. Fuck what they Not, say. Because I, w- I want people to Gives complain shit. and then get banned because it'll be funny. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, that was so much fucking fun, and someone like that. You know, he's been in uh, some of the best movies yeah. you're ever going to watch. And then he sits down there, and he's hysterical. Dude. And he's so fucking honest and open, and all all with that voice. Yeah, <laughs> that voice that made like it sound like you had one of those old-time speakers where it had a crack in it. So yeah, it yeah, like, sort of crackly, but <sighs> got that thing going. So he's one time I shit fucking a fantastic. bucket in Moscow. Ah, E-Rock, there it is. There's my signed copy of Reservoir Dogs. I haven't got a signed copy of anything. And my I... signed copy of Kill Bill and my signed copy of Lost. Can from... I see that? What a banner day this me, has been. Let me, let me... Oh, yeah, oh, let me hand it over to you. I haven't worked with you for a dozen years. <laughs> Get out of here, <laughs> you insane. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about it. Let's get off the turnip <laughs> truck. Well, uh, uh, I, I knew we were going to get along because, uh, you know, he sits down. Well, before he sits down, I'm like, I just want to introduce myself. I'm Opie. He gives me this look like, I don't ugh. Care. Yeah, an Opie. Opie. Ugh. <laughs> why, would, like, why would you do that to yourself? Why am I dealing with it? And uh, Opie. Shut uh, the fuck is this? <laughs> shut up. We had to tell him to shut up because he was killing. The two minutes before we went on the air for the first time with him, yep. he was killing. We're like, oh my God, shut up. I know. Like, like it, Here's what happens. They bring a guest in sometimes before we're back from commercials. Sometimes they bring him in uh, when we're on the air. Right. When they bring him in early, it's very awkward because you don't, you, you want to talk to them, but you don't want to say anything that's interesting because you, you don't want it to miss on the air. You want to do that on the air. Right. But then you don't want to say something stupid because you don't want to say something stupid and right. boring. Right. So it's it's really a, a rough situation. So we started talking, and he just started coming out with some funny shit. And, and Opie just goes, look, we're going to have to just stop talking. Yeah. <laughs> and don't say another word. And also... You- at that point, you just throw the script away. Not, not. We don't have a script, but you know what I mean. We like you, you try to prepare and think. All right, what do you want to ask Michael Madsen? When he comes in with that attitude, you're like, you know what? Holy shit, he's gonna fucking laugh at me. I just throw it away and just go with it. That was great. As soon as he went, man. who's gonna take a shit? Yeah, I was like, this guy's great. Right on. Uh, he's really trying to sell the car. There it is. I- I'm looking at it right here. Uh, and it wasn't really supposed to be in the movie. That's where he parked that day, which is just like oh. another. Good- and he says he's is uh, what a-, a mannequin in the trunk, dressed like a police officer. <laughs> and you can buy the the car that was in Reservoir Dogs when he goes outside to get the gasoline uh, from his actual car that he drove to the set that day. It's up on eBay. How much is it going for right now? Sixty-eight fifty. Right now, sixty-eight fifty. What does he want? That's what? a bargain. And he goes as he's leaving. He's like, ah, "Could you push the car? I really need to unload. I need this is this is why I have no doubt in my mind that that guy has actually killed somebody. <laughs> Just how he talks. He goes, "I really need to unload that car. Can you like <laughs> unload? Uh, he's worth like unload. Yeah. Could you give uh, that a plug? Uh, give that a plug when uh, you go back in the air." I, I really need to unload this baby. He should take it to the car crusher place that the wolf goes to. <laughs> <laughs> How much does he want? I'd buy that car if it That's, was... Yeah, it's six sixty eight fifty. Yeah, but he's not going to accept sixty eight. No, it says reserve, not met. What's the... Oh, is that a hidden reserve? You yeah, don't know it looks what he like really a hidden wants? reserve. You got to think he's wants... He's hoping for 100 Gs. Yeah, probably. I bet you he wants 100 Gs for that car. <laughs> Minimum. That is What's a, that on? What, what, what website? It's a famous eBay. car. eBay. Yeah, yeah, eBay. The auction only has 11 hours left, but... He's not going to get his what he's hoping for. Famous car. Uh, no. Let's see. I've never wrecked the car. All electric working. She, she had a peach in her hand and had a beer. With yeah. Car. I'm just going to go home and just talk like this all weekend. It'd be great to be able to talk like that. Then maybe my girl will uh, think of me as a man. <laughs> yeah, it's cool when you push food in the girl's face. I'm going to fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. God bless him. Uh, yeah. Well, you know what? You really shouldn't do radio uh, any more radio after something like that. No, now, that to be um, completely honest with you. Yeah. But I'll do. I'll, I'll say this much: Big A's been waiting. Fucking Tim uh, in the other place. 
had Big A uh, uh, sing his own theme song for when Big A comes in. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to how creepy this is. It's uh, it's Big A. We'll talk about this song a little more on Monday. A little tease for uh, Monday or Tuesday show. Tuesday show, I guess. A song called The Intruder by Peter Gabriel. Sung by Big A. You know something about opening windows and doors. I know how to move quietly to creep across creaky wooden floors. I know where to find you sleeping. And I know that I can score. Slipping the clippers. Oh. The clippers to the telephone wire. <laughs> oh. That is cool. This has an isolationally inspires. Uh. Shit, is that creepy? Oh, yeah, because it got like louder and yeah. I know. Yeah. You, I just up anything he does like that, I just picture him hacking up a woman. Oh, absolutely! Just full of blood with an oldie time uh, <laughs> butcher's apron on, and just swinging a meat cleaver with no feeling or emotion in his face. <laughs> One of the lines is from this week. I, I don't remember it exactly, but we're talking about Big A at the Playboy Mansion. I believe it was Jimmy <laughs> talking about him. But ripping the hooker's hair out or yeah, this, with uh, the whole scalp. Playboy bunnies. Yeah, hair. part of her scalp. And no, she can't. She can't you just hear her whimpering in the grotto. <laughs> Look at her scalp. Because she wants to still be in Playboy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, what a visual. Perfect. What a great he, week of radio. He is yep. so scary. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Yeah, fuck you and your mother if you didn't if you don't agree. That was a. Uh, we're, we're gonna do line of the day, but uh, uh, Don Wicklin, everybody. Don, why don't you grab uh, that? Is, what mic is that over there? Oh, Wiki's here. Don. That interview sucked. All right, whatever. I, th I think the guy's joking. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don, this is um, Greg Hughes, the actor that plays Opie on the Opie. Oh, oh and wow! And I'm uh, actually stepping standing. out of character. Wow. All, All right. right. I want to thank okay. you for a fine night of dining last night. Wow. I'm writing this one down. Son of a bitch. Wow. Wow. I'm impressed. Without a joke. But as soon as I sit down, I go back he to He back to being, being Opie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was amazing in the end. It was good. When I fully understood what was going on three hours into the dinner. <laughs> how, come, how come some people never see the actor that plays Opie? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was terrific. And, uh... I forgot we weren't supposed to talk about it on the air because you've been trying to hide this from Elo. Uh, it doesn't matter. What? Wow. And then, uh, I saw a credit card. You mm. got to take some money. Do you know how much you did from who? <laughs> I <laughs> just take it. I, can, can I, guess? I told yes. Ronnie. I can told I guess? Ronnie. Hold on, I'm going to guess too. But let me set this up. Hold on, hold on. Oh. I told Ronnie this experience has to be. There were six of us. Has to be five hundred dollars a person. Perhaps more than that. <laughs> Not counting the taxes, tip, and all that. Just like the basic, you want to do this, it's going to cost $500 a head. No, I think more than that. I think, she, I think more than that. I think it's less. I think you are lowballing. I think it's less than that. Really? A little less. Not too much, no. but a little less than that. You could go out. Or you have to pay for the table as a whole. So maybe it's yeah, table for a whole, eight people. Uh, yeah, because they're not charging by little. Uh, you got to charge. Mm. Probably Dude, one they're, lump sum. they're stopping cooking for the real restaurant to come over and give you time too. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm gonna guess. Go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm five G's. Not counting if you're gonna buy wine, or uh, oh, and yeah, and tip and stuff. Just so five G's. Five G's for just the food. Mm -hmm. Wait, no, five hundred person. I said right. You said so four. The, no, I said five hundred person. Five hundred person. Three and, G's. Three G's. Anthony, what are you going? I'm going uh, probably seven a seven ahead. Seven, yeah, hundred ahead. ahead. Yeah, so that would be forty two hundred. Okay, I'm gonna go. I should have uh, been a uh, math. Professor, I'm gonna go. But, but I'm gonna go forty been a forty two one. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch! Price is right rules. 
42 you stink. one. I'm going you're 42 that, one. You're that woman that does that. I'm going 42 Good. one, Bob. Go hump Bob Barker's <laughs> leg. I'd like to spin the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who's the closest? You'll never know. I'll never oh, tell. he's ah! not going to tell. What a cliffhanger! That means it was. That means it was seven thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, and he wants us to think that he actually, you know. Oh, sorry. Did um, you have I'm, a good I'm time? Being, I'm being great. Yeah, Did you have a good time? Right, I'll just. Shut That's up. all that matters. Yeah, it was amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. It's ridiculous what he that that. Yeah, that's thanks so much. I oh yeah, that's right. I didn't go. Ooh, Don, Ooh. that was Don's call, man. Ooh, that's all right. Don turns radios on for me. That's all I need. No, that's all I need. All right, listen. <laughs> now let's get really uncomfortable. <laughs> we can't end this terrific week this way. Um, or yeah, we can actually. Sure FH Riley's this weekend, 400 New York Avenue. <laughs> Doing a Long Island visit. You should give uh, the, chef, the chef's table away at FH Rally. <laughs> yes. It's not should, a bad idea. You should do one. My brother does a fine job. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, we got to get Big A. the line of the day and get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, but Big we got to get bi shit to do. I got to be places. <laughs> that's why you didn't get invited. We gotta, I got gambling to do. <laughs> yeah, you're going to Atlantic City? Yep. Ooh. Big A uh, has got to sing that whole song. He's got to sing the whole song. Don't you think? Yeah. The whole song. Sure. Of Intruder. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. we, we could do it here. Or he should something. do it with uh, pig's blood in his mouth. <laughs> you know. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm down seeing if uh, what? seeing if Marissa could get me in trouble by calling the dealer a cunt again. Yeah. Did that she will, really? Um, yeah. That's a that's a great situation to be in. Why did she call her a cunt? She was being a cunt, but it's, <laughs> but it's the dealer. And uh, yeah, Marissa thought it would be a good good time to go. Well, you're a fucking cunt. Nice. And, and I, I stand you, up, and, and the first thing I do is pull out my black card, and I'm going, do you know who the fuck I am? Just trying to like calm everything down. And security came over and threw us out of the casino. Did she read and go, Anthony K -K <laughs> yeah, it was, Kakumia? It was actually really funny being thrown out of a casino for calling the dealer a cunt. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping to relive that moment. Yeah. <laughs> Which ancestor changed your name from Kumia to Kumia? I've always wanted to ask <laughs> It that. wasn't Kumia. <laughs> but it's spelled Kumia. It's Kumia. A Kumia. It means come here in Italian. Believe me, when I growing up, when you spell the name know, out, know, the first three letters, C-U-M. <laughs> get it? It's come. Yeah. Great. I get it. Kumia. Yeah. That's what Kumia. Anthony, Kumia. Hey. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. There, there's a little town in uh, Sicily, I believe, wow. named Kumia. Yeah? Yeah. And I have no idea if they were from there or... Just stole the and name or what? It must just jack off a lot in that town. And yeah. the, the blacks, <laughs> it, just the mines. Just it's went known, there. and Kumia, uh, uh, the town is known. <laughs> it's known that uh, they, they, all the people. Instead of tomatoes, town they of jerk the huge off and cock. flick coming at each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's their greeting. Yeah. Their Italian greeting. Yeah. Uh, That's their just Alfredo big, sauce. A big parade. Oh, God. A big parade. They jerk off and then Spider-Man each other in the face. <laughs> Come here. Ugh. Right. Flap. Uh, let's do this Ski Colorado thing. Uh, they're great advertisers. Uh, SkiColoradoNow.com. Right, Don? They're, Radio. They're amazing. Yeah. If I have to read some bullshit because you took us out to dinner, I'm going <laughs> to fucking kick your ass. This is on the up and up, but I'm going to be very suspicious the next sponsor that comes on board. Mm. <laughs> You're going to be reading a lot of spots. Yeah. So we're line of the day sponsored by Jinsu or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying for a cooking joke. That was the best I could come up Jinsu? with. Jinsu? What the fuck is Jinsu? I don't know. The Jinsu knives? Uh, Ginsu. Ginsu. Oh, see? You mix gin ginseng and fucking Ginsu together. The fucking Don had to tell me to not steal the forks, by the way. You uh. should have took one. I only have I have two forks in my apartment. And, Opie, you, had, you had ten chances. Opie, you had, and you blew it. You have I, fucking money. You, you I get have to go to your ATM and look at your balance, and a smile immediately pairs on your face. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you cannot not smile looking at your fucking balance. Go buy a fork. I you have two. Two. I swear I to God. What's wrong with you? I've been trying to figure that out for years, Bobby. Dude, just give your girl your credit card and have her go to Bed Bath & Beyond and get some shit. My mom, Macy's. My mom made us very uh, very nervous about money my oh. entire life. If you really want to do a little therapy, let's go. Ask me a question. What did you, yeah, how many people grew up in your house? Um, officially, we had us, uh, we had seven kids, but there was always more. So, say, eight kids? Sometimes nine. eight, sometimes nine. How if many forks count, did you have? If you count the, the boyfriend that was living in our attic for a while, 
on on the QT. Your boyfriend was living in the attic. <laughs> my, my, <laughs> fuck you, my Why sister's, you? Oh, okay, uh, my sister's okay. boyfriend. We thought the house was uh, haunted. We thought we had ghosts. <laughs> That's funny. No joke, because we heard fucking noises in the attic. He set up a whole like apartment in our attic. Not an apartment apartment, but a place to sleep and hang. <laughs> fucking crazy. Swear to God. And then my, you know, we're scared of ghosts and we think the house is haunted. My my dad went up there to check out the, the scene and found, I found a boyfriend. And See? it wasn't a one day thing. He was so, living, we don't know officially how long he lived up there, but he lived up there for a while. So in the middle of the night you heard, yeah, yeah. All, all right, right, all right. I thought that was a ghost. All right. <laughs> There's a ghost having sex in our attic. <laughs> <laughs> he's not going boo. No, he's going boo hoo. <laughs> <laughs> so I, listen to me. What? I don't. I don't understand why you only have fucking two forks. It's weird. I know. You I, live in a. You live in a high rise yeah. with a doorman. Oh yeah. On the west side of Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, on the probably one of the most expensive real estate areas in the world. Yeah. And you own it. Yeah. You live with a hot. She's an eleven. Oh yeah. And you have two forks. <laughs> yeah. Do you yeah. have one bowl? If you well, you can't both eat cereal at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to eat it with a fork too. Yeah. No spoons. Yeah, you can never get I... the milk in the. Thing. You have to just drink the milk at the end like a fucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm and then I'm too lazy to like clean the two forks. So half the time I'm eating from the I, I'm using the takeout forks that just oh, have to be piling up plastic ones. Yeah. And you, Break. That, that's your salt and pepper too. The little packets. <laughs> right. You, you you actually use a fucking spork? I got things to figure out still, Bob. Dude, what can I a, tell you? I want to use today, go to the fucking store. And you know what? You can just I, did, go, I, I went to, uh, what is it, Bed Bath & Beyond, I think it's called? Yeah, it's perfect. Pick up some Beyond. Yeah. <laughs> that old gag. <laughs> and I started looking at forks, and I pretty much had a panic attack, because now I'm like, oh, fuck, which fork do you buy? Mm. The blue one. <laughs> it doesn't even matter. Dude, you just buy one a with silver prongs. fork. No, they they were too fancy for me. I just fancy, fancy at Bed Bath and Beyond. Dude, fucking bed, uh, go yeah. there, go there today. All right, they have cheap stuff. I'll, I'll won't go to Atlantic store. City. I'll spend my day in Bed Bath right. and Beyond. <laughs> Be cheaper. Do you have forks? Uh, yeah, but he doesn't. Stone really Age. Have, yeah, the but, fuck. Of course, I got forks. <laughs> yeah, but I hear you don't have much furniture or couches or anything. Working so. on it. I got I got so. couches and chairs, but they're in the dining room. They were, they were getting so. in the way of the guns because dude. the living room is full of computer equipment. But he there's has a, offices. He has a done. chair made of AKs. Dude, dude if you ever wondered, <laughs> Ooh, if you ever cool. wondered, <laughs> yeah. if you ever wondered how a like a college kid, let's say, would yeah. live because he hit you know the lotto. Right. Come on over to either my house or his house. Yeah, it's pretty much it. We're just yeah. like we're just yeah. like. College kids that hit the lottery. Like, oh, cool. Sick. Toys and no furniture. <laughs> right. <It's> just, <laughs> That's it's pretty much like, it. My, prior, my priorities Yay. are fucked up. There's a Mets beanbag chair in front of the fireplace. <laughs> yeah. I shit you not. You have a fucking beanbag? There's a yeah, Mets you, you can do, beanbag you chair. You can do green screen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Downstairs, videos. I have a green screen, lighting, right. video. I just bought some new Lowell lights. Uh, uh, um... Uh, microphones. I, I could do anything I want, but I can't sit down in my you living room. You can recreate room. Star Wars in your basement. Yeah, I got all the software I need for my computers, huge monitors, things like that. I got a, I got a, a plasma television and a big loungy chair in my dining room to play uh, Call of Duty on. You have no dining room table? No, there's no dining room table because the Where living room eat? furniture's in there. Where do you eat? In the um, kitchen where there's an island. There's an, you eat in an island? Yeah. Or I eat at the computer. <laughs> Something wrong with you. How old? You're almost fucking 58. <laughs> I'm not almost fat. Don't put me in that Voss <laughs> fucking Dude, age you, bracket. You, you got it. You're, you're over 40. I yeah, yeah, but 30, 32. But you know what it is? How it's very difficult. Bobby, let me tell you something. What? We gave you a lot of room today, but you got to now relax and reel it in a little bit. <laughs> yeah. well, I, listen, a little too you know, cocky. You're listen, acting I, like I one of like the guys this. here. I, I, well, I first like of all, this. I am one of the guys. Go I, fuck yourself. I like you fucking both look like you fucking, the lead singers for air supply. <laughs> <laughs> so fuck off. I don't like this. Well, you don't like you're it. You're taking some chances Buy today, some, Bobby. Go check this out. Buy a you fork and it won't happen. Fuck the Cleveland Improv. Fucking relax with that. Don't you fuck with I need fun. Furniture. <laughs> you gotta fuck you money. I don't. I live in a one bedroom. I got uh, two stairs. I hear it's lovely though. It is a very nice. Right, room. It's not a fucking. Hey, uh, by the way, Don uh, spent uh, about two grand on dinner. Oh, Thank okay. you, Dan C from uh, Ontario. It's right on the website, Don. 
Oh, oh shit. Oh, I thought it was worth face. more than two G's. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking ingrate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Anthony, I apologize. Next time. Thank you, Don. You would get Opie. the um, thanks that you so duly deserve. Thank for you. Us. For all I've a done great for you. occasion. You didn't do shit. <laughs> <laughs> I told you this last night. You haven't done shit. What did Missy say mm. last night? She was hilarious. Because of some, we were talking about stress. She goes, oh, thanks. Now you're telling me this? What was it? How old you look now? Oh, no, yeah, Don had to say that I've aged 10 years in the last year. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was really nice of him. <laughs> what the fuck was it? Ah, whatever. It'll come to me on another show. SkiColoradoNow.com for info and great deals on 26 world-class resorts. Up to the minute snow conditions. You uh, do this. You log on to SkiColoradoNow.com. Here's a runner-up line of the day. But he kept leaning over and, like, hat-coughing on the other people. That were <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Did he, did he have his that big rape vein on his forehead? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Bobby's got a lot of things going on in his career. He's got the improv uh, starting Wednesday in Cleveland. Yep. Wednesday through Sunday. He's got a DVD coming out, CD coming out. CD, DVD Comedy coming Central out. Special. special. April, April 4th and April 8th, yeah. And I was at that taping, and now i got to be uh, Greg Hughes again. I, was I like nothing but... Uh, yeah. Right? We hugged and stuff. I was very excited for you. Yeah, it was a great day. I was glad you're here. I always invite you to my stuff because you know why? You show up. Oh, you're very supportive. Oh, no, you oh. didn't. Very you supportive. Know, I could say. I didn't say anything, dude. You said because you show up. No, he Implying he shows up. <laughs> that I don't show up. No, I don't want to, you know, it's a long, fu- dude, it's a long trip from Rhode I- Long Island into Manhattan sometimes. Especially for somebody barely gives a shit about. Yeah, right. exactly. I yeah. have done. I have <laughs> showered Robert with praise of his comedy. <laughs> I've done this uh, at every turn, no. and yet I get shit like I never come out to see nah, you. I invited you to my You're wedding. Right. I don't. I? Uh, yeah. Yes, I the watch online, Both of you guys. But yeah, and, yeah. and, and there was, was no thank you. It Honestly, I, I feel soon bad. As soon as Bobby, soon as Bobby was done, it's got to be said the place stood up immediately and gave you a standing ovation. Man, it's yeah. gonna be a great. I, I hope it, they filmed it properly and all that. Because I hope great. they edited it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fuck Jane Seymour and fuck her birthday. Thank you, thank you, Matt Man from Boston. Never forget. <laughs> My mom wanted a dumb autograph from Jane Seymour as we're taking the NBC SNL tour. Or, or no, we were going to see uh, Phil Donahue. We're in the elevator with just us and Phil Jane Donahue. Seymour and my mom. Eh, you know, a little nervous. Yeah. Holy shit, that's Jane Seymour. Ma, go ask her for an autograph. I'm just a kid. Jane Seymour, there's no one around. Goes, nah. Ugh. And now we have to awkwardly take the elevator down with her. Fuck Jane Seymour. Uh, oh, man. Anyway, another, uh, another runner-up line of the day. Well, they, you know, Bobby, as a as a bisexual man, yes. would you have uh, sex wait a with you? Wait a second! <laughs> hey, wait a second! I told you. You know, I as you said that. that, it just slipped right past me, and I didn't even question it. I'm like, yeah, okay. Just, you fucking, you fucking walked into that right hook. You. <laughs> 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 So this is getting goofy now, dude. This we, is getting goofy. We love when we just get goofy. Oh, like no man. one could possibly be listening to this. Here's another runner-up line of the day. Wolf siren. My eyes off of that know, button. Dude. I'm frightened it's gonna yeah. go off like a rivet in a submarine that's too deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone's gonna. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny, dude. Uh, we also that button, and that thing was struggling. Oh, man. Oh, that button was dangerous. <laughs> was, take an eye out. <laughs> just trying to hold on. Like Stallone and Cliffhanger. <laughs> just fucking... Uh, that button was just scary. Oh, God damn, Making everybody it? nervous. <laughs> it really was. <laughs> <laughs> um... What? Oh, yeah. Another runner-up line of the day. Today. Well, and, uh, you know, Ben from Lost was in, yeah. and that's huge. Did you just do a line, Ronnie? What? what <laughs> 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 oh, my God. You know what? I, I call it a little morning cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> Ron Fez, noon to three. He'll have his own take on the wiki dinner, I'm sure. Uh, is that it? We're up to the line of the... One more runner-up? No, the, this is it. Yeah. Bobby, thank you. Don, thank you. 
Yep. Thank you to the people on the bleachers, and have a great uh, time in Atlanta yes, City. Yes, thank you, today we, we play Line of the Day right to the commercials. Yep. Right to commercials. That's it. So have uh, fun in Atlantic City. Yep. And uh, we'll see.